But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Good fucking morning. Hi, everybody. We got Joe Rogan. He's here already. Right Holla. off the bat. And, and I think we already did 20 minutes of radio. <laughs> we should have, we should have uh, recorded know. that. Well, it doesn't matter. We should get, we should get more the, where that came from. Yeah, we, exactly. And we should get the plug in because uh, we're going to just start rocking here. Fear Factor starting Monday at 8 p.m. on NBC. Fucking A. I've been watching that the, is uh, awesome. the ads. They put the, the trailers on, uh, on TV. Holy fuck. It looks... Like they completely threw out any rule book or any restrictions, restraints. It looks insane now. I wish I could tell you one episode that we did that may not air because it's so fucked up that Uh, NBC, they've watched it for weeks and they still can't decide whether or not it's going to air. can't figure it out. Yeah. I may, looks- or may or may have not watched someone drink animal piss, <laughs> and that's not even the worst. Wow. That's not even the worst part. I may or may not have. I may or may not have. I they, can't tell you. They, they I cannot it. neither deny nor confirm. <laughs> yeah. But that's not even, I can't even tell you what I really want to tell you. I'm, I'm, during the break, I'll tell you. Just let it fly. Just let just, it go. Some can't. Of the, some can't. Of the, no, 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 yet. not you. I mean, NBC. Just fucking air it's, it. It's too fucked up. It really? really? Is. Yeah, I'll tell you why. We'll, 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 dis- we'll discuss it. Could it be on a so, DVD someday? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it's on my phone, so <laughs> it's eventually going to get right. somewhere. Did it happen at Penn State? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it could have. <laughs> Is it an eggnog challenge? <laughs> no, but it could be. Yeah. We should do eggnog challenge yeah, for we Fear should. Factor. If, uh, <laughs> if you're interested, we can get Pat from Pat Minaki in a still around. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. But we need Pat Duffy too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that lunatic. Well, is that guy still around? You don't hire him anymore, yeah, do we you? Just, we just we saw just him saw recently him. at really? uh, the Hard Rock. Well, is he still we... brushing his teeth with dog shit. He'll do anything. <laughs> what a crazy fuck. What he did was <laughs> fucking why don't we, amazing. Why don't, show, why don't we show him the video? We just, amazing. We just did a live broadcast for oh, Thanksgiving at the Hard Rock Cafe, and he did something there. He'd be good on Fear Factor, wouldn't he? Got like that? Yeah. You guys were at the Hard Rock. In, in Vegas, in New York, and oh, the I uh, wish. And, and you know the <laughs> lawyers have kind of shut down a lot of our shit, unfortunately. But we're still doing a fine radio show. <laughs> but we did, decided to do a, a mashed potato eating contest. Kind of lame, I'm not going to lie to you. And then Pat Duffy, who happened to be in the audience, there he is on oh stage. Oh my God, Chugs puke. What, yeah. Well, watch this. Some guy had puked his own potatoes into the potatoes. Oh no. What you're about to see is he's going to go for this guy's massive. They were huge uh, bowls of mashed potatoes, and he puked a lot. Into his oh, you can see and then like, Pat Duffy wanted to just come up and say hi to everyone because it's been a while. So. It looked like gra- oh it looked like gravy. God. Yeah. Yeah, his stomach it's, bile was, was uh, it's, brown. It's a, oh. it's a quick video. And, and and you know what? He wanted to wish his father a happy 60th birthday, <laughs> Joe. You can understand this. This is so repulsive. Well, if that was this. my boy. Better rap. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're only doing this because you asked about Pat Duffy. The volume? Well, oh, great. Right. No volume today? You need a beverage? or? Wait, he's got a cup. Oh, no, 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 Joe that looked away. So repulsive. Whoa. Rogan, who has seen this everything, was, has looked away. Whoa. This is hard to watch. This is really hard that to watch. kid takes it to another level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. He's still thirsty, though. You need to. Oh, uh, he goes back. back. Oh, yeah, he has to go back for a second scoop. Uh, Can you watch that yet? Uh, uh, second oh. scoop. I, I can't watch it. Can it's, it's so bad. <laughs> That's truly terrible. Oh, my God. And, and he's not done there, Joe. The video is almost over. He goes in for a third scoop, and then you get to see what the mashed potatoes really look like. Oh look. my God! <laughs> oh, that's oh, all Jesus! <laughs> God damn it! He keeps going. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. Oh, what is wrong with this fucking guy? <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> You sh- you should get him for Fear Factor. I not get, not the, no, I mean, he's, he's a ringer. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he's a ringer. No he's ringer, ringer. Definitely. Yeah. You can't have ringers. Definitely. Well, I would I would like to see though. There's some things that we did that I I know he, even he would gag. You think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was a time when we made them drink blended maggots. We had like, and it wasn't just a little bit. It was like a fucking big gulp full of blended maggots. It was so rough. It was so horrible yeah, so watching bad, people man. do it. Did you take a sip just to see no. what? It, not even to, no, not that. interested. 
you're not you're not no, that guy. I don't need to know that it sucks. <laughs> you don't need to know. I know it sucks. The host. <laughs> yeah. The fucking I, I host. It's the host. He doesn't he doesn't do fucking disaster. I thought it's the host. You might want to like partake. But you need to know. There's guys like Pat Duffy out there. This we all grew up I, with that one kid that just will take it to the next level. Do anything. He's, right. We've been doing this a long time. He's the king. Oh, he's the monster. Pat Duffy is the fucking king. There's no one that comes close to <laughs> what the shit bird. he's done. Yeah. Baby yeah. bird. Imagine how many fucking people would yeah. willingly do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll never forget that. That was the greatest moment of any radio show I've ever been a part of, without I, a doubt. I don't think When that I... kid leaned over that garbage pail yep. and Ugh. had fucking Pat from Wunaki unload in his yeah. mouth a cartoonish <laughs> amount of puke. Yes. It was cartoonish. cartoonish. <laughs> Remember? It I really mean, it was. It was a goddamn broken fire hydrant. <laughs> it was just, it was just and, unbelievable, was the volume. So repulsive. And that was a tradition, and uh, unfortunately that was shut down. They, well. they shut that down? Yeah. The man, lawyer shut that down? They shut that down. Because somebody died in California doing a, a water drinking contest, yeah. and then no one in the fucking country can yeah, ever do them again. No kind of like uh, eating, drinking, anything like uh, that. Sucking, fucking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that you can die from water? Yeah, that is Who fucked up. Who knew that? Who it's, knew that? Yeah. It's so, uh, you know, neat. You hold that shit in. I mean, Apparently it's, it's happened with like fraternity pledges sure yeah yeah people don't realize you know. what happens what what you drink too much water what's the, the well, biological I think, you're, I think you're uh it gets super saturated uh in your system and then it can just come out uh, into your brain it well, just you, you get like uh some kind of fucking like it, it could absorb into your system but then it just like comes out of your bloodstream. Isn't that fucking nuts? When you think about, like, you know, when you talk about drugs, they always talk about the LD50 rate with this lethal dose for 50% of the population. Right. <laughs> what you don't realize is most of the shit you take, like salt, eat, go eat a pound of salt. You're yeah. fucking dead. Dead. You're dead. <laughs> but meanwhile, you sprinkle it on your fries, <laughs> sprinkle it on your burger. It's poison. You eat a pound of that shit, you're dead and as that's fuck. It. You eat a little bit, you're fine. How close do yeah. you think you've come to eating a pound? In your whole life? Well, oh, I don't man. know. Just in, in in a weekend or something when you just went crazy. Well, you'd have to do it all in one sitting. Yeah. You know, it's not a weekend. It's like within an hour. You know, yeah. you'd have to somehow There's another some salty eat a pound shit of out salt. There, though, man. You're eating poison all day, man. Yeah. Like fucking, you know, bananas got potassium in it. If you eat fucking potassium, you're going to be dead. Yeah, eat too much of it. Have yeah. too many aspirin, you'll the, fucking die. Yeah, but The water you know. thing makes you a waterhead is what Kevin from Connecticut is saying. Yeah. Some, yeah. Somewhere around 10,000 people die from, uh, I believe it's aspirin and caffeine. The aspirin and caffeine to overdose in this country alone. It's like 10,000 people. Caffeine? I don't know yeah. caffeine can do it. Yeah, now you're freaking Tells us people. out. Yeah. It's like fucking... Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, you could die. You ever heard of people dying from those uh, rip fuels? Do you remember really? those? Oh yeah. Well, they they don't ha they don't have the same ingredients anymore. I I, th I think they they took out the the really hard shit. I forget what the <laughs> fuck it was called. I don't remember See, either. But oh, remember that shit? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. There was a kid on the island that diet died pills. That shit. Yep. People would love to. The girls were taking it. Diet Ephedrine? pills. Ephedrine. How much coffee? Yes. Am I yeah. How Thank much you, coffee sir. am I allowed? It's to a have? good question. I, I was just now saying. You're freaking me out with the OD. I had some this. Caffeine. I mean, I have a cup here this morning, but which I will drink very lightly. But I I took uh, I took like two weeks off of coffee. Yeah. It was the first time in my whole life I've ever done that. Headaches? No. Flu symptoms, I did, like they say? I did when I, I was writing my book, and when I was writing the book, uh, I was drinking like five, six cups a day, and okay. then I took a couple of days off and I had headaches. But this time I didn't have any headaches, but when I took like four days off, I had a cup after that, and then I was like, whoa, like it really hits you. And then I'm yeah. like, man, I'm just used to this shit. Like, <laughs> this can't be normal to be used to this heavy-duty stimulant. <laughs> yeah. So then yeah, I just yeah. took a bunch of time off, and what I was amazed with was how much energy I had throughout the day. Like That's I didn't need said. a nap at the end of the day. It was like yep. I was even. Yeah. I was like, oh, but I still wanted the coffee. You still want that charge. You're like still a little junky. They say that, though. You get your energy back if you get off the coffee. So yeah. you're not crashing. Right, I exactly. Don't fucking, I don't so I, that. what I did is I switched to Water. tea. I started drinking like herbal teas. So it's just I just wanted a warm liquid, you know? Right. Does it work? I mean, it's okay. As far as the, the craving same thing. goes? Yeah, sort of. Right. You know? Yeah. And then you get decaf. All day. But decaf still okay. fucks you. Why? Yeah, decaf sucks. Decaf still has ca caffeine. Know, Does it really? It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I drink that at lot. night. <clears throat> I drink it at night. I didn't really? Caffeine. Well, yeah. you, you probably drink so much coffee that it's just like, you could probably drink a cup of coffee and then take no. a nap. No, regular coffee I can. I'm a very bad sleeper. Really? It keeps me up, yeah. You drink a lot of coffee during the day, Yeah, right? I do. I leave, like, two or three cups. Now it's not as many. Just in the morning well, for when me. When you're doing no. radio or like even when I'm doing my podcast, I feel like I need a little something, something. to just get me fucking really fired you up and get going. just need something to sip the whole time. And, it, you know, you need a little bit of a stimulant, yeah. you know, you, you're yeah. talking and thinking and, you know.
Oh, you do a little, uh, you know. Oh, that helps too. <laughs> well, that, Get I took a little going. before I got here. I'll tell I you did that. the opposite. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> That's <my basement>. That's <laughs> What's that? Drink? I did the opposite. I sit in my basement and start the you know webcast and. And I'll just start drinking, and by the end of it, I'm just like, yeah, I'm sick of the fucking phone calls yet. Just no thought process, just completely <laughs> slosh. And you sit there with your chick, and you guys get hammered together. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, we get you start into arguments arguing. and shit. It's like watching the I Days watch. of Wine and Roses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, sh that shit was in Stacker, too. Uh, oh, right. That? That's yeah, right, man. man. Fedra, yeah. right? And we were big fucking uh, advertisers for Stacker, too. Oh, really? And it's... they had to change the ingredients in there. Yeah. 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 Yes, I don't know what the ingredient yeah, was. Maybe it was. You remember when people were on that Fen Fen shit? Yeah, and it was fucking their hearts up. Ooh, I it was know to a lose girl. Weight, right? I know a girl who lost like forty pounds. She got hot. She was like <laughs> a little chubster, and then all of a sudden she got on the Fen Fen, and everybody's like, "What the fuck?" Like it was quick, man. Yeah, it was like a yeah. couple of months. That can't be good for you. Yeah, oh, it was terrible <laughs> for you. She got off that shit and <laughs> uh, right back up. Back right up. back up. Right right up. up. Oh shit. Yeah, I mean, she was just fucking hitting it at the it's red like, line all day. It's like flat, <laughs> fat, <laughs> fat flowers for Algernon. <laughs> you know how you. You know how when you're on the highway and you're in your Shelby and you hit that fucking red line before you change gears. Yeah. That bitch was living there. Yeah. <laughs> That's where she was living. Just, <laughs> 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 she was just living there all day. Oh, man, that's a tough place to be. <laughs> Drinking Diet Coke and taking Fen Fen. <laughs> fuck, fuck the heart. Uh, yeah. Fuck the heart. I want some good dick. I want some quality dick. For once in my wife, I don't want some fucking sacrifice dick. <laughs> some chubby chains, yeah. man. Why the fuck oh, don't you man. live on the East Coast, man? We don't I get, wish I did. We don't get to see you enough, Joe. All right, listen, I love you guys. I listen all the time, constantly, all day. Oh, and we listen whenever to I'm podcast. in my car, I, unless I'm listening to the news, this is what I listen to. And I check out the Or unless I want to get angry. If yeah. I, want to listen, I listen to, like, you know, right-wing talk radio and see fucking idiots. <laughs> Who do you listen to? Oh, uh, whoever's on. There's a Patriot station on uh, XM Sirius. Yeah. yeah. Patriot it radio. Nuts. It's fucking great. No, I mean, it's just, you need to know that there's actually people like that out there. People you know? uh, people were saying to me, they're like, why don't you fucking call Rogan out and be such a lib? It's I'm like, not. he's not fucking, if you know Joe, he's not a lefty, he's not fucking You're a right. Middle, I'm right? more of a, yeah, like more a, of a Republican than I am a liberal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's With more gun of a, laws and, you know, and yeah. a, a lot of different things. I'm, I'm much more of a Republican. Like, people think I'm completely right-wing. That's not the truth, man. I fucking, I love abortions. <laughs> 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 yeah. Go for it, ladies. <laughs> you like the Occupy Wall Street thing, though, right? I'm fascinated by the, the rebellion. I'm I, not, I don't, I don't think it's really focused. We will I mean, crush your rebellion. I, I, the, I, most, <laughs> the, 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 most of the people that are involved in this, yeah. I think, are just there for the party. Right. You know, and yeah. they're happy. They're angry. Like, right. did you see there's a great video of um, Peter Schiff? You know, he is that uh, fucking Wall Street genius, and he's uh, down there talking to these guys, and he's got a big sign that says, I am the 1%. Right. And he's in, and he's in a fucking, you know, $15,000 suit. <laughs> wow. And he's like, and he like, come on, ask me questions. And they come over, and he just tortures these poor fucks because they really have no business there he is they have he has, they have no business talking to this fucking super genius financial wizard and these idiots are like why do you need to make a hundred million dollars couldn't it, couldn't you just live on 40 million dollars he's like i employ 120 people how many people do you employ and they're like, <laughs> and they're like it's because of us that you you should really listen to it because it's really kind of hilarious he's playing right yeah. now Maybe see if we can find some common ground. It's not capitalism. Look at a big that sign. On the I'm the one percent. Let's talk. It's corporatism. <laughs> nice suit. Crony capitalism. It's fascism. That is the problem. Capitalism is the solution if we can only fully embrace it. Anyway, we got a few Meanwhile, people this guy's around been here calling out who all in these assholes like in the banks for years. Any of their right, right. Right. Fucking genius. Yeah. This Imagine great. compassionate capitalism. What? Is there such a thing? Could there be such a thing? Well, it's the most compassionate system I know, by definition. If you make a hundred million... This is my favorite. Imagine how many jobs could be created if you just made 50 million. But what you're forgetting is, if I make a hundred million, I had to create a lot of jobs to make that money. That's the point. When the capitalist no, see, is making money... there's a money, thing called greed. <laughs> And the problem with <laughs> but we're all, we're all greedy. Everybody. No, no, we're not. Well, you cannot say that we're all greedy. Yeah, the ambitious you people cannot. are greedy. Well, you, don't you want things greedy. for yourself? 
You don't want more. You don't want better things for yourself. We better all life? do it. That's the problem. What? We or some of us are <laughs> simple people. We just want a place to live. Yeah, this is. We, we just, just want, want a place some to live. Food in our refrigerator. And capitalism. And capitalism. Capitalism is the best way to get those things. I mean, I'm, you're standing here. You're not naked. You have clothes on. The people that made those clothes did it to make a profit. And to make a profit, they had to make clothes that you can afford. Do you I, think that socialism well, is wrong? It is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. First, Why? I employ I employ 150 and people. Oh, I employ 150 people, right? I've created those jobs. How many jobs did you create? How many people did you employ? <laughs> How much money have I given you? But you haven't given me anything. But I'm as one. I've created 150 <laughs> jobs. Wait, 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 wait. I'm 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 writing paychecks every given, week. I haven't given you anything. You, what what are you what are you? Everybody in this park has contributed to your fat ass <laughs> bank account. Have. How do you figure? And one way, shape, form. How, how, do, how do you how? figure that? You know something. You need to open up were, your mind. Were the people in this park? Were the people in this park working twenty-hour days? Or at my um, when I started I'm my company sure in my in my one-bedroom apartment? Quite sure were they there? No, they weren't. I'm quite Who? sure they have been. Where do you stand concerning our plight? <laughs> this guy's great. I, I feel. Where do you stand plight. concerning our plight? What does it mean? Yeah, what, what does that even mean? I didn't want the government to bail them out. That's not capitalism. Capitalism would have let the banks fail. A lot of people on Wall Street would have lost their jobs if we had capitalism. But do you see this as a left-wing movement, or do you see this more as a populist, apolitical movement? Well, you know, I think that people, especially young people, yeah. have a right to be pissed off. You know, one of the one of the problems people want is the forgiveness of the student loans. Why are there all these student loans? It's because the government guaranteed them. If the government minded its own business, uh -huh. then nobody could get a student loan. Well, there's loan. never been a so, monopoly without government involvement. No, but my point is, if it wasn't for the government, yeah. college would be cheap. The tuitions would be low. It's only because the government subsidizes it and guarantees the loans. But who gets the shaft here? It's the kids. The, the colleges get all the money, and they stick the kids with the bill. They graduate with these worthless degrees with 100000 or more in debt, and they can't get a job. And if they get a job, they're paying massive taxes. They're paying Social Security taxes to support a generation. Yeah, that don't voted fuck with a financial genius when you're wearing hip clothes. It's so fucking yeah, good. He just, like, he takes balls to go down there. I've been down there a bunch of times, and fucking... I've What's it smell like? <laughs> Pretty bad. Like, a, like, like the old Pretty goddamn bad, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> like the old school Grateful Dead shows? Really? As opposed lot. to good. <laughs> but, but you know that. I mean, the fringe people are all freaks. You want to, like, you peel them away and see what this really is about. That first guy was the classic attitude. This, right. this, this attitude that, you know, why should you have this when all I want is a job and food on my table? It doesn't work that way, man. It doesn't work that way. You got to go get that job. Get right? it. Yeah, the system is absolutely fucked. Knowing that. That, go forward. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. This is Work the game. It. Here's how the game works. Right. It's fucked up. It's rigged. There's a lot of holes in it. Mm -hmm. But you can get a pot of gold at the end. You just gotta figure your way through the fucking funky maze. When you play in Monopoly, no one gives you the hotels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, absolutely though, he's right though. I mean, and and it, it would have been crazy if all the banks failed. It it would really have been nuts. It would have been madness. But really that's what is supposed to happen. Yeah. I mean, it really is supposed to happen that way. I don't understand finances enough to comment on all that shit, but what I do know is that the guy like that first guy, that's a big part of this movement. This uh -huh. idealistic, hippie, socialist sort of attitude that is just, just fucking ridiculous. All we want is food on our table and Man, and what do you, no, and who's going to provide that? And right. by the way, no, they don't. Because once you have the food on your table and, and the shelter and the clothes, and you want better you'll food look at somebody else with table. a nice car and go, yeah. hey, I want a nice of car. Course. And I want this. And I want to take vacations. How of come course. he gets to go on a, a boat yeah. and do this? Well, that's human nature, of course. Yeah, of course it is. And it doesn't work in, in socialism. Right. It doesn't work. In capitalism, I, it works, but it's not a guaranteed fucking tea. I don't know how these people are confusing your constitutional rights with... Uh, uh, the the opportunity to make something of yourself in this country. It's not a guaranteed right. What about what would happen if the, what would happen if the banks did fail though? Like I I, I, just, I don't know no, the answer would, to that. It would be a, it would be a huge change. Yeah. yeah, like that would make big big change. Well, I don't know. The thing what is, direction. you would lose your fucking money. That's what's really scary. Yeah. Hell, I want FDIC. Yeah. <laughs> We're not a bank, Jerry. I'm, I'm here getting gold. That's all I, I have yeah. all my money in gold. I have gold. a buddy of mine who bought his son a fucking gold brick for his second birthday. <laughs> oh, got to nice. get a gold brick. This is the start of his collection. Like, like, why don't you get him gasoline and bullets? Because that's what he's going to need. <laughs> a gold exactly. finger prop. Who are you going to sell bars? that to? Right. If you ever get to the point where you need gold, 
that gold's going to be fucking worthless. It, yeah, worthless. Because someone will take it. Yeah, someone with a gun. Uh, it just yeah. won't mean anything. Well, how point. the fuck did everybody agree on gold? Right. Out of all the weird shit to agree <laughs> on worldwide, one fucking rare mineral Do you know the just answer takes to that? precedent. And for, for a, quite of. a while. It's not I know even the, like the off shelf answer. It's not right. even like they decided recently. Yeah. Like gold oh, has yeah. been fucking gold. Ten thousand years. For years. Like people just decided and we still look at it like, yeah, that's the shit. Would well, you know the the craziest explanation for that? Mm. Is by Zechariah Sitchin, who is a biblical scholar and a linguist who studied the Sumerian text. And the Sumerian text is one of the oldest written languages. It's in cuneiform. <clears throat> it's from uh, Mesopotamia, uh, Babylon, where where the uh, Iraq of civilization. Is. We think, all began. we think that's actually moving uh, further back now, <clears throat> um, but you know because like they just found a, a fishing line and and hooks and tuna bones from forty thousand years ago, so they know that people were going hundreds of kilometers out into the ocean and catching fucking tuna forty thousand years ago. There were probably some badass looking tuna. Could you imagine? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, but you imagine what kind of line did they have? Where did yeah, they yeah. find that? They just recently have discovered this. It was probably two that would walk up on the, on the fucking shore and <laughs> yeah. punch, punch people in the face. <laughs> yeah. be raping their wife and their kids. <laughs> Come home, your baby's getting eaten by a tuna. Yeah. Where do you think that smell came from? Yeah, there's a tuna <laughs> shitting in the yard. Can you go kill it? <laughs> so this guy, Zechariah Sitchin, wrote these books uh, about the Sumerian text. And his, his deciphering of the Sumerian text is like very, very controversial. And a lot of people say he's crazy. But <laughs> what he says is that the entire uh, human race was created created by aliens and that what happened was there's a planet that's in an elliptical orbit that comes between Mars and Jupiter every 3,600 years <clears throat> and these people uh, human beings were created because they took their DNA and merged it with a uh, monkey DNA and created this advanced slave to mine for gold <laughs> <clears throat> because they Damn. use gold to, they suspend gold in their atmosphere to protect their atmosphere. Because they've lost their atmosphere, just like our atmosphere is slowly eroding because of you know modern you know, machines sure. and industrial society. Well, in pollution, their their atmosphere is already eroded, so they suspend gold particles in their atmosphere. And that's a, it sounds completely retarded, but. If you stop and think about, like, why the fuck do we like gold? Like, <laughs> yeah. and why has it been that way for so long? Well, if we were, like, genetically engineered to mine for this shit by aliens, sounds stupid. But then you, then you realize that this guy wrote this book in, like, the 1970s, and they didn't figure out, there's a symposium on climate change in, like, the 2000s, where they uh, were battering around ideas for how to combat, you know, uh, the, the erosion of the atmosphere. And one of them was suspension of reflective particles in the Jesus. atmosphere. Mm. And this is like no one knew this in 1970 we didn't even have that issue in the 1970s right but this fucking guy wrote this book about this but what, let me ask you wouldn't, uh, the, wouldn't oh. the guy because wouldn't the guy wouldn't a civilization that had the ability to genetically create something that could think in mind have the ability to create mock gold. a particle yeah or, or to well, we can do that you know you know alchemy really exists you can turn lead into gold the problem is it requires fucking nuclear engines hmm. i mean it requires nuclear reactors type power and you can only get a tiny amount of it from a a large amount of gold mm. or from a large amount of lead right, it's like right. it's not efficient at all but it is physically possible yeah. you can develop small particles of gold from lead God, I just don't... imagine an alchemist with yeah. a, like his yeah. his mortar and pestle yeah. sitting yeah. there with well, a well, wizard well, hat know, on imagine <laughs> a bunch of Jay-Z records in the sky I okay, you talk I don't know <laughs> <laughs> we don't you know, know we don't know shit is what it comes down to <laughs> well we don't know shit about human civilization we don't that's know for shit. sure we don't know shit about how long people have been around right you know there's a new thing that they found recently Recently called a uh, Gobekli Tepe. It's in uh, Turkey, and it's uh, at least twelve thousand years old, which is when people were supposed to be wearing animal skins. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be hunter gatherers and, and nomadic people, and they found this huge stone structure with fucking you know nineteen foot high stone columns that are perfectly cut, and <laughs> animals that are carved into them that don't even exist in that country. You know, they have no idea how these fucking people built this, who built this, why they built it. And on top of that, it was intentionally covered up. So mm. someone 12,000 plus years ago covered this whole fucking thing up. They built this massive stone complex of huge circles, and they don't know what the fuck it is, why it was there. Some guy just found it. He was a Recently? goat herder. Yeah, 19, uh, I, was, I believe it was the 1990s that the guy discovered it. He was I just holding, why, though, herding goats. I wonder why, though, it's, it's uh, all always uh, very mysterious and stuff, but it's made of stone all the time. Yeah. I would like to see something made out of some kind of really fucked up material. Right. And, and <clears throat> that would be like 
proof positive. Yeah. Well, because the stone the is stone the only always, thing that exists. But it always leaves that element of, you know, you're like, all right, people could have done that here. Yes. You know, uh, but if you see something like from Star Trek, yeah. oh, with right, a right, big right. Monolith, yeah. uh, oh, monolithic shit, fucking be fucked. made out of some type of metal yeah. with symbols on it, you'd be like, all right, that's fucked or up. Or false teeth and a dinosaur mouth. <laughs> Just something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have you seen those things they find in, like, Egyptian pyramids where they find, like, little model airplanes? Have you ever seen those? Yeah, no. yeah. And then you think, <clears throat> it could be a bird. <laughs> yeah, like, but it has, a, it has a rudder. No bird has a rudder. It has yeah. a, it has an upright rudder that doesn't yeah, exist that, in the I, animal I, I've, kingdom. I've seen that. That is yeah. pretty weird. It's fucking amazing. Or maybe they just yeah. understood flight to a certain degree yeah. or understood what the aerodynamics would be. Right. I just well, said something really obvious. You know, understanding flight is nothing compared to understanding how to build a fucking gigantic, perfect complex of two million three hundred thousand stones you know <laughs> yeah. all cut literally i mean the, the tolerance has to be like micro yeah. millimeters in order to get it perfectly to meet at the that top that is crazy well, that's you, insane. you ever see some failed pyramids that just yeah. they didn't quite they started fucked up at the bottom and they yeah. get up top and it's like ah we're flat <laughs> it's it's like frankenstein yeah, pyramid to, to pure well, you know, the, <laughs> yeah. the conventional wisdom is that those were the first pyramids but there's a lot of people that believe that that's not the case that in fact what happened was there was a great civil Civilizations from 30, 40,000 years ago, and then massive ec uh, ecological disasters, whether it's you know, a meteor impact or yeah, something happened, right. killed a huge percent of the population. And then people lost all that information and tried to rebuild these pyramids. And <laughs> that's like, what hey, the shitty ones this. are. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, the shitty ones, they believe, are actually the newer ones. Right. There was a big rat in front of the new pyramids. Non union. Non union. Big rat. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a sphinx, fucking <laughs> it's a fucking rat. They can't even, you know, they can't even wrap their head around how those people built that shit 2,500 BC. You know, yeah, how do they reenacted it too? I've seen like yeah, shows where they kind of think they they can figure it out. Guesswork. It yeah. One one professor will say this, another scholar will say that's yeah. not the way. The There's some scholars so that say it wasn't just... uh, that they were actually made out of concrete and that they made a uh, uh, a concrete uh, a form of you know that these were actually cast. Right. You know, and then that there's it's a amazing. lot of <laughs> lot of uh, uh, evidence to support that, too. but it's amazing but, but that the Italians there. Uh, <laughs> come on, it's amazing we can't figure out how it was built. Still, well, with all the shit a, we're doing a massive amount of evidence that people have been around a lot longer than we think they oh, have. I believe that. But this this tuna thing, this this yeah. you know finding these forty two thousand year old fucking tuna bones and hooks and line and shit like what, dude? Match the hatch, dude. <laughs> King <of> man, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a uh, because. I, I think as they find more stuff, uh, you realize that yeah, people have been um, thinking and making tools yeah. a lot, a lot, uh, a lot earlier than we thought. Well, I had this guy on my podcast. Called, his name is Graham Hancock, and he's written a bunch of books about this stuff. He spent his whole life studying it. He's got a book called Fingerprints of the Gods, and it's his assertion that somewhere around ten thousand five hundred BC, there was something. Something happened. Some massive ecological disaster. Mm. Some massive, you know, whether it was a flood or there's a bunch of different theories to what it was. What it was melting glaciers. There's a the, and it coincides with the end of the ice age as well. Mm. You know, to the, the end of the ice age happened really abruptly. And it killed a bunch of species almost instantly, like woolly mammoths and saber-toothed tigers. They find them dead, like thousands of them all in a field. And they yeah, have no idea weird. what killed them, no idea how quickly they died. You know, because like a fucking, if a bear dies in the woods, they, uh, that bear is, there's nothing left in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. All the bones get chewed up, the flesh gets eaten by other bears, they cannibalize it. And that's yeah. it happens with almost every animal. So when you get a, a place where there's thousands of bodies... Something fucking happened, and they don't know what that something was, but it coincides with the melting of the glaciers that covered North America. You know, North America 10,000 years ago was covered in over a mile-high fucking sheet of ice. Mm. Most of North America was under ice, and what people don't know is when that ice is moving, it's like a fucking eraser. It's grinding everything. It's moving a couple feet a year, and it's a mile high, and it's crushing everything in its path. So any building buildings, any, any construction, any computer you leave behind, that <laughs> gone, shit is yeah. gone, man. Right. There will be no evidence other than the stone. <clears throat> that is uh, amazing. Pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah it is. I didn't realize it was only 10,000 years ago. I mean, yeah, 10,000 well, years that ago, is. there were saber-toothed tigers in North America. And it took so long <clears throat> to build up. Yeah. Uh, the ice uh, uh, to that point, yeah. and then relatively short uh, period of time to uh, 
to pull back again. And, and the stuff it left, though, when you look like in, in Central Park, all those giant boulders, that's yeah. directly Is that yeah. that's because from? of the ice The Great age, Lakes. Dragging. Yeah, the Great Lakes. You ever fly over uh, the Great Lakes? I've only been, I've only flown over once recently. We did a UFC in Milwaukee and we flew over Lake Michigan. I was like, holy fuck, that's an ocean. Yeah. It's yeah. a goddamn ocean of water. We used to take <laughs> boats across there when I lived in Western New York. It's giant. an ocean. Joe and Rogan is right. used to be you a can't giant see fucking sheet of ice. Yeah. And that's like a little right. puddle that's left. Right. Yep. Wow. Long Island itself, you know, uh, yeah. if you look at the geography of Long Island, uh, the North Shore being very rocky, very deep water, and the South Shore being very sandy and, and shallow. Uh, into the ocean. Uh, it was directly because of the receding ice just pulling everything back. Uh, it is. It's just. It's fucking. We can't amazing. even wrap our heads no, around that. No, and the time frame is yeah. just insane. But I'm, it's I'm, like, oh, what do we spend? Seventy-five, maybe, hopefully, eighty, eighty-five years on this planet. Yeah, it's fucking nothing. nothing. You're not seeing shit. Well, have you heard the black hole they just recently discovered? That's twenty-one billion times the mass of our sun <laughs> and 10 times yeah, larger yeah. than our solar system. Could you give me an example I can understand? <laughs> Wrap your head around that. A black hole 10 times larger than our fucking solar system. Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. And that's nothing. That's crazy. And that's and not, that, if that's that that's disappears, nothing. the universe yeah. won't even notice it. Don't we didn't even find it until recently. <laughs> like, oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that little silly thing yeah. sitting there that's eating crazy. up fucking galaxies. <laughs> sucking <laughs> galaxies down its maw. Does it this shit freak you out, Joe? Yeah, sure, definitely. <laughs> yeah. You, really, you really study this shit. You know oh, uh, you, yeah, I got too really, much free time. Uh, when I have too much free time, that's when I start really going into this stuff. And but then it I, doesn't seem like this knowledge and pot would would go together. Really? Why is that? Mm, I don't know. It's perfectly. I, I, I think it would. In just, sync. I think it would just freak you that out. That paranoia thing. <laughs> might I, get, I think yeah. it would just freak you if out if you start thinking too much about something. And <sighs> right. I think paranoia is a good thing. of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I think a lot of people walk through life with blinders on, and of I think course, what, yeah. one of the things that marijuana does is it makes you realize like. Oh my god! I'm like a fleshy little water balloon of <laughs> fucking blood and, and tissue. An you know, amazing yeah. goop could work yeah. like a machine. Like we're yeah. just goop. Yeah. Yet we work yeah. like a machine. We're so you know? it's, fucking fleshy. It's fucking you know? amazing. I've got this back injury that I've been dealing with. I, I pulled a muscle in my back a few weeks ago doing jujitsu, and I, I can't train. I go back and oh, you know shit. I'll like work out a little bit, and then I'll pull it again. And I'm trying to like figure. It's just so you realize how goddamn feeble you are. <laughs> you know, <laughs> even MMA fighters. George St. Pierre just blew out his. ACL done, uh, done wow. for like a year. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wow. kind of canceled the Diaz fight for Super Bowl weekend, and uh, now Condit is going to fight uh, Nick Diaz for a um, uh, interim title. Yeah, we were tissue. We're what was he doing when he did it? Wrestling. Oh wow. Yeah, I've had and, both of mine done. It's, it's common. Your knees just are stupid design. <laughs> you could drop a, a fucking ant from the top of a building, which would be equivalent to you know skydiving from the atmosphere. Yeah, and, and they'll just. We hit the ground, and walk away. And yeah, it's like why? Why, why are we being so fragile? Fuck. What the fuck are they made? What the fuck do we have to be so fragile? That? I want an exoskeleton. That would well, be cool. Someone was describing uh, to LSD ratio. to me. Someone was describing LSD to me that LSD, if you uh, on a molecular level, it's so potent that it's like an ant that destroys the Statue of Liberty in thirty minutes. <laughs> 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 that's, that's that's how potent right acid on. is on a molecular level. <laughs> you know, I don't know if this is true. I don't know what the real numbers are, but someone told me that you could take like a fucking milk gallon full of acid and throw it into a reservoir, and everyone in who whatever fucking town you live in, everyone in whatever city, New York City, whatever, just be fucked, <laughs> just fuck a milk gallon full that's, of acid. That's it. Just chuck it in. God. I had a friend of mine who accidentally poured acid. You know Yoshi? Yeah, yeah. Yoshi. <laughs> we all know Yoshi. Yoshi oh, yeah. accidentally poured acid in this eyes he didn't know Whoa. he had a, a friend had an eyedropper and it was acid in the eyedropper and he was in the guy's bathroom and he was searching around for shit and he you know opens up this thing he goes oh he's got a little eyedropper i got a red eye and we put it in there and he, he drops he goes i go how much did you put in there? he goes i don't know seven eight nine drops <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ what right happened into his fuck just fuck just oh, fucking gone for who knows how fun. long oh, wow yeah <laughs> Insane. Yeah. Uh, oh, hey, acid. Joe. Russell Peters, say hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some anal porn? Yeah. Yeah. He works in the porn business. Oh, we know. Yeah. We yeah. know. We've gotten some gifts. We know yeah. Yosh. Yeah. He's, He's always gifts. giving you those gaping videos. <laughs> yeah, and then you <laughs> accidentally get a few Joey Silveras in there, and you're like, oh, I'll look at these later. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, How did we go from... Uh, Oh, we're Yoshi. All, we go yeah, all we over the from place. Egypt to, He's whatever. the link. It's just it, 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 <laughs> just all that stuff. I mean, a lot of people call it pot talk and shit like that, you know, but well, it's, it's not. It's, it's thinking. Just, it's thinking. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, wondering 
you know, where, where you came from, what, what it's all about. Uh, I was thinking about how, how vulnerable we are as, as a being, but then how amazing we can be at times just in something so silly as you ever, you ever get very proud of yourself when you drop something and move your foot out of the way at the last split second as to not crush your foot with yeah, something and go, yeah. I didn't even have to go like, all right, something's falling. Uh, I better move my foot out of the way. I'll move it to the right. I'll pivot it on my heel. And to, it's just Instant. automatic. You don't think about it. And it's like, what does that take to do that? It's just, it's just it, an you, amazing thing. Yeah, it has to fire up without consciousness. Yeah, it yeah. has to. You, In the it time it takes for something to yeah. fall three feet, right. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, that's not a lot of time. I want to go back to that stone thing. Where was that in Turkey? You said Gobekli Tepe. It's in yeah. yeah it's in because uh, Anko's. If if we found some kind of metals or something else, then he'd be impressed. Well, this but isn't the, the aliens. This is people but I'm just that saying made the, it. The fact is, a lot of that shit would not last ten thousand years. Only stone. Exactly. Only stone would last that long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, would, yeah. But, they, well, that's one of the arguments. About I don't know how the long metal... civilizations. Yeah. You know, the, this guy named John Anthony West is he's, uh, he's a um, an Egyptologist and he's written a bunch of stuff and he's got a, a great DVD series called Magical Egypt where he goes really into depth about how amazing the Egyptian culture were. Right. The Egyptians were fucking aliens, man. Yeah. I mean, they weren't really aliens. They were people. But I'm saying, like, you compare them to all the other civilizations, all the other cultures on Earth. These motherfuckers were on a, not just another level. <laughs> they were on several different levels above every other fucking, you know, scratching, clawing human with a, a, a sharp rock on the end of their pointed <laughs> stick. And, and yeah. what's the theory there? Why well, were the they theory like that? is that they existed a lot longer than we think they did. And what what he he points to like some solid geological evidence. There's a, a guy named uh, Robert Schock, who's a um, a professor at a Boston University. He's a uh, Egyptol he's a, um, a geologist rather, and he did some uh, work uh, on the uh, uh, the Sphinx. And they're saying that the enclosure of the Sphinx has water erosion on it, like deep fissures that can only be attributed to thousands of years of rainfall and the problem with that is that the last time there was rainfall in the Nile Valley was like somewhere around 9,000 BC. And so it had to exist Bring thousands of years before that. So this stuff was cut and then thousands of years of rain. And then, you know, somewhere along the line, uh, you know, if you look at the, the Sphinx, it's got a very different head than the rest of the body. Right, the head yeah. is too small. So they think some pharaoh came along many, 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 many thousands of years after it was initially built and then put his face on it. <laughs> I don't you like know? that, whatever it was up there. Yeah. Ah, get that off of there. Put my face on that but motherfucker. But if you take that away, and if, he's, if this guy's right, and geological evidence is about as fucking hard as you can get. You know, mm. the, the evidence that they have, archaeological evidence, a lot of it, you know, they're piecing things together. There's a lot of theories. There's a lot of question marks. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're doing carbon dating on stuff, what they're doing carbon dating on is, you know, it's basically stuff that's left behind, like whether it's food or, or you know, something that's burnt or you know, they can't carbon date stone. So if right, they find yeah. something that's you know, carbon dated that's near the stone, you know, and it's like 10,000 B.C. That doesn't mean that the stone was created in 10,000 B.C. or cut in 10,000 B.C. It's really just guesswork. Right. But the geological evidence of water erosion is pretty fucking solid. They've taken pictures of the Sphinx and put masking tape over the head and masking tape over the feet and brought it to all these different geologists and said, is this water erosion or is this sand and wind? 100% of them say it's sand. It's not sand and wind. 100% of them say so they show this up. Sphinx enclosure and they say, well, this is water erosion. This is deep fissures. It's curved and smooth. It looks like water ran through it, like thousands of years of water cutting stone. So just that alone. But when you bring this up to the Egyptologists, they get all pissy. They're like, what evidence is this of this culture from 10,500 BC? Mm -hmm. Well, there is no evidence. That's the thing. There would be nothing left. Yeah, yeah. There, would, there wouldn't really be anything. It, We're going back so far that stone is the only shit that would exist. <laughs> is it possible that the stone would, they brought the stone from other places? Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything because it's cut. See, it's an enclosure. And what is they built the Sphinx, say, like, if it's a giant uh, quarry. They cut the quarry. You know how they cut, like, walls out of the quarry? Well, those walls are where the deep fissure marks are. So where it's the, the area where the yeah. Sphinx was built. They know that they cut these massive stones, and they moved them from that area, and it constructed the temple of the Sphinx. Once well, you make the cut, the clock yeah. starts ticking. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, once um, they, they yeah. made that cut somewhere around 10,000-plus B.C., 
which is fucking oh, way yeah. earlier than we think people did that. We think people were building the Sphinx in 2500 BC. And he also has a lot of other evidence to this John Anthony West guy where there's massively different construction methods from the older civilizations to the newer ones. And mm -hmm. he can show them. And the older ones, a lot of it is still underground. They've still they've, they've dug up a bunch of them. And the ones they've dug up, there's like temples on top of them. Jeez. So you're dealing with a civilization, a culture that existed thousands and thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of years, potentially before we thought. And and way, you know, it pushes back the inventions of things way earlier. The inventions of like um, amazing things, yeah, you know, like mathematics, and you know, the 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 the, the ability to construct these perfect geometric yeah, yeah. patterns. Being able to uh, yeah design some of these structures. I think when you get these pockets of of communities. That's when shit started rolling. Yeah. When you just get a family or a, a clan or a fucking, you know, a, a, a group of hunters, perhaps. Yeah. I think until you start really getting a community with a common language, some type of way to communicate with each other, then you're going to start rolling out invention yeah. and, and structures and... and, and uh, you know, make a, a kind of a community. And they have to have weapons, because they have to yeah, fight off yeah. those other fucks. Those other fuckers that are still... Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, that's that when Egypt fell apart, time. you know. <laughs> Egypt <laughs> fell apart when the Nubians conquered them. You know, the, the Nubians, though, the black, blacker Africans, you know, like, yeah, you, yeah. They're, they're Sephardics, the original well, Egyptians. Southern. The southern fellows. Little southern fellows. <laughs> Little southern yeah. fellows came up and caused a ruckus. <laughs> and my, by the way, that's also the face of the Sphinx. The face of the Sphinx is a, a, a Nubian pharaoh. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not one of the Sephardic pharaohs. After the... Uh, we were talking about that. I was, I was saying that. Damn. My face, bitch. And what I told you. And that's why, Bitch. And that's, why they, that? that's why they shaved the, that? That's why they shaved the nose off. Shot it off. It was shot off. Shot off the yeah, nose. That's a, yeah, they say Napoleon did that. Nobody knows, though. That could easily just fell off. There's, no one really knows. How humiliating if this nose just fell off. <laughs> Shoddy workmanship. Well, <laughs> he, you know, they built it over an old, con you know, a, an old construction of a, a lion's head. Yeah. And the idea is that at 10,500 B.C., that Sphinx actually points to the, uh, to the constellation Leo. So the thing called the precession of the equinoxes is one of the reasons why they can uh, they can uh, calculate all these things as far as like dates and times and astrological things because the Earth doesn't spin evenly it doesn't spin like perfectly it wobbles and when it wobbles that that wobbling is a twenty six thousand year cycle hmm. of coming back around so they can go back in time and point to when this structure would have been facing the constellation Leo which we know in Mesopotamia in Iraq and in Sumer they knew about constellations they had them all marked down and they all they, they had already uh, had uh, you know cancer and Leo and they already had all those things so they know that this is possible that that could be why this line was built but there's two times it lines up one is 10,500 BC and the other one is 26,000 years before that and this John Anthony West guy is convinced because of hieroglyphs because of the hieroglyphs that depict the pharaohs that go back 30 plus thousand years yep. But the Egyptologists don't want to accept that because it's too far outside of conventional wisdom as far as like how long people have been around. They, they can't accept that 36,000 plus years ago there were pharaohs and Egypt was in you know a, a modern or at least a, an, an, an advanced state. That's a lot of history that isn't accounted for. Yeah. If you can wrap it up in 2,000 years, then you look like a fucking genius. Yeah, but even <laughs> 2,000 years, man, when we stop and think about 2,000 years, I mean, fucking 200 years ago, man. Man, we, we, I, I talk about this in my act, but if you want to picture something, you got to fucking draw it. <laughs> yeah. it, it uh, rep, it, there was no, it wasn't like yeah, you had to go drawn. to Washington where they had all the photos. No, there were no fucking photos. <laughs> yeah, it hadn't been invented. You know how annoying that would be after a gig? Some fucking girl who can't even operate a cell phone. <laughs> she wants to draw a picture, <laughs> draw a picture you of you and her dumb boyfriend. <laughs> and that's only Imagine two, what her Facebook page would look like. <laughs> and, and that's only 200 years ago, man. That's nothing. Yeah, how about 50 years ago? How about 50 years ago, walk up to a phone and say, someday someone's going to watch people fuck on that. Right. <laughs> God, there's no way. How is that phone going to eventually have uh, video? How is that phone going to sure. internet? <laughs> even on Star Trek, they never figured out the internet. How about only 10 years No, ago? they never yeah. figured out that. They never yeah. figured out fucking, you know, They didn't even figure out something. They had walkie-talkies. That's yeah. based, right? They would say over, Kirk out. This, yeah. is, this is only 10 years old, yeah. what we're doing with our phones, basically. Yeah. It's incredible. You know? I love Star yeah. Wars, how the image of Leia, because they, when they they boom, they zapped in that horrible image of her, they have to oh, continue with that. The yeah. hologram. The hologram. The hologram. Yeah. They, they didn't figure out smartphones. They thought that was awesome. Back then, yeah, it's totally awesome. Yeah. People are saying brain overload. This shit is fascinating, man. I love when Jim hell does yeah. This.
It, it is what uh, the, shit? The, the world is strange, man. JDS Haldane said, "Not only is the world queer than you can suppose, uh, queer than you suppose, it's queer than you can suppose." <laughs> and it really is. The deeper you go into this shit, the the more you realize, like God, like. What do you think? Uh, civil it's a blip. Civilizations just over and over again. They Wait, come why, and go. get wiped out. The, the earth is very yeah. volatile. The, right. the environment is. Look, we know for a fact that we've been hit at least. I think. I think they said there's been six major extinction events on Earth in the in the, in the course hmm. of Earth, and that's not counting super volcanoes, which they're just starting to comprehend. They're just starting to wrap their head around the fact that there's mm. volcanoes that when uh, they blow the one out west, uh, the fucking Yellowstone one yeah. thousand. Thousands of earthquakes a year. Yeah. People don't know this. The Yellowstone, and this is something they didn't realize until satellite technology. Yellowstone is a caldera volcano. That's, I believe, it's 300 kilometers across. And what oh, it, what shit. it is is it's essentially a mountain that blows up, so the mountain doesn't exist anymore. The volcano is so big and so powerful that when it explodes, the whole mountain just shoots fucking lava straight up in the air and just kills everything. <laughs> Kills everyone. It's a continent killer, and it yeah. happens every six to eight hundred thousand years. And we're overdue. Six hundred thousand years ago wonderful? was the last time it happened. Wow. So, are we safe on the East Coast here? No, in I don't New think York? so. No. I think it, it's we're pretty far over. We're, people are going to be eating people when this <laughs> yeah. happens. Whatever people that are left, the sun will be, be blocked out. Yeah. The fucking oh, plants yeah. will die. Everything. Yeah. It's just and nuclear be, winter. Yeah, yeah. it'll and be yeah. a disaster. And as humans, there's nothing we can do about it. Well, you remember that little baby one that happened in Iceland, and they had to sure. cancel all the flights. You know, and you see how thick that shit was. It was coming down on people while they were driving. It was like it was heavy snowfall. Right. It was just ashes. And that's you a know? small one. That's a little baby. Little. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's nothing. Little <laughs> cough. <laughs> we can't even wrap our head around a fucking super volcano. Yeah. You know? Or there's a there's a gigantic shelf in the Canary Islands, and it's gonna fall off into the in the ocean. It will happen eventually. They don't know when it's gonna happen, but Huge it's gonna tsunami, happen. Yeah. And when it does, there's a fucking tsunami that's gonna hit the East Coast and come six, seven miles in. Ooh, Six, nice. seven miles in with water. I think uh, Just my, house, my house might take a hit uh, on Long Island. <laughs> I, I live in the sky, though. We, we'll be all right, Jimmy. Oh, and yeah, you, you, we live in the sky. I'm you know what that up. would be like? Cloud <laughs> City. I hope you have a fucking life raft in your apartment. <laughs> You just look out your window and it's underwater. Yeah, meanwhile, <laughs> you might not be okay. It might be that high, you know? I mean, they have had thousand-foot waves before. The video, oh, the you, know? video you sent. Of uh, the solar system, that was about a year ago. Oh, that's a great how one. How small we actually are. It's ridiculous, right? What the fuck? It's ridiculous when you see how small the Earth is in comparison to some and, stars that we found. And it just got bigger it just and keeps bigger going. and bigger. Yeah. Most of us have seen the video by now. We all tweeted it. It was all because of Joe Rogan. That it's, was unbelievable. All that shit is very hard. It's, it's impossible, really, to put into context because in our, our little temporary worlds and our temporary life, you know, it, we don't have the ability to see that. Our yeah. our life is about moving forward and using the two eyes in the front of our head to find food to stuff in our fucking mouth and <laughs> find our some place to put our dick so we can make more people. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're here for. But it we're is. we're evolving into something else, and we're in the process of it. You know, you and I and all of us, and especially you know through the medium like satellite radio and the internet and your phones and you know all that stuff is is causing us to evolve. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's happening incredibly rapidly, so fast that we can't even imagine. You think uh, when you die, you just shut off, or is there some kind of crazy thing? We you can't... might live this whole fucking thing over and over and over and over again. And not only that, you might not really even die. You might shut off, and you might just wake right back up in some other state and not even know. I mean, <laughs> there's, like the idea of parallel dimensions and parallel universes, there's a bunch of different theories about that. But if parallel dimensions exist, they exist simultaneously. They coincide with us all around us all the time. And it's like changing radio dials or like anything else that we don't really quite, you know, that yeah. we can't really Imagine if you died three around. times already. Yeah, well, you might die every yeah. fucking day, man. Who knows? <laughs> every time you go to bed, you might be dying, yeah. you know? In, in some world, we might have lost Anthony, you know? And yeah, then, and then, you in, know, in our world, Anthony's yeah. up in the morning. Pop and up. In some world, you know, Patrice is making people laugh yeah. right now. We're just yeah. talking yeah. to an in-shape Jim Norton. <laughs> like, you know, or a Let's not get crazy. Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's calm down. Let's not get nutty. Yeah. Let's keep it... 
The idea Real. is that every decision that you make and every possible uh, alternative and every chance and every, mm. you know, all the variables that all these open up doors for completely different universes. Yeah. Not only that, but that your own consciousness is somehow involved in creating this universe and whether or not it's involved in the actual manifestation of physical things like you invent something and create it and then it exists where it didn't exist before. Not just that, but that your ideas and your mind actually shape the events that happen around you. Mm. There's some people that say, oh, bad things always happen to me. Well, it very might be that you're making bad things happen <laughs> to you. We don't understand the amount of control that people actually have over reality. No, we, you know, you ever heard about double slit uh, double, uh, 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 when they do uh, subatomic particle things and you know when they uh, show that the observer actually changes the reaction of the particles. You've seen these things, oh, right? Oh, wow, no. You've never seen these things? Mm -mm. Pull, pull that up because that'll fucking blow your head if you <laughs> look uh look up dr quantum double slit experiment you're you're gonna shit your pants when you see this because i can't believe you've never seen this before but this when they get into quantum theory that's when the universe really falls apart because quantum theory is real science but it's real magic too in quantum theory <laughs> particles can exist in a super state a superposition which means that they can be moving and still, at the same time, not only that, they blink in and out of existence. And the latest experiments at CERN, you know, CERN is the Large Hadron Collider. Mm -hmm. The latest experiments have shown that particles can travel faster than the speed of light. They've yeah, recreated yeah. this already. And there's a lot of people that are speculating this doesn't make sense. But that, the particles don't make sense anyway. They put it doesn't make sense that they can disappear. Actually. They put yeah. their data online because they thought we might have made a mistake. Just, and they never do that. But uh, I think they did like 15,000 tests on it. And yeah. So, so what, is, no what are we about to see? Particles are actually affected by you watching them it's not just a matter of you see something happen but when you watch things happen you change actual physical particles just check this out this will blow your head turn this will blow your mind turn it turn it so these guys can see us yeah, crank that shit up here. a whole quantum weirdness <clears throat> The infamous double slit experiment. And this is explained this as simply as possible. Uh, of you course. Know, it's a it would take a, an hour for a <laughs> yeah. genius. We can get Michio Kaku on here. And yeah. we'll, we'll like, I don't know what he just said. We randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen. We see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, oh. something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Holy shit. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. This is so, the beginning. When the mind we throw fight. things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now, let's go quantum. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's crazy. An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. Right. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marble, two bands. What? What? <laughs> An interference pattern. We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense. No. But physicists are clever. They thought 
This Maybe is where it gets those really little weird. balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So that's what I they thought. decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But oh, after shit. an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. That's crazy. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. This is the mindfuck. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. Just by watching it. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. That's fucked up right there. And it was here beyond, that physicists beyond strange. stepped forever into the strange never world of quantum events. What is matter? Marbles? Or waves? And uh -huh. waves of what? And what does an observer have to do with any of this? The Cartoon Sandusky. That's where it's impossible to wrap your head around. Your mind and your, your, just your focus and your intent and human, just the human mind may very well change things. Wow may change reality. My theory is they put the camera too close to the thing and it was just bouncing off it. <laughs> they, probably it right. they probably put it in front of the thing. Could be, Jim. <laughs> we, uh, unfortunately, we've got to take a break because we have a million fucking uh, live raids. By the way, Dr. Kaku would not explain that. Like, he would explain that oh, too no. simply. Like, and I, I think he's, he's a genius, but he, he oversimplifies it and he would have it like, you know, it's like two Lego people are rolling bowling ball. It's like, we know that. <laughs> to tell us as a physicist. Well, he, it must be so hard for a guy like that to try to break things down to monkeys like us. You <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. You know? yeah. I remember like we, we had him on the phone that one time. We were talking to him. I was like, how do I not f f offend this guy's <laughs> mind <laughs> right. with my stupid fucking questions? Yeah, yeah. He tries to put it in layman's terms and you know he's just like, because he started talking cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. It is like when Bugs Bunny goes into his <laughs> hole. Like, oh, is this what you really got to do? You look at us and just think, yeah, meanwhile, oh, I better talk cartoons. I'm seeing a giant chalk board filled with numbers yeah, yeah, and yeah. symbols that we don't even understand right, right. and hieroglyphs. He looks at us like we look at ants to be just hit with raid. <laughs> we should have him explain that now. It would be completely different. Oh, very exciting. Yeah, don't yes, you guys have yes. a hotline we can call him oh, up? Yeah, yeah, we call him yeah. up all the time. We call should actually up, ask, ask him about, him about that split. the doubles, the, the right, observer, the quantum observer. Ah. We do have to take a break. Let's do it. Yeah, I what eat. time we got to get you out of here, Joe? I don't 730? know. 7.30? Today's show, man. Wow. Fuck it, eh? Today's show. They're just going to ask exactly. you fear factor questions, exactly. which I, we're Maybe all excited right back about. Because it's only a few minutes away. Anthony oh, yeah. Bourdain is here later. We want, oh, is he? Yeah, yeah I'll tell you that. You What's know him. You yeah, love him, right? my podcast. Uh, yeah, Damn, NBC is a block him. away, so yeah. you could do this if you want to. But uh, fear I'm, factor I, I starts Monday. I think I'll leave it at 8.30. From here? Shit. I should fucking just bail on it. I should just <laughs> hang out here. And just, oh, what time was I supposed to be there? Bail on oh, NBC for I thought us. it was supposed to be at 10.30. That's pretty oh, sweet. My, oh, I just said it on the radio. Too yeah. late. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, quick break. More with Joe Rogan, but Fear Factor starts Monday at 8 on NBC. This is the Opie Anthony Channel. Serious XM. It's not the same like it was. Erectile dysfunction has become a serious epidemic. Pussy is over. Don't mean nothing no more. I can't get a heart on. Take it from legendary comedian and ED sufferer, Pat Cooper. It's no joke. I'm not making this shit up. You're with that gorgeous muffer. And you're in bed and it don't happen. Happened to me. And she goes, what's the matter? I said, I, 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 said, I think it's erectile dysfunction. She goes, what's that? 
I'm fucking dead. She goes, you mean you can't get it up? Medication isn't the only option. I tried Cialis. I tried uh, Viagra. I tried everything. I'm fucking dead. If you or someone you know is suffering from erectile dysfunction, contact your physician to explore alternative medical treatments. I swear to you, I went to a urologist. He says, how do you feel? I said, my big thrill is peeing. I said, when I was getting laid, I said, go, ah, ah. Now that I pee, I go, ah, ah, ah. It's the same fucking thing. It wouldn't have cost me a dime. Just take it from Pat Cooper. Don't buy into the erectile dysfunction hype. Fuck all the bullshit. Your penis no longer works. Life as you know it is over. The doctor said to me, you're fucking dead. I'm fucking dead. Who's that old guy over there? Uncle Paul, Uncle Paul. With the creepy old guy stare. <laughs> Uncle Paul, now he's coming over here. Slowly limping down the hall. It's too late now, cause here comes Uncle Paul. Make a big boy love you. In today's episode, Uncle Paul reminisces about a young Macaulay Culkin in the movie My Girl. I was crying a lot in the theater when I seen that one. <laughs> I couldn't see through my tears. I had such a big lump in my sweatpants. I love that movie. Look at that. You're all rough. You got leaves on you. Come here. Let me muss your hair up. Come here, Macaulay. Look at your denim coat. I cried so hard. He got the bees all over him. I was like, be careful. They're going to start stinging you on your penis. Got to get someone to suck the person out. You got little bee stingers in your penis. Why don't you come over here? Let me get the bee st the beast. Let me pull him out with my teeth. I'll rescue you. Who's that old guy over there? Uncle Paul, Uncle Paul. With the creepy old guy stare. <laughs> Uncle Paul, now he's coming over here. Slowly limping down the hall. It's too late now, cause here comes Uncle Paul. Serious XM. This is the OP and Anthony Show. Love and Joe Rogan on the show today. Fear Factor starting Monday at 8 p.m. on NBC. The cookie I ate this morning just kicked in. I don't think you're. I don't think you're going to be discussing quantum physics with Matt Lauer today. I don't know. I have to talk to Matt Lauer. I got to go to the plaza. I think it's uh. Yeah. Oh, who's the other guy? Al Roker. Uh, okay. I'm probably doing the Al. Roker. I think I met Al. I think Al Roker Al. was on news radio back in the day. I believe. He oh was. yeah. Was he really? So. I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Somebody else who watches the show knows more than I do, and I was on it. <laughs> we're uh, we're not going to get Kaku. We uh, left him a message. Damn it. So yeah, a message. Dr. Michio He'll Kaku. probably just fuck our heads up some more. Oh, I know. We'll just hang up and be like we have cotton in our brain. <laughs> um, we're stupid. He's what? brilliant. You know who knows a lot of physics? Dr. Steve. Yeah, he, he was does. a physics major, yeah. and, and he explains Steve. it a little more technically he, than he, Kaku because he doesn't have to. Because he's closer to us than Kaku is. Yeah, Dr. and he Steve hates is Kaku. Cool as fuck. Yeah, why does he hate Dr. Kaku? I don't know. It's the way some comics hate other comics. He, <laughs> he thinks Kaku's a hack. <laughs> Isn't that the worst when yeah. someone says, "Hey, what but, do you think about this guy?" You're like, but well, why isn't he doing it for a living? Because he's got because he's got to practice now. Oh, yeah, but he has to look at vages. He probably got creeped out by all the other physicists. Yeah, they're like yeah. Dr. Stevens is creepy. Yeah. It's We're, a strange world, man. When you see those guys, whenever you watch any of those quantum physics documentaries, you see those guys just sitting like in a park with a notebook, just going over shit that you know it might as well be make believe. You, you don't know what they're writing down. <laughs> I mean, you ever watch like you know like remember that Goodwill so Hunting true. thing sure. when Matt Damon of, solved some puzzle? What right. is that puzzle? Right. What, yeah, is what is that? Is that? Is that make Believe. How many how many people on earth understand that shit? That's a good question. What do you think though? It's a like tiny a tiny guess. fraction. Well, you know, less, less than one percent, obviously, yeah. right? Well, I, I, I a... love that when somebody looks at the blackboard and everything's written on it. Someone just lo walks up, takes the chalk, and goes, "No, nah, this is a little <laughs> at the right bottom." Here. And it's like, "Oh my God, how did you get right. that answer?" It's like, "Oh, you see, you just." Too there was a Russian scientist or a Russian mathematician who just solved some uh, what uh, thought to be impossible equation. And he won some massive prize, like over a million dollars, and he decided he didn't want it. Wasn't he, he young? Really? It. Was yeah. he really young? Yeah. yeah. Why, but who came Fuck up with the equation money. to begin with? He's young uh -huh. like he's like 30-something. But who came up with the equation? Oh, I don't impossible. understand. I'm an idiot when it comes to math. So wouldn't my, that my guy brain know the answer? Is fucking, there's, there's people's brains that are designed for certain
certain things, you know. <laughs> I'm really good at pointing out stupid shit. I'm, I'm, I can talk some shit on stage. I understand when, uh, fighting. I understand human nature. But goddamn, if math just is fucking stumped the shit out of me. You make me calculate 20%. percent i just like, huh? Uh, hey. I know 10, so I'll just do that twice. I was trying to figure, <laughs> taking a shit yesterday, trying to figure this, uh, this girl had tweeted something, but she tweeted the same thing over and over to a bunch of different people. And, uh, you know, and I said, honey, you, you wrote the same thing to 100 people. And she goes, you better learn how to count because I only did to four people. And I was like, okay, four, but you only have 73 tweets. Now, what percentage of your tweets have been dedicated to this exact same thing? <laughs> hmm. that that's when I was like, it took me like 10 minutes to figure out that it's somewhere around five. We could help you with the 20% thing. Though, <laughs> I tried to do it in my head, though. Yeah, but I'm yeah. like, let's see how much of an idiot I actually am. <laughs> well, that's a fucking, what a shit mind I have here. <laughs> I was yeah. working with this shitty tool. Not quite the beauty. Beautiful mind, right? <laughs> no. is, is it a girl? Yeah. Is it a girl tweeting a song that she wants everybody to listen to? Well, no, but why oh, not? that oh, I just my, blocked her. Oh, I, I made a mistake of retweeting her one day. Never. Now she won't leave me the fuck I, alone. I emailed her once. I'm like, she go away. And I'm like, you want people? You don't want to just be a, a, a joke. You want to yeah. have something that's good. And right. I actually sent her a nice email, right. and she's just sociopathic in her desire to be noticed. I, retweeted, I blocked her. It was I retweeted her as being an asshole, and that just got her going. Like Some, she was psyched that she got a retweet. Yeah, I have no desire. Some to. chick tweeted a Michael Jackson lyric: "If you want to make the world a better place, take it, Lucas. Take a look at yourself and make a change." Ooh. And she put, tweeted that like, "Ooh, profound." Oh, really? You're talking to a guy who carved his fucking face up, and <laughs> yeah. he slept in a fucking oxygen chamber, <laughs> and you know, eventually was getting anesthetized every night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he made a change. Yeah. Like, good, yeah. good quote. He looked at the man in the mirror and saw Diana Ross. <laughs> what a creep! <laughs> How fucked up is it though? You go to propofol to fall asleep. Yeah, Holy that guy went shit. deep. Well, you know, I think when you have enough people yes man in you. It gets to that point yeah. eventually, right? You know all that guy. Was it Conrad Murray? Yeah. How yeah. funny was him, man? He, there's a video of a stripper. Uh, it was on fucking CNN.com like this was news. It was a stripper that was on the witness stand. And they were like, do you know Mr. Conrad Murray? Yes. <laughs> this is how she said. Every question was, yes. Um, and when did you meet Mr. Murray? Was it at your place of business? Yes. And do you work as an exotic dancer? Yes. And, you know, it's just basically <laughs> establishing that this guy likes strippers. Yeah, right. yeah. And, you know, it's like, to, it was so funny because the chick that was saying this, you know, the prosecutor, it was like, she, you could tell, like, she was so confident that she had something really great here. This guy likes strippers. <laughs> like, he wanted, you know, and it's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, wow, we're going to totally get, it's a hot get at button, his character. It's a gotcha. Right, it's a, right. you're not allowed to like that. Right. You're not allowed to like that. Oh, you're a doctor and you had a relationship with a, a stripper. stripper. Oh, boy. Who cares? This gotcha. guy was flying him around. Down fucking and fucking just <laughs> banging him left and right. Michael Jackson was giving him, him like a hundred thousand dollars a week. This guy was balling, was really? son. Yeah, here, here's here it is right here. <laughs> the defendant. Listen, this is this is news, man. He was hot tie. as fuck. Yes. 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 Murray, the defendant. <laughs> yes. Did you meet Conrad Murray in February of two thousand eight? Yes. Look how hot she is. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Listen, I will give you a job. You don't have to work. Yes. Yes. You <laughs> that yes is weird. Yes. Man. Was that club located in Las Vegas? Yes. Spearman Rhino for the win. This fella from uh, that first uh, meeting with Conrad Murray. <laughs> it's all quiet. Did he give you his telephone number? Yes. Ah. And at some that? point, that would be hot if she was after, sucking your dick. I'm gonna tell you that. Oh man, yeah. you want you want to suck some more dick? Yes. Yeah, you want to contact him on the phone yeah. number that he has face? provided yes. to you when you met in the club? Can I put in your ass? Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. She you like really that? does. And after yeah. that your so first well. meeting, did because she's a dirty you girl. And Conrad Stayed Murray uh, communicate back and forth? Yes. Describe I just want to hear her do that all day. Yeah. That you had with him, please. Oh, now. Oh. You see, don't, oh, no, don't get her to talk. No, no talking. Just yes. Your yes. questions are relevant. Miss Bella, did Ms. you Bella. call the fuck out of Murray Bella. on Lexus. the telephone number that he provided to you when he <laughs> met you in the club? Yes. Did <laughs> he call you back, or did he make contact by calling you? Yes. Did Conrad Murray really send you text yeah. messages? It's a hot yes, though. It's hot. Yes. Did you text <laughs> yeah. message What's hot about it never Conrad is. Murray back to the girl. number that he had given you? Yes. Girly, if you're out there, holla at me. Find me. We need to Ms. talk Bella, on Twitter. Conrad Murray looks like beef jerky. Conrad Murray send you Joe Rogan finds the best shit. 
on June yes. 6th. Yes. You got to check out his podcast, obviously. Yes. You never know when he's yes. doing it, but. Yes. Yes. She's fucking hot, But don't man. you hate and look at her. She shows up at court and her tits are hanging out. Yeah. What a dirty girl. Yes. She doesn't know how any other way to dress. Like, this is how I'm supposed to dress, right? Is Does there any videos like of business? her online? Or I don't know. I don't know where her, her name search. was. You know, and, sure and he had a hot baby mama, too. He had a he very was, attractive he was baby mama. It's hilarious, man. This guy was just balling on Michael Jackson's money. That's right. If you want to <laughs> yeah. a good life. Make a change. Yes, make a change. Na, 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 na. Yeah, Star hilarious. What a, what a strange. You talk about like a real uh, epic story. The story of Michael Jackson. If anybody ever does it, they'll have to use CGI to actually do it, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, no one's willing to fucking right. do that to their face. For imagine if someone, for you know, role? Daniel Day Lewis, that and go, I'm going to get all the surgeries and everything. And they filmed it over a course of like five years, and it's the only role he could ever do again. <laughs> or just hire yeah. different actors to play him. Yeah, like you know, like a black but that male. Would suck. And then they would a white never woman. totally get it. You know, I hate a movie where you see like the guy's a kid and then you see all of a sudden the scene merges and he's a grown man yeah. now like how did that fucking kid become right. that guy yeah a couple of times they did a good job on a it couple with some times. movies but for the most part it's like it takes man. you out of the movie but the michael jackson story of him being you know this amazing child prodigy he was such a bad motherfucker that they let him sing and his older brothers didn't yeah. get to sing his older <laughs> brothers were like this mother check this little motherfucker out they were like, shaving they, at they that were point. grown men right. they were dancing getting pussy yeah. and the little five-year-old is in the front right. jackson five and the five-year-old is the bad one he's dancing and everybody's cheering and loving him and these guys are like what about us what about yeah, us yeah. You imagine you're the older fucking brother, and your younger brother comes along and just shocks the world. Like, no one's ever seen a talent like that. And then you watch that guy slowly evolve into this complete fucking weirdo. Remember when he was in that interview with that Indian dude, the guy, the, the guy yeah. with the British accent? Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy was, like, asking him all these questions about Bashir. sleeping with men. Martin Bashir, or sleeping, yeah. Martin Bashir. sleeping yeah. with children. He lives yeah. in the neighborhood. Oh. Does he live in your neighborhood? Yeah, I, I see him all the time at the dumb juice store. Do, do you ever talk to him? I should. What was it like to be around Michael Jackson? I should. Mm. And then you see He's not he approachable, a, a though. A bank of lights in front of him. He had like all these like crazy lights yeah. to make himself, you know, he wanted no shadows anywhere. He wanted just completely <laughs> flushed out skin, <laughs> yeah. you know, really weirded out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, M Michael Jackson controlled like that whole interview and it's, it's so uber bizarre. He doesn't even know how to be normal. When they took him around, he was like buying things. And even the way he buys things is odd. It's just. Just strange. Yeah, he's just picking things up. I want that. Giving. Yeah. It's just so strange and fucking crazy. But you go he back no from idea this how to be kid. A human. You think you he know? touched kids, Joe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think that many kids come out and say you touched him if there's not something right. up. Yep. I don't know if he fucked him or if he, you know, maybe masturbated in front of him. Or that's what the, a lot of the stories were. None of the kids say he actually fucked them. You know, no. the kids said he did s stuff like he went down on them and stuff. I think, you know, there's an, another theory that Michael Jackson was castrated, that he's a, uh, you know, a castrato. That's why he can k hit those those notes. Oh, but that's shit. not the notes that a man with testicles ca <laughs> is capable of singing. You know, I mean, I don't, that sounds completely fucking conspiracy theory. Well, but. he obviously didn't father those children. Yeah, exactly. A little, Isn't yeah. that why his nose was made thinner, too, like to help with uh, the air passing through for certain notes? I heard that was one reason that he wanted <laughs> to keep his nose thin. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. He didn't yeah. want to look like his dad. That's why he changed yeah, his he nose. his fucking dad. Yeah, he, he you know, I mean, he, he might have used that excuse, yeah. but he the fuck had out. That's not big, that was, wide nose as yeah. a kid. Yeah. And then he became this weirdo, man. This yeah, this was a great strange. interview. Yeah, yeah, that's Bashir. Hey. Martin so, Bashir. You mean he became like some weird leprechaun monster character? <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, to go from Michael Jackson, the, the the young kid, to this weird, high pitched voice man who lives this fantasy life where he has an amusement park in his backyard and yeah. brings little kids over, and he, clearly his childhood sucked hard. <laughs> You know, he did not enjoy it, and he wants to recreate it and recapture it and sort of make it his own now that he's, you know, now that he's a man. That was, like, sort of what I was getting out of it. But as a story, it's we've never seen that happen before. Nah. Someone getting really famous when they're really young and then becoming this thing. 
You know, that's totally a relatively different. new possibility. Right. The possibility of becoming a child star, the Lindsay Lohans of the world. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. Shirley Temple was probably the first one, right? But even then, the, the kind of exposure that she got was nothing compared no, to what, nothing what people get to today. What now forget about he it. He's literally yeah. the biggest star on the planet. On the planet. In, in Africa, Africa he in Asia, he couldn't go here. anywhere. Yeah, and even with his fucking crazy face, they never abandoned him. They just no. sort of accepted <laughs> that he fucked with his face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it seems like uber bizarre, man. Was he in Vegas? Yeah, and he goes and just, that's when he was living in Vegas. Remember that? Yeah. And then he moved to fucking, he moved to Dubai. Remember that? Yep. He had a bunch yeah, of boys yeah. with him in Dubai. Did he have boys with him? Yeah. Yeah, his photos of him and kids wearing turbans and shit. Or kids wearing uh, burkas. With the luckiest manager in the world. I bought that. You bought that? The globe. Yeah. Right. Why can you go upstairs? Yeah. We're taking you upstairs. Yeah, he just decides, I want this, I want that. Hi. Everybody Jesus goes, there's people Christ. just watching him. Giant there's crowd of people with holding cameras. Want these? I need that. Uh -huh. Want this one? This one? Why? This one? Well, yeah, like, what is it's he buying? Weird shit. What is he buying? Yeah. Like, just weird shit. I don't, you this can't even describe set. it. Isn't it beautiful, oh, this set? Sure. He just walks on. I want this chest set. Yeah. So this one's bigger. This, this is bigger. bigger. Wow. I mean, so I good. can put the bishop up my right? ass. <laughs> yeah. That's the so sign. Mean it's for me. Okay. How much is that one? The so sign. It's for one, me. These ones. It's only eighty-nine thousand. Eighty-nine thousand dollars for a no chest set. That asshole is broke. Eighty-nine thousand bucks for a chest set. Where's all this shit now? Uh, Did you ever see his house? Like when they showed like the in the interior of his house, mm -hmm. it's fucking amazing, man. Where's yeah. all that stuff? Oh, I bet the family fucking family dove fucking, in like yeah. vultures for that uh, shit. Eighty nine thousand. Well, he's worth nice more garage. now yeah. than he ever was yeah. when he was alive. Right. I mean, once he died, Elvis syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm that, sure it's that shit just never goes away. It'll yeah, just be a cash cow. Yeah, especially forever. when. I mean, you go uh, back and see the. His closest friends uh, the, is Matt Lauer. It was a room yeah, filled yeah. with artwork. These walls had huge paintings on them, some depicting Michael Do you think Jackson that guy ever tells dirty jokes? Lauer? Matt? Oh, yeah. Matt Lauer yeah. tell a stinky pussy joke. I bet. Fuck yeah. Do you think so? Absolutely. He is a man. But I think right he's been neutered. With a, a lot of these news guys are fucking filthy, man. You ever hang out with, like, news people in a bar? It's hilarious. They have a few drinks and they're fucking racist and dirty and fuck it. It's it's, it's because they're suppressed all yeah, day. Yeah, they're totally suppressed and. We what about that weatherman in Arkansas that died in the bath? Oh, the, his oh, friend yes, died yeah, in the bathtub. Uh, 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 he woke up next that to was the dead body. The fucking... guy who owned the house oh, came downstairs because he heard snoring. Right. Yeah. And he comes down here, he's snoring, and there's a guy who's the weatherman, and next to him, touching him, leaning up against him, is a man with a purple face, dead with a dog collar on. And meanwhile, he's snoring. Yeah. He's asleep, yeah. touching this dead guy. Like then, he didn't even know this guy died on him. <laughs> <laughs> then he, he he woke him up. The guy woke up. He looked at the dead guy, ran out into the guy's living room, and just started puking. Yeah, isn't in that the guy's hilarious? living room. And shit. What a scene. Up. That's a hell of a fucking scene, That's man. That's a party, man. That's a hell of a party. <laughs> That's how you know you're partying when the guy Holy you party with fucking fuck. dies. <laughs> what, about, what, what about the weatherman that we fucking uh, knew and ran into a few times that just... Meanwhile, there's a, a weather guy right there magnet. while we're saying this. See, like, yeah. up on the screen? Oh, Wait, yeah. They're all just odd yeah, yeah. fucks. Which weatherman? That guy that just loves fucking telling oh, filthy jokes. and oh, 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 <laughs> just you, you don't see oh, him. What's his name? When he's not on the TV, he's just telling horrible, filthy jokes, being completely inappropriate to any female in the workplace around oh, yeah. him and shit. And they all just know. It's like, uh When I was going out with uh, Jill, we... we uh, uh, we're, we're around him every so often, there and he would just say, that guy. "Yeah, there he is." <laughs> I don't know if you want to mention his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll cut him some slack right now, but I'll, I'll tell you this much: he loves the Asian brunch. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh he really? Loves only the only Asian Asians. Brunch. What was he talking about? Only and Asians. they don't. And he doesn't like if they uh, know too much English. <laughs> <laughs> he gets. He goes to the overseas ones. And He's beloved, about, man. I've seen it with a few different. I was at a party nice. once, and yeah, he came up don't to me. Say his name, he man. just started That's saying shit like, "Would you love to shove it in her asshole?" <laughs> Fuck it. I'm like, Jesus dirty. Christ, this guy is filthy. Because. He met us and he was excited to meet us. Like, oh fuck, I can someone I can talk to. I could spew some yeah. filth. <laughs> oh, like, these shock jocks will listen to me. <laughs> you imagine what it's like to be in that fucking really oh, suppressed God. world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you imagine if you had to do that? If you had to be like a, a radio terrible. DJ, 
Oh, not, really, not a radio yeah. DJ. Um, you know, uh, 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 an afternoon guy uh, on one of these. I wouldn't be doing news this if talk we, shows. If we were neutered. Fuck that. That's not just neutered, man. You're, I mean, you're reading off a prompter. Right. You yep. have no input into it. No real it. thought There's at all. There's no thought at all. You're just like, like I watched Ryan Seacrest when he's talking about Ugh. Kim Kardashian's wedding or something like that. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. do you really give a fuck about this? The, and you're not connected. You're just reading this stuff right. off of a prompter. Imagine <laughs> if that was your whole life. Your whole life was I just guess only doing on the that money kind they're of stuff. Right. Yeah. But after a while, you still go fucking crazy. Yeah, you'd need an outlet. He's making yeah. close to yeah. 100 million a year. Who, Ryan Seacrest? Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a rare, though. He's a rare case. But, but what right. I'm saying is, like, any of these guys, any news reporter guy. But any... you know they're all full of shit. Well, remember Pat O'Brien? Remember when that guy went nutty? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. That's that audio. Wasn't that beautiful? What do you mean, remember? It was great. It carried our show for a year. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, it's that thing. It's Me, the guy you, Betty. who, on one <laughs> Betsy. side. Betsy. Betsy. It was Betsy. <laughs> Betty. On one side, he's this, like, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Another show with a family comedy and there's <laughs> another program and what a great movie to take the whole kids the whole family and the kids to <laughs> all right back to you tim me all, the whole time he's thinking about blow and sticking fingers and assholes <laughs> and coming up people's noses he's just ready to get crazy and he was, he's gonna he say to the girl if you like this when you when i walk by just just wink. Yeah, like yeah, he just yeah. wanted her to acknowledge that it's, she wanted to uh, suck his cock. This dumb fuck yeah, is leaving messages. <laughs> fucking secret languages. Well, uh, Bill O'Reilly, too. Same fucking thing, oh, that yeah. dummy. Oh. Bill O'Reilly. Oh, yeah. Bill O'Reilly. Same fucking thing. But he got her to shut up. He was able yeah, to yeah, sweep that yeah, shit yeah, away. Yeah. I wonder how much they paid that shit. I would love to know. Because that sounded, story that was. sounded like oh. audio, the way she yeah. described it. It Millions. sounded like a transcript. Yeah. yeah. The way she described it, like I think he knew there possibly could be audio you know, or something. Yeah, That's yeah. Yeah. smart. Well, it was a transcript. Yeah. Well, I mean, Joe, yeah. we got something for you because you're talking oh, about the news guys. God. Uh, this just came out today, a drunk news anchor. Oh, yeah. Drunk on the oh, air? Oh, yeah. This guy is just a, a fucking girl. trip. A it's girl? a girl? It's a girl, sorry. Oh, she's drunk. How about that one girl oh. that had that sort of half a seizure? The and then oh, yeah, she was fine. Yeah. yeah. Weird, huh? Some yeah. residents were celebrating a new addition at the New Alm Medical Center this afternoon. The Virginia Piper's Cancer in Institute oh. opened, and new members were invited to an open house with the food and tours. The new institute is twice the size <laughs> oh. of the old institute. Or center and incorporates <laughs> center. more treatment options to employ or employees. Clinical trials and genetic testing are also offered with the expansion. Families in to help design. Wow! How she do you know she, can we see her pay? face? Yeah, I want to see her. How yeah. do you know she's drunk? Did they say it? Can we pick it up uh, from from your video? Is there, that Sam? her right there? Is that the video? Yeah. The yeah, big, well, the uh, big girl. Let's we'll take a look from Sam. Feel like the Christmas season is here. And near Wasika. She might just be stupid. Yeah, she looks retarded. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the fucking thing says, is news anchor drunk or just Minnesotan? Today's event That's what it says on Gawker. Food, music, food, and a chance to meet the Santa dog. They felt three ways for Christmas parents and grandparents. <laughs> oh, she might have just got hit with a fastball. Really, yeah, the first yeah, major yeah. thing of springtime on the farm. So even though it's she's snowing and drive. And wet she has, and cold. She has, like, fucking stupid eyes. Yeah. To yeah. She looks doped up. Other events today included holiday card making, tree lighting, well, also and she could be on pills. Yeah, yeah. Pills are more likely because pills make people pretty Christmas functional. She could Rush Limbaugh well, was taking a hundred of them a day and doing his radio show. Local food. He took so much Oxycontin, he went deaf. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that what happened to his fucking dumb ears? That's what Alex Jones says, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Yeah, Alex he, Jones says it. He was yeah. taking you like a Alex, right? fuckload of pills. Fun. Good old yeah, Alex he, he Jones. He was like taking massive amounts. We yeah. don't, you know. But at one point in time, they said he was up to like a hundred a day. Oh, oh my god, that's like just How taking your body pills. Handle that shit. But that's taking pills all day. Yeah, yeah. Like you just all have day. to constantly. Well, be not taking really. Pills. You know, if you're taking ten at a time, you only have to do it ten times. Uh, that's true. <laughs> okay. Look at me. Ten times, <laughs> dummy. I'm just thinking one at one at a time. Uh, exactly. Flooding up with oxycodone. That's ten hours. Ten. Ten hours of pill taking. Amazing. Every hour that was good math, by the way, Joe. Yeah. What a nutty, crazy motherfucker he is, huh? <laughs> you think you're not good at math? You fucking came right out with, the, with yes, a, 10, a pill analogy. Rush Limbaugh. How, how ridiculous yeah. is that guy? Talking all this shit about drug addicts. Meanwhile, right. he had his fucking housekeeper going and, and buying pills. That whole si situation in Florida is really yep. set up to make junkies. Mm. They have no <laughs> database. So, no, really? Yeah, if you are a doctor in Florida and I go to Dr. Opie and I get a prescription on, my back hurts, they have these things called pain management centers in Florida. They don't exist anywhere else. And what it is is you go to a doctor, you go to the pain management center, there's a doctor, he writes your prescription for OxyContin, and you go right next door 
to the same fucking building, oh, wow. and there's a prescription. You know, the the the, the uh, pharmacy they fill out your prescription, Why the fuck and then they you go across that? the street to Doctor Anthony, and you go, Doctor Anthony, my back hurts, hey, and they I can't even that. check. There's no database. Why oh, do they allow shit. that? Because they're trying to move more oxycontins. It's that <laughs> simple. It's a hundred percent. That's the only reason wow. why they wouldn't reform that law. Is because the pharmaceutical companies are making fucking billions of dollars this way. <laughs> Not only that, there's a lot of suspicion that the pharmaceutical companies are leaking drugs into the black market because. There's more in the black market than corresponds with the amount of prescriptions written. Oh, really? Yeah, so they're like, well, there's a, these they, numbers yeah, aren't even fucking from? adding up. Like, they'll find people with giant fucking stashes of Oxycontins. You know, they'll arrest someone. Like, where'd you get this shit? And then, you know, they, you know, oh, I got it at the pain management center in Florida. They call it the Oxycontin Express because people <laughs> drive from all these other estates all the way down to Florida. Vanguard did a whole uh, uh, piece wow, on it on their man. TV show. Why is it only Florida, though? How come other places don't they, have it? Because they're corrupt. Because yeah. Florida figured out a way. I mean, the pharmaceutical companies figured out a way to bribe one state, and they mm. got that one state wired. There's a, a couple other states where it's similar. I think West Virginia and one or two other, but none of them are as lenient as Florida. Florida I bet they get the away with one. it too because it's like, oh well, we got a lot of old retired right. people here yeah. at the you know the twilight of their life, and they need pain management and. Yeah, let's set up a yeah, bunch of Yeah, that's these probably like exactly the on, argument right? that they yeah, use. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking completely oh, insane. The feds off uh, their ass. Meanwhile, yeah. they'll arrest the shit out of you if you got some weed. <laughs> <Yeah>. Krish <laughs> Krishna from Jersey knows what that reporter is on. Oh, yeah? Krishna, go ahead. Hey, yeah, that, that chick's uh, high as a kite on, um, on Xanax. Oh, yeah? The verbal slurring, that kind of demented look in her eyes, that, uh, those are all very, very common signs of uh, Xanax. I've been a of fan of a, a little, little Xanax than, uh, buzz every so often. What is, I've never done Xanax. What is that like? What's the buzz like? Well, I've never done it either, but I, I teach EMS, and we see people... What's EMS? Emergency Medical Services. You see people that, that see get people. These, these prescriptions from doctors that really don't give a shit about their patients. Um, they just want to shut them up and give them pills. And they, uh, I had a student actually once trip on Xanax, and she was totally lucid the whole time. She was actually teaching part of the class. Like wow. Xanax is like a lot of NyQuil, it feels like. You kind of... You kind of get a little euphoric, but a little like sleepy. And yeah, I, I always uh, thought it, it seemed like, you know, that scene in Pulp Fiction where Travolta shoots up and he's driving. Yeah. And his face is just kind of half a smile and he licks his lips and takes a breath. That's kind of how you feel. Just kind of, ah. Relaxed. Mm. And it's for anxiety, right? Yeah. Well, it yeah. makes sense that she's kind of a big girl. Maybe she gets real nervous about being on camera. And so <laughs> yeah, she popped, yeah. popped she an extra <laughs> one. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> left her a horrid Facebook message. Uh, yeah. Hey, you fat bitch. You yeah. fat cunt. Your fucking reading sucks. Uh, <laughs> give me a fucking Read Xanax. that teleprompter, you stupid bitch. You're never good at anything. <laughs> Go suck some more dicks. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. The meanest shit, man. <laughs> yes. If you want to know what the fucking future of the world is read YouTube comments. <laughs> if you don't think this race is a cancer, read read, read those little negative fucking virus humans. There are the little little bugs. I love that. Every now and then you just you know you'll read like a you'll like have a video and like a bunch of people will like it and then you. I'm a virus you see human. It. You see it, just one negative fuck <laughs> hanging on to life. Great court case, too. A That's fucking really blogger funny, who tried to claim journalistic protection for defamation oh, right, yeah. against a, a, a lawyer a lost. Said, fuck you. The court said, no, you do, you're not a, a mainstream journalist. Because journalists have protection against defamation for certain things. And well, what did uh, this guy do? He, he said that a lawyer was a thief. Like a lawyer who handled the case, whatever. This lawyer was a thief and incompetent. Things you can't say about a lawyer. Like you could say, I hated my lawyer. I think my lawyer sucked. But to say your lawyer is a thief is, is a defamation. Sure. And, I uh, bet I could have gotten better representation. You could yeah, say things like that. Yeah. But if you're like, he's a liar and a thief, the, bad, that's, that's bad things to say. Right. Yeah. And uh, a judge said you do not have journalistic. So all these fucking cunty bloggers. I love. Uh, you should be able to express an opinion, but I love the fact these little cunts are going to start getting stuck well, to them. The Good. saddest thing about a lot of these bloggers is that's the only way they feel that they get attention. So mm -hmm. it's almost like that is the job. The mm -hmm. job is to be cunty. Right. The but job is, I mean, this is the only way anybody's paying attention to you because it's the only thing unique about your opinion at all. The only thing unique is that you're willing to be, like, really unaware of this person's feelings that's going to mm -hmm. be hearing this, and you're really, like, you don't care at all. This is what I have to say. Fuck them. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> 
it's the easiest yeah. way to write stuff, it too. It's like, you, you don't really have to put a lot of thought behind just bashing somebody. So it's easy. easy. Everybody's we, flawed. We do it here every day. Yeah, it's fucking, well, yeah. at least you guys are funny, though. You know, that's, <laughs> Sometimes. look, it's half of the, half of life. Is but they're anonymous a lot of times. Everything's yeah. fucked up. The yeah. anonymity okay. is what I hate. Yeah, I oh, hate yeah. I don't hate a guy using his real name. I, it's a really weird thing. When a guy comes out and just says shit I don't like, if he's being himself, I have a certain amount of respect for that because he's entitled to it. But it's when they have this fucking... Shown his face. It's when they fucking hide that I just love when like they're uprooted and fucking humiliated. I was trying to get yeah. a, a, a. I was thinking of getting into a Twitter argument last night. I read something and I'm like, I, I started and I'm like, <laughs> I got 140 <laughs> characters. I just, I'm not in the mood. Yeah. Blo and then I just blocked them. I blocked everybody. I'm like, I don't care. I, I would have argued this point. I was like, fuck it, block. You know, they busted another chick in Louisiana, a uh, really hot chick who uh, fucked some 13 year old yeah, boy yeah, at Bible yeah. Camp. Oh, yeah. Loved it. So uh, I, you yeah. know, I, I tweeted with a hashtag, where was this hooker when I was 13? Sure. And, <laughs> and I, you know, it's, uh, like everybody would, just joked around about sure. it. Like, this is, to me, you know, and whenever you, you know, as a comic or you, you see a story like that in the news, you just, you laugh. It's easy. I have to put something like this on Twitter. I, I, People want to read this story. Yeah. And so some fucking asshole uh, takes this uh, tweet and tweets it to Anderson Cooper and TMZ <sighs> and says Joe Rogan endorses rape. Because, you know, he yeah. asked me, like, you know, that you're saying that the standards are different if it's, uh, you know, if this was a man who was doing it to a woman as opposed to a woman doing it to a boy. And I go... Yes, if he's 13 yeah. and she's hot. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm it's saying. Completely yeah. different. It's called, really there's no sexual that. equality when it comes to child molesting. Right. It's a different, completely well, different experience. Totally. Every guy yeah. at 13 dreamt of having sex with I was molested with an older by a chick woman. when I was 13. And did sort it. of. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, sort of. She just she sort of grabbed my dick and kissed me and made out with me and stuff. But right. I was fine. How old was she? I was <laughs> fine. <laughs> Everything's good. She was 21. Wow. Yeah. yeah, she was hot too. She was crazy. She had a, a boyfriend that was a man too. This really freaked me out. <laughs> she, was, she, she was just a neighborhood oh, slut, man. and her boyfriend was a fucking construction worker, and he had a big hairy chest, and he was a man. And I remember seeing this guy. I'm like, this is her boyfriend. He's a fucking man. Meanwhile, she me. was just a freak. Yeah, you couldn't get enough dicks in front of her. She was just <laughs> she just loves some girls. That's the exact same thing dick, happened to me on dick. California. But same it, fucking. But really? if it's an older guy, yeah. if it's an 13, older guy with a 13 year old girl, then I think some girls they just want to be the first. They see a guy. He's, you know, he's young and he's 13. He's like, I'm going to get him before he even becomes a man. And I'm going to be the first one to rock his fucking world. Because yeah. I think every girl secretly wants to be remembered forever by a guy. And their number one fear is that the guy's just going to use him like a fleshlight. Just dump a load in them, <laughs> completely forget about him and run away. They all want to be, even if they don't even, if it doesn't work out with the, the man, what a woman would love is in the back of her head to be that fucking fantasy that, like, when the baby's crying and the wife is fat. And she's screaming at you, and you leave the house for a cigarette, and you're standing out there in the driveway. You wish maybe I could have been with Mary. Yeah, yeah. Because Mary sucked my dick when I was 13. That, <laughs> that crazy 21 year old bitch. God, I never yes. should have stayed with her. Like, in, you know, like for a woman to plant a romantic seed like that, it sounds crazy, but that's what a lot of these I bitches are right. doing. A lot of these bitches are just getting their first licks in. Yeah. They know. They're like, this is not ripe yet. It's not ripe. I'm taking a bite anyway. I'm doing I'm it. I'm taking a bite anyway. I'm, there's a lot of people looking at at this piece of fruit and I'm going to bite it. And there's my legacy right there. Yeah. He's going to fucking keep my pussy alive yeah. in his head. <laughs> well, that's the reality TV right there. The, yeah. the, the desire to be extremely famous all comes from the same source. The desire <laughs> yes. to be special. The desire to be special for no reason whatsoever. Just to fucking... That, get in there. That's it, man. I think Fuck, we got to get yeah. you out of here for NBC. Fuck yeah. NBC. Damn, NBC. Oh, do, do you well, still, by the way, before I forget, do you use your say no, I think I'm good for another half an hour. Oh, the most fuck. fuck. Yeah. Oh, I think 8 I'll leave at 8.30. Yeah, Stupid yeah, yeah. roll and tell me 8 o'clock. Ah, Roland's no, no. an idiot. Do you and still he, use your uh, no, say no I haven't used it in forever. I haven't used mine either. I don't think it works anymore. People have been tweeting me that it doesn't work anymore. They might have went under. It was oh, fun though. It was. I used to do uh, like little things where I would, I would get on it and I'd, I'd just answer phone calls from people. I never actually went live. I mean, once I did. It's fun because all the other people can hear you. So all the people that it's like being on hold on a radio station. Oh shit! And a wow. bunch of people are calling in, and so you know, one time I had like you know thirty or forty people on, and I was just answering one after the other, and I put it on Twitter. It was really fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But I don't know if it exists anymore. They were tying into something else. They were really nice people. The people that ran it, and they got bought out by somebody, and they were trying to do something with it. And I just when don't did know they get what... bought out? How long ago? I don't know. No, my, my Jonathan told me, and I just went in one wonder. It's all changing other. so fast, man. It really is, dude. Twitter's, Twitter's, you Twitter's get here into, to stay, though, I think. Yeah, but it'll How become something making money else? off of Twitter? That's but the problem. No say now. It doesn't exist anymore. Wow. Say Which is acquired by Google. Uh, for media increase, wow, it doesn't exist anymore. Say now, it's it done. Why did oh, Google bought it, and now they're probably doing something with it? What? 
Why don't they fucking stop? No, they're taking over everything. They're Skynet. But, they, but they're also... <laughs> what what didn't work? Google Buzz everything. didn't work. I and this fucking... What's this no, one now Google, they got? Google, Google is Plus. rocking. Google what about, Plus You heard stinks. about this oh, yeah, client IQ right software now. issue that they're having. Massive class action lawsuit about the client IQ software. Everything you yeah. say, every fucking dirty text you make, every phone number you press is all logged and stored in a database somewhere. Right. That's fucked up. Every Google phone has it. Every droid, unless you root it and put in a different operating system like a lot of those super geeks do. Mm -hmm. But some guy had to find this, man. Some fucking genius oh, kid yeah, heard about found that. this stuff. You know, no one knew that this was in there. And everybody's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? The guy shows every text he wrote. He goes, hello, world. And it shows it in the, in the computer that it's sending out. Wow. Yeah, everything he wrote. Every, every If you send a picture, every when number you that you press on the dial. You just take for granted that you're sending it from point A to point B, and yeah. it's going through so many channels yeah. during that transfer, and you take it for granted that it's just going yeah, to, you're going to see it, and then the end places. person's yeah. going to see it at the end of the line? No. We're becoming part of one. We, it, it is a really weird evolution. One giant collective conscious. We're eventually, when we start thinking like Bernie, uh, what, what the fuck is it? Co uh, not Kozar. Uh, Ray? Uh, Ray uh, Kurzweil. Kurzweil. Kurzweil, yeah, was saying that we're all going to be part of this, uh, and I believe when computers are part yeah. of our brain and we can just think Google and think what we want, we're all going to know what each other is thinking. Thoughts will no longer be private. We'll be punished for certain thoughts. Yep. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. It eventually, it's where we're going to evolve to. That's a step along the way. What it is is there's a bridge between the monkey and whatever the fuck we're going to become, and we are the bridge. We're, we're, we're the halfway mark you know, between yeah. what, whatever event. It's, uh, unquestionably, there's going to be no secrets. It's going in that right. direction. You know, With Facebook already, you see the, the, the lack of privacy that people have. Oh, yeah. and, how much, and they're willing to give it up. Yeah, yeah What's willing wrong? to give it up. What you yeah. know about people you just do not even know yeah. is amazing. amazing. The amount of information you can get on a person just... And that's uh, just do you ever feel like a creep astounding. because someone sends you a message and for whatever reason you see someone's face and you go, wow, she's really pretty. Let me click on her link. Oh, this is her husband's page and this is what he does. Yeah, and this yeah. is what he and works with. And then you just go into some strange person's world for like 20 minutes. And <laughs> yeah, like, what the yeah, fuck yeah, am I yeah, doing? Yeah. Yeah, Looking at yeah, pictures yeah. of them with their babies. <laughs> yeah. Here's them in the snow. Here's them on the beach. <laughs> Exactly. And you're like, I don't even know these people, but I'm, no, I'm looking at their life. I'm like, not part of their lives. Yeah, but That's so fucked up. I, I get fascinated by it, man. It's, I mean, that is the, uh, the lure of reality TV is just a voyeuristic sort of, you know, looking into people's lives thing. Yeah. They say it's related to the fact that we don't live in tribes anymore, you know, and that we used to gossip amongst each other in tribes, and that's sort of gone because very few people are even in contact with your neighbors anymore. Very yeah, few yeah. people have, like, real yeah. communities. My neighbor's and, an asshole. Yeah, I, I mean, don't talk to that. That's what asshole. he says. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, in, the, in, in this case, he's the asshole. What does I he know do? I can, he's just a dick. He, he, every time he sees me, he goes, "Can I help you?" I'm like, "I, I live, I live on this fucking." Does he want to help you? Yeah, maybe he looks at your <laughs> cock balls and thinks you need a release. <laughs> maybe he's just got an aggressive way of picking he's up on dudes. Just yeah, a fucking. Makes tries dick. to make maybe you feel he's uncomfortable. Helpful. Yeah. That's his move. Yeah. This is one upsmanship move. <laughs> right. Can I help you? Well, I was thinking about sucking dicks. Yes. You, you want to say yes? I need some painting dicks. done. Please do. Yeah, and maybe he'll me. come in and help you out. Hey, how you been? He yeah. I'm just wandering around on the floor. I'm like, will you just fucking go in your stupid apartment? Is he an old guy? Yeah. He's just, he's, he maybe doesn't come just around, and, yeah. and he doesn't come around often, so it's like a second place for him, I guess. Oh, uh, so he's probably just out of it. Yeah. 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 But he's a dick. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to fucking find a nice group Most of people you live next right? to. Yeah, man, I I have a buddy of mine who moved into a house in Oregon and they fucking poisoned his dog. Some someone in the neighborhood poisoned his dog. He doesn't know who it was, but his dog just moved there from California. You know, the dogs barking at shit. That's what dogs do. What the fuck am I doing here? Ruff, ruff. <laughs> so someone gave him poison fucking dog food, man. Wow, and that's wow. brutal. Welcome to the neighborhood. I killed your dog. Yeah, that's... holy. Here's how you find out who did it. Yeah. Find out who's working the day shift. <laughs> uh, the night shift. Find yeah, out who's working yeah, the night yeah, shift yeah, and yeah, sleeps yeah. during the day. Right, because that will drive you nuts. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. should. Uh, we got a break just because of live reads. Sam's ah, panicking. Um, Joe's going to hang out. What for... happened to satellite radio? I know. Did right? we satellite radio have too. no commercials at one point in time? Wasn't that why you were paying for it? Yeah. What the now fuck they happened? Say, well, the music they slowly channels, started to see. sneak them in. They're like, well, the music channels don't it's have a... it, but the talk channels. They why can... does the talk channel have to have it? You would think oh, that it'd be. Oh, they say it so it gives us a, a chance to take a break. I don't know from talking. You need a break. So just babbling. Need a break so they can make some more money. A break that I'm fucking talking. Right. Yeah. So listen. Uh, sure. 
Joe's going to be here for another 15, 20 minutes. Let's not forget Fear Factor starting Monday at 8 on NBC. We're it looks so that. fucking cool. We're psyched I, it's back. I, I wish saying, I could show you the video. I don't have it on yeah. this fucking okay, phone. Okay, tell us the one episode that... Uh... I'll tell you as soon as we get off the air. Okay. Oh, fuck. Go to break. <laughs> the Opie and Anthony Show. Exactly. I'm in a bad mood. I was just telling Joe Rogan. I fucking hate Twitter because people like turn me on to shit I don't want to know about. And someone just retweeted a, a tweet from Kim Kardashian. She had a oh. life-changing experience in New York City. The life-changing experience was a reading from that fucking hack, John Edwards. Oh, really? You don't, you don't, you don't believe John Edwards. Please, Joe. <laughs> Please. No, I don't, I don't. The only psychic phenomenon I believe in is the ones that we can't control. Or very rare, the rare instances where uh, someone knows something's going to happen right before it happens. I, I believe oh. in the, I believe in some psychic fucking abilities, but John really? Edwards is a hack that's just making money off. Do you, uh, Anthony? Off people. I don't know. I'd I'd like to. There's no know. evidence. That's unfortunate. I know. That's just you know? it. No evidence with all these people. I'd like to be able to, you know, move a matchstick or something well, like yeah. that. We've ben talked about mind. We're so cool. Bend that spoon. Mm. We've talked about John Edwards a lot on this show. Not a spoon. And we've had people on. It's There's like no spoon. He's what? got fucking microphones. He's fucking. He's using all the tricks in the. In, yeah. Oh, Pendulette. Pendulette. Yeah. Oh, he torches that guy. Him yeah. On oh, yeah. our show, yeah. Yeah. explaining yeah. how it's done. Well, because you want to believe, so you you know you you lead the person on. Like I'm thinking of this relative, and and you give up the answers for the person. There is psychic shit that they can measure, like uh, whether or not someone's someone knowing that someone's looking at them. That's actually measurable. Oh. They've, they've actually proven that that people can statistically that there's there's numbers that show that people can actually tell when people are looking at them. Right. That is a weird feeling that you get. Yeah. What yeah. the fuck is that? That's an instinct of nature. Yeah. So you're gonna get attacked by something. Yeah, you sure. Feel you're being looked at. Right. Yeah. But right. where, how's how's that even happening? Yeah. Like, where is that? The reason from? there's a guy. Um, Fuck, what is it? Uh, Sheldrake. Robert Sheldrake? No, I forget his name. What, there's Shel Shit, I forget his That's full okay. name. You got anyway, everything else right. His, um, <laughs> his, uh, he's got a, a theory called uh, the, the, the morphic resonance field. And the idea is that there's like there's uh, some some sort of a, a field that connects everyone together. And that's why dogs know when their owners are coming home. Rupert Sheldrake. Mm. And that's how dogs know, like, in advance. Like, that's also provable. Like, you could put, like, cameras on dogs and, like, the owner oh, would be, Oh, they like, freak out, yeah. There weird times before. in the day, the owner would be on his way home and the dog would, like, perk up, you know? Could it be chemical more so than electrical, well, you know? It could be uh, all the above. Like, even somebody looking at you. Perhaps, mm. you know, there's some kind of a chemical reaction that your your body picks up without... You know, without smelling it, or it well, you just... know, twins always say, all twins say this, that they can sense when their twin is in danger, mm -hmm. and then they know when their twin is hurt. How the fuck yeah. do they do that? What is that? Yeah, that is and maybe weird. that's a just a more extreme version of some sort of a connection that we all share. Right. It's probably something that's evolving. You know, if you think about mm -hmm. human language, human language doesn't exist in the, the form that we can communicate in. As far as we know, we know that dolphins have ways of communicating and orcas do. But we can't see the evidence of how far they can take it because they're not able to manipulate their environment and change their world yeah. visibly like we can. They don't have thumbs and shit. But, but what we can do is, you know, a fairly recent discovery. It's only been around for about 40 or 50,000 years. <laughs> and the, the idea that we can, we can do this is a fairly new thing. It's a new beast, the idea that we can communicate with our mouths and essentially you're reading we're reading each other's minds you're able to right. relay all your thoughts uh, you know about anything you know through that's why vibrating air yeah through <laughs> through air well you know how do we not know that there are a bunch of other senses that are slowly coming out of the you know the amoebic form they're sl mm -hmm. slowly coming out of the embryonic form and that they're going to eventually become a part of our everyday life this mm. these senses and these abilities to communicate yeah, maybe uh, what picks up uh, the other senses can can pick up other things. You know, the the uh, uh, our ears right now you, they're they're made for sound. Yeah, you pick it up, but perhaps they can do another thing that we don't quite know of yet or haven't really. Yeah, there's all yet. sorts of weird shit. I mean, look at appendixes. This used to be a fucking thing there to, to process certain types of foods that we don't eat anymore. There was yeah. an organ; it so slowly shrank away. You know, <laughs> what did it's it just process? Drying up. 
I thought it was raw meat, but then uh, I've been told that that's not true, that it's actually like certain f- plants and fibrous plants, like before we cooked plants, that people had to oh, be able yeah. to eat some, break down some shit. I, I haven't really looked into it. You want to look into it? It just sits there and gets all fuck fucked up on some people. Whatever it is, we <laughs> no, our diets evolved and no changed, deal. and we don't need that anymore. You could take that out. You could take the spleen out, right, for the I mean, most part. I mean, look at our fucking bodies. At one point in time, Muscles. we had to be able to exist outside. In in, yeah. in in the cold and shit, you know, we were hairier, we were whatever the fuck we were, we were more monkey like, yeah. you know, at one point in time, right? Yeah, yeah. Something had to change, Weird. slowly become us, you know. It's a it's a real mind fuck. It really, it is. really is. It really is. God. You really wrap your head around it, and like where you can you imagine if you could like peer into what human life is going to be like one million years from now. A million years, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you could just like look forward. You know, they give you a virtual reality goggles and you, you know, you pop forward one million years and take a, a quick peek. Maybe if they could figure it out on a computer, maybe an ex- a computer could extrapolate probabilities, take out natural disasters and say, OK, with the current extent of evolution and technological innovation, where are we yeah. in one million years? How about the next hundred? The next hundred is going to be nuts. That the would, next year is going to be nuts. That man. would even be cool to know. The I mean, this 100. is the, the big theory is that. Technology increases at an exponential pace. Meaning, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray Kurzweil. Yeah, Ray yeah, Kurzweil. Kurzweil. And, we had uh, him in, by the way. What a bore. Was he a bore? He's, he's got a great genius, theories, but he's, but he's a talking. bore. Yeah. And his documentary was like slow as shit. Well, it's cool they cut in and out of him, and they have a bunch of other people yeah. I mean, and dissenting points of view. His thoughts and his theories are fascinating. I think fascinating. his time frame Absolutely. is off, though. He thinks 40 years, and I think that's wishful thinking on his well, part. because he wants to still be 50s. around. But I, I think that his time frame from singularity is, is off. Some people think it's even sooner than All that. Right. Yeah, McKenna thought that it was going to be it was going to happen so much quicker than anybody could ever imagine because of the Can fact you explain that, that for the people that didn't hear the Ray Kurzweil on our well, show. Well, the show? idea is that, you know, it's not what what it means by the an exponential increase is that it's not like 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 plus 2. It's every year it gets faster and faster and faster and with every new piece of technology, more new pieces of technology, more new innovations are built forth on that foundation mm-hmm. and it eventually gets to a point when the way McKenna described it is a fascinating way. He said it's like think of a funnel, and at the top of the funnel there's a large mouth. And if you, s- you spun a marble around the funnel, at the top of the funnel it will take a long time for the funnel to go in a full circle. But as it gets to the bottom, it's going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, and, faster. and it will continue to do that. And it will, the funnel will continue to get smaller to the point where more information is stored and shared in a moment mm. than in the entire record of human history. And that's where we are now. You know, there's some sort of a, 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 um, a statistic about data use. And the statistic said something like up until like 1980, human beings used X amount of gigabytes of data. Well, now they use that every two hours. Yeah. Whatever people accumulated from the beginning of human language and 40,000 years of culture all the way up to like 1980, we do that every couple hours. When you think about how much of a pain in the ass it was to not know something yeah and what you had to go through to then learn it 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 sucked you either needed encyclopedias in your house that had the answer to what you were looking for or or you had to go to library or like it just wasn't right at your fingertips or or, or god forbid you couldn't remember an actor's name you'd be there like for hours just going god it's right there at the tip of my tongue Uh, now boom imdb bam you're you're there you You got the name talk it yeah now you just talk it into siri or something or google voice google voice the the google google um and eventually we'll just microphone button on the google yeah it's just like question but it was it it sucked back then you just went you went around not knowing shit and people could bullshit you (laughs) The goddamn conversations you'd get in. Do you wear the Illuminati is set up? The Fort Knox is underneath the White House. There's nine million pounds of gold. Like what? That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, you, you remember could, those stories? People could bullshit you, yeah, and you really man. had no recourse. You're just like, I think you're lying. Yeah. Well, that's how like all the best, you know, <laughs> theories and 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 uh, conspiracy theories got for like with UFOs and fucking Roswell. Yeah. This they were basically like Bible stories. They were yeah. just told. You know, they were they were. Passed on in, in verbal form <laughs> over the years before anybody ever put it on Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah. But... <laughs> it took a long time before anybody wrote down all that information. I got Charles really in Santa right. Cruz with something for you, Joe. Charles, what's up? 
Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Wow. Hey, just look, hey, look what happened to Hitler. He brainwashed all those guys without the information. Anyway, mm-hmm. huh? there was this kid in the 20s that was deaf, and they started noticing that he was able to react to them like 10 years later. So finally the kid died. So they opened up his head, and they found out that he was growing a little piece of bone in the back of his head that was picking up the vibration. So he was adapting somehow to, to hear. And that was a trip. I don't know, what the hell? So it's true, hard. Joe. Where can we look this shit up? You're not going to bullshit us today. In the 20s? the 80s. What? Yeah, what do you think? How, how do we look this up? Look it up. Look, look it up. It. Hey, giggly, it. Giggly. Giggly. <laughs> giggly. So what, he was growing a fucking bone in his brain to hear? Yeah, it was, he was a... Oh, shit. Hmm. I've never heard this before. Yeah. That's fascinating. But how would a bone make you hear? Yeah. Picture of the yeah. vibrations, I Yeah, guess. Charles. Yeah. And now he hung Floats. Up. Ah, guy panicked. Ah, yeah. Out. Freaked okay, out. He's beating off right now. Freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> the guy probably could hear all along. He was just faking. <laughs> he just panicked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's odd shit. Odd shit. Mm-hmm. Just the ability to hear is odd in itself. You know, the fact that oh, sound true. waves, you know, when you, you hear something like, I'm, you know, I have a one and a half year olds, my youngest daughter, and I, I watch her, you know, wander around the house and like a noise will come and she hasn't really figured out where noises are coming from yet. <laughs> and, I, you know, I've observed that like she'll like I'll say, I go, Rosie. And she like looks around, and like, she kind of eventually from? tunes into where the you know. But when they're one and a half, they have these giant fucking heads, and they can barely run. You know, they run, they have to slow down because their head's too big. <laughs> and when you yell at them, they don't like my three year old. I go, "What are you doing over there?" And she turns around, and looks right at me. She knows exactly where the sound is coming from. She's pinpointed it. But it's a, it's kind of a fascinating thing that we can pinpoint sound. Yeah. You know, and we're really fucking that good at it. You know, two ears. Like you hear like a rat in your your walls or something. Like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. This motherfucker, where is he? And you kind of and turn your head around a little yeah. bit and look. And, and the thought that, you know, you're using your both ears. Shit. And it's invisible. And then it's got to work its magic in your fucking goopy gray stuff that's your brain to let you know that it's coming from that direction and then move the muscles toward that direction. Like it's just a whole cavalcade of, of weirdness Processes. going on. Yeah. Processes and things that just. And that's, that's just one small thing. Sight is another thing that's yeah. just. Fucked up. Yeah, crazy. When you think about eyeballs and optic nerves. Just How the shit. fuck are you changing a picture into some fucking thing that can then go into my goopy brain thing and I could then see it? And you see it so well that you could be on the highway switching lanes at 80 miles an hour, yeah. just dodging bumpers left and right like an <laughs> yeah. asshole. I mean, it's think so about the, 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 the trust that you have and your uh. ability, the refracting lenses and light and distance, yeah. and you're fucking stomping on the gas. Yep. You know? You know, you know I was thinking of this, too. You ever try to do anything in a mirror to, to yourself, you know? You got to yeah. reach around. You're all awkward. Yeah. Yet when you're driving, your mirrors are just like. Ugh, yeah. right? I, know I used exactly to have a van. I used to deliver newspapers, and I had a, a van with West no Coast windows. Mirror. It had no windows. Yeah, and I yeah. bought it for five hundred bucks just for delivering newspapers. And uh, I would drive this motherfucker. I knew how to parallel park with that bitch. <laughs> yeah, Everything. Work those those two those side mirrors, windows, man. Yeah. Two side mirrors. Wow. That's it. I'd back a trailer into uh, a, a ramp down at the water to get like my jet ski in there and stuff. And yeah, you you wind up just figuring it out. Where you, yeah, two seconds becomes wham part, back in. Because you, well, you know you're a gamer. You, yeah, and you like myself pr- like the mouse and keyboard. Mouse and setup, keyboard better. Way better yeah. Right, yeah, way more uh, precise. But you remember when you first started using it, and you couldn't figure out where the fuck your guy was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You had to think about if you have to think about what you're doing, you're fucked. You're fucked. It becomes second nature where yeah. you're walking sideways when you come by a mm-hmm. hall, and then you spin around the other way, and you're not thinking like, what keys do I have to hit to spin around. You're just you're it's going becoming like this. an extension of you're you. Just, well, all right, yeah, back you get that, that way. Boom, 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 boom. I'm D going for four, <laughs> yeah. back, side to side. Yeah, you're just kicking and ass. The mouse it becomes a. <laughs> it really reacts to your brain. You know, it becomes an extension of your eyes. It's, it's so a, fucked it's up. It's just so weird how that shit works. It's yeah. amazing. It's yeah. fucking amazing. Oh. It's amazing, and it's probably only the beginning. You know, yeah, yeah. Whatever the Not fuck probably. we're gonna be, yeah, one hundred percent, right? Yeah, it's, uh, absolutely. You know, that's why I get angry when people want to like save things. So we save the Komodo dragon. We need to <laughs> uh, sa- yeah. No, we need to save anything. Ninety no. percent of everything that's ever existed is fucking dead. All right, and <laughs> we're gonna be dead too. And if we're not dead, guess what? We're gonna be like this forever. We're never gonna evolve. We're gonna be this retard monkey with nuclear bombs forever. <laughs> this is gonna be us. Yeah. No, we're gonna have to become something better and greater than this eventually. Yeah. It's you know, if if we came out of the primordial slime and we were single 
single-celled organisms, and we eventually became people who make rocket ships. For sure, that trend's going to keep going. Yeah, it's not just going to stop. You've got to keep so, evolving. Yeah, so something. fuck the Komodo oh. dragon. The Komodo dragon can suck my dick. Take a picture of it, store it on a file. <laughs> and we'll and get then, back to it. Yeah, and then yeah. kill all those baby-making freaks. We'll, <laughs> we'll make new ones eventually. We are just uh, Shit, we're very eggs. short-sighted and think we think much too much of ourselves as, a, as individuals. Uh, to think like, you know, well, we have to save the planet. It's like, yeah. in the little speck of time you're here, it's nothing. You're not going to do anything to this dumbass planet. And it probably has wiped out complete civilizations and, and, and t entire populations of the planet time and time again. So it's like, no, nah, we better worry about just saving yourself, having well, some fun. Well, that's what fun, save the planet is. It is save ourselves. We're not caring about the planet itself. No one's trying to stop rocks from hitting the moon. It's just about we have <laughs> to make the environment more livable for ourselves. Because we're all concerned with things that are going to affect us. Like, no one thinks that stuff is going to fly off the Earth. We're trying to make the environment more livable for yeah, us. So really yeah, we have a guilt line. issue. We have a guilt yeah. issue with, like, the spotted owl. Oh, we lost the owl. Yeah. Spot the dodo bird is gone. <laughs> Human beings, the Tasmanian tiger, where for art thou? <laughs> you know, fuck up, man. It's they're all gonna go. You yeah, know, and yeah. guess what? We need to be more concentrating on the fucking rainforest and the ocean. The oceans are polluted, and we're sucking all the fish out of it. <laughs> there's a giant Texas-sized patch of floating plastic in the middle of it, and it gets bigger every fucking is that day. True? Fuck yeah, Some it's people true. say it's not true. Fuck yeah, it's true. It's gotta be true. Vice right? com. I that guy was on my podcast on Tuesday. Yeah. The uh, Shane Smith said so we that they went out there. Fuck yeah, they do. They don't have pictures. They have video of it. They have footage. Can we see it's, this video? Yeah, 100%. It, uh, the garbage patch is fucking huge. It's giant. And it's not stopping. Not only that, there's several garbage patches. There's an Atlantic garbage patch. There's a Pacific garbage patch. There's a, a couple garbage patches all over the world. <laughs> That's fucking Just all the shit that are... We have these currents, these natural currents that the water flows in. And these natural currents just automatically <laughs> pull this fucking shit that we throw up. It all comes into one big pile. I it's see the video. enormous. We're just so <laughs> disgusting. We you know, really think about yeah, it. We, yeah. we go into the water, we pull all the fish out, kill the fuck out of them, and then poison whatever's left. Whatever's throw left, yeah. nuclear waste in the water. <laughs> and <laughs> But you know what? We'll just fuck ourselves up, and then, and then in time, the earth will just be this pristine, nice oh, place yeah. again. Yeah, we'll, like, we'll we be can, gone. The thought that we could ever do permanent damage to this planet is really kind of silly. Uh, the amazing thing, though, is how quickly we did the damage. We've done the damage through the industrial age. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Before that, nothing. We didn't yeah. do fucking shit. Go back to the cowboy and Indians days. Yeah, yeah. What'd you do? You made Take a campfire? campfire is gonna, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that effect in the fucking ozone layer? <laughs> no, we, didn't, we had no effect. So in t essentially in 200 years, we've completely changed the, the, the surface of the earth and our impact on it. Like all of a sudden, we've become toxic. It's like we were in gestation period, and we got <laughs> yeah. to a, cer a, a certain point in time like AIDS, you know, all of a sudden yeah, we decided yeah. to come out, you know, and boom! Yeah, there was a, an incubation period, and then we just uh yeah, for a million Started years, Earth up. is like, yeah, I got herpes, but it's no big deal. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got people, but it doesn't even flare up. And then one day, the Earth's immune system got a little low. People got fucking badass. We invented nuclear weapons and garbage, and then boom, now the so, Earth is sick as fuck. Now the Earth is a serious case of human herpes. <laughs> it kind of was necessary, though. I mean, it, I don't think we have the ability to make... Uh, some of the great shit we can make without leaving a lot of waste and garbage and poison. It's just we do it so quickly. It's what it is, is, uh, you know, our rational minds haven't caught up with what we're capable of doing. We haven't really, like, like planned it all out. We're just doing whatever we can do while we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I it's just find it, and I find it astounding that, uh, you know, you just pull things out of the earth and manipulate them with heat and yeah. other chemicals, and then you make things that fly. Yeah. It, to me, that's astounding. Well, what's even more astounding is all this comes out of the imagination. We pull yeah, all this yeah. from the ether. So from the ether, this one thing has these ideas, like the, the, the ideas are out there in the ether, and there's this thing, this animal that's like a little antenna, tunes into these ideas, and then manifests now you gotta in the make physical it work with world. What's around you. Yeah, metals and rocks, and melts yeah. stuff down, and creates these things, and yeah. these things build onto other things that other fucking monkeys create and next thing you know they got a large hadron collider that's making yeah. black holes it's like oh, hey God. i want to i want to travel like three thousand miles an hour Jesus. i gotta build something all right let me take some of this rock some water some of this shit some of the, and then you mix it all together and you're fucking propelling your ass at you know 
Jesus, a few times the speed impressive. of sound. It really yeah, it is. is fucked up. Like like the, the the mind for how fragile our bodies are that we were talking earlier. The mind is kind of that is like an unlimited thing that we really haven't. Uh, hit the wall with yet. not even close yeah. it's not even close and the experiments that we're having now are so far and above and beyond anything that anybody's ever done in the past like all the large mm -hmm. hadron collider shit yeah. where they you know they found that they've they've managed to create this quark gluon plasma that is so it i think it's 400 billion or 40 billion tons for a sugar cube of it oh, a sugar cube of it and they've managed to create particles of this stuff that's amazing yeah it's like what? neutrons Star stuff. Yeah, no, it's more dense. It's more dense than a neutron star, and they've created it. The E Rock. Yeah. yeah. E -rock. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get Joe out of here. I got to uh, hang out with Al Roker in an hour. Well, that's a little different than what we, we've been doing. Great. Back to it's dick jokes. Suck. <laughs> I know. Back to <laughs> back to dick jokes. <sighs> back to Fuck. Sh shitty shit. <laughs> Fear Factor starting Monday at eight on NBC. We're all looking forward to this. This show should have never went away. Uh, I guess I was happy it went away. You needed the break. Yeah, I wanted a break. But now you're <laughs> back. But I enjoyed it. Go doing it again. Yeah. You know, it's all about having the right mixture in me when I do it. I was gonna say something. <laughs> I was gonna say something uh, earlier. I forgot the uh, uh, the trailers that I've been watching for the show. It, it looks not so much the the eating and the disgusting thing, but I'm seeing people physically being fucked with in ways that is like like there's a person. They're right in front of you. Bother 300 yards away. Oh, you see what that bungee cord thing? Happens? That bungee cord thing in a helicopter was one of the nuttiest ones we ever it's did. Insane. We had these people. Um, one one person was attached to a tree, and the other person uh, had to free them. And they're uh, connected by all these, uh, you know, fucking chains and shit. And when the person undoes the last thing, they get launched through the fucking air. I mean, launched like 600 yeah. feet in a matter of a couple of seconds. It was Jesus. it was crazy. Yeah, and then you know they're suspended over this giant rock quarry. It was really nuts. That helicopter Have you tried shit any of this shit? Just... No, they don't allow me to do any like, of those things. You're yeah. not allowed to try it out? No, because it would have to be, uh, you know, I would have to be insured for Crazy. it. Crazy. Look at these shit. Yeah. They're just catapulting people. That's amazing. And... And the moving vehicles and the crashes. It's it was like way a... bigger and crazier this year. The best way to describe it is that if you um, if you look at the old Fear Factor, like look at that. Oh, that's oh man! <laughs> the the old Fear Factor, we had an A, B, and a C stunt. So the A stunt was like the first thing, and the B was like the disgusting eating thing, and then C is like you know the grand finale. Well, the A stunts on the new show are way bigger than the grand finales on the yeah. old show. It's fucking way over the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, fuck that. Yes. We went deep, dude. <laughs> you saw that? Yeah, Jerry's like, window. no fucking way, man. Out of a window. It was Through really window, weird to say. do, man, because, like, Matt Cunett said it best. It was like, we went into a coma for six years, and then we came out and did the show again. You're clean-shaven yeah. on this, too. You look different than you do for uh, on UFC. Yeah, they want me to shave for some reason. I don't understand Just that. Just to make it a different look. So America girl, loves gentleman. you. Gentlemen, yeah. they want uh, they want so America to fall in love yeah, with Joe Rogan. <laughs> this is collegiate Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They all know be mine oh, now. I think. Fly. Yeah. I know the explosions yeah, the that they. Out this out just looks great, man. Ah, we're happy. Yeah, for you, Joe. that's my buddy yeah. David Hurwitz. He's the one who got me the job in the first place. You know, when I was first doing Fear Factor, when I came in for the audition, I was making fun of everything, and they didn't want to hire me because of that. <laughs> right. They're like, we can't have this guy. He's gonna make fun of everything on the set. We want this to be scary. And then Hurwitz was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Look what we're doing. We're supposed to be making fun of this. Yeah. If we're not making fun of it, other people are going to be making fun of it for us. Right. You know? But wow. it, it was, what was uh, that you holding? A big a giant thing of Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Oh, oh, the fox. famous hissing cockroach. Did you find anything new to eat? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. The stuff that I was telling you about? Yeah. We, yeah. we, we, we won't get that away. <laughs> we won't get into <laughs> that, but wow. Anything else, though? Uh, no, no, I think it's all, like, along the same lines. It's just they made people uh, do things. To, it wasn't just eat this. It's like, you know, you got to play horseshoes, and then, you know, whatever the distance is. Then you do, Everything became a game, you know. It was... Uh, it was much better thought out, and you know, you got to realize that stunt technology is really advanced. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, that guy right there, Matt Kunitz, he's the executive producer of it. Great guy. And uh, Matt also runs Wipeout, and he runs a thousand and one, a hundred one ways to leave a game show. Remember that show? Sure. He does that as well. So you know, they have so much experience with stunts and with oh. producing and creating stunts oh. for TV shows. Oh, 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 yeah. Holy yeah. Shit. yeah. Yeah, this we, is it's crazy. It's We're way just watching the trailer. Top. It's so much. It's so. It's hard to remember. Bees, the other show was shit. nuts, but this show, as nutty as the other show was for 
the time for 2001. Yeah. This is just as nutty for 2011. Is that how long ago that was on? 2001. Yeah. Holy shit. Till when? Till uh, six. Oh, my God. And then we were off for five and a half plus years. And then uh, oh. you know, all of a sudden we're back. It's very strange, man. It was like really like uh, the first day was surreal as fuck. Like it didn't even seem real. It, but then the second day it was just, oh, I'm going to work again. You yeah, know, it felt like you just normal. never left. Yeah. yeah. How this long did it take you to shoot? Uh, one episode for three stunt episodes, it's three wow. days, and cool. for a five stunt episode, obviously, it's five, five days. Five. Those are for the how the cool two are helicopters? Pretty fucking awesome. Fuck yeah! We have these badass <laughs> helicopter pilots too that can fly side by side. So there's the wings. Like one guy will go up, and another guy will go below, and they'll move around Fuck. like that. But if they go like this, tink. Yeah, the rotors dies. hit, and everyone tink. dies. Great. Yeah, but they manage to not do that Shit. always. That's for the camera work, right? Yeah, and you know, obviously we have to be helicopter. really careful and not do that anywhere near gusts of wind. And mm. that was a a big stunt we had. Oh. People drive a truck into an ammo dump. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, they were attached to helicopters by these giant cords, and uh, they had to uh, run and then jump into the back of a remote controlled truck. And as the remote controlled truck is bashing through these barriers one after another, it's headed towards this giant ammo dump. And at the last second, the helicopter pulls them out of the truck. The truck keeps going. Boom! Hits this ammo dump. And when I say the explosion was fucking intense, I mean, <laughs> we were seven, eight football fields away, and my clothes moved. It went, oh, poof, shit. like, poof, yeah. like you wow. felt it. You felt it from, like, 700 fucking yards away. It was insane. That's crazy, man. It we, lit up the sky. I mean, it was just, like, the w way crazier than any shit and, we ever did And before. we can't do eggnog drinking challenge anymore. <laughs> you guys need to just go straight internet. Yeah, uh, no know, shit. At We're a certain it. point in time, I hear you. That way, I hear you, man. It's pretty obvious. What are we looking everyone. at? December twelfth, Monday, December twelfth, yeah, eight o'clock. This coming Monday, in eight uh, p.m. on eight p.m. on NBC. Can't fucking wait, With man. That, we got to get Joe out of here. He's got to talk yep. to Al Roker. Well, thank you, boys, for having me on. Joe, Always so awesome. Much, and it's man. a, a pleasure you, to have my podcast on your network. It's an honor. I really appreciate love that, it, having please. me You're on your channel. Great. It's cool as fuck. We fucking love Joe. It. Joe Rogan on Twitter, Hello. of course, too. And UFC uh, this weekend. Of course. Uh, yeah, Machina John Jones, Leo Jones. We didn't even get a chance to talk about oh, that. It's going to be a great Fucking Al Roker. <laughs> All right. Joe, we'll see you soon. God damn it. Joe Rogan. Uh, this is the OB Anthony Chill on Sirius XM. What we have here is the best of both worlds. The fastest reflexes modern technology has to offer, onboard memory, and 30 years of human experience and interaction. Bobocop, what are your prime directives? To serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law, and to jerk off in a toilet, all right? Part man, part robot, complete imbecile. Alive or dead? Dead or alive? You're... What am I supposed to say? Hey, fuck you, you metallic mongoloid. Eat a bowl of dick. Will he be able to recall his past memories? Don't you remember? Bobo, it's you. What's me? You, Bobo. It's you. Who is? Holy fuck, Bobo! You! It's you! Bobo, it's you. I think I'm in a weak signal area. All right, let's go, Mr. Mamoon again. Bobo Cop, who is he? What is he? I suck. The dumbest, most annoying person on the planet is now a law enforcing cyborg. Bobo Cop, Bobo Cop, any special message for the kids at home? Believe me, all right. You gotta wear a condom when you go to sleep, cause you don't want to jizz in your pants when you when you're. Bobo Cop. Sorry, sorry. I mean, I mean, uh, stay out of trouble. Bobo Cop.
This is the Opie and Anthony Show. Once again, I want to thank Joe Rogan for stopping by. Joe's cool, I fucking love man. the guy. I'll tell you this much, too. I just talked to him for like 10 minutes in the hall. That fucking guy is so loyal, too, man. Oh, yeah. Fucking just, fucking, just so appreciative, man. And I'm sitting there like, guy. what are you kidding me? It was fun just listening to you for two hours. You know? Yeah. He blows your mind. Yeah. He blows your fucking brain those right deep, up. Those deep conversations. Like that shit. Yeah, I like that shit. I like some of that shit. Because <laughs> now we're just going to talk about Sandusky and other uh. horse shit. Although, uh, what? We got uh, Anthony Bourdain coming in, right? I got to yeah. tell you, I love the concept of this uh, new show, Sam. Do you? Yeah, I really do. Why are you laughing? What? I, I love the concept. It's, Good. A, it's a terrific concept. Do you want to explain it to the people out there? The show's called Layover, or The Layover. It's on the Travel Channel. Right. And the idea is that you're in a city, yeah. and you have a layover for like 24 to 48 hours, and you sample the city, yeah. the mm. culture and the food yeah. and the... You know, when mm. I when I fly to Buffalo every once in a while, I, I just love that 48-hour layover I get. Yeah, a just layover. Amazing. You know, when I'm going to uh, L.A., yeah. sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll get a layover in, like, uh, Chicago. For 48 hours, right? For, uh, yeah, 48 and hours. And all of a sudden, you're, like, just on the street, just checking out the culture. Oh, getting some deep dish pizza. Because you, <laughs> you got a two-day layover as you yeah. go to L.A. Fucking Dude, love layover. that shit. Sometimes you have a... Yeah. Aren't layovers, like, six hours or something, uh, if it's a long one? Are well, they stretching the whole layover hours? concept with this show? Let's be honest with each other. It's not really a layover, is it? I hear the show's funny, and it's good, but... It's a great show. I watched it last night. You guys also probably should have since you'll be doing the interview, but I was uh, <laughs> I know, but I didn't have time. What were you doing? Time. That's rolling, by the way. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'll tell you what I was doing. <laughs> I told Rogan and it fucking cracked him up. I went to uh see my mommy yesterday. My uh, mommy invited me to her Christmas party, which moms? happens to be uh in a assisted living facility. Oh, Sam. okay. And I'm hanging out with my uh, 75 year old mom with my son and uh, a couple siblings. And then my mom decided to announce that she's attracted to someone at the home. Oh, oh. Now my oh, mom's boy. 75. But that sounds pl pleasant, at least. The guy that she's attracted to, she goes, he's a little older. But I'm thinking, you're 75. So it's not what is Scatman Crothers teaching her kick the can, is it? <laughs> So I'm like, a little older than 75. I'll, mm. I'll accept 80. How old? 92. She's attracted to a 92-year-old man? She's attracted to a 92-year-old, and she goes, he has a nice... She tells me, her son, uh -huh. that he has a nice body and has all his teeth. A nice body? At, at 92. 92. She's probably noticed his bulge, because wow. what else... On the body. It's exactly. not like he's muscular anymore. Norton just arrived. My mom so ad admitted to me yesterday, because I went to her Christmas party at her assisted living facility, that she's attracted to a 92-year-old that has a nice body and has all his teeth. And I'm all sitting there like 75. The guy looks older men. He's got to be packing, too. 92, he, I, though. He probably is, You know what it is? He probably walks around in his PJs and his big dick flops out. <laughs> that's what it is. Accidentally. Like, he doesn't know what's yeah. happening. He's got dementia. Yeah. Oh, and he, has no, he just starts whacking off in the hallway, and all the ladies are like, ooh, you know, he's crazy, but what a oh, big dick. Oh, and he's dick. wearing shorts. His ball bag is just yeah. hanging out like melting Turkish taffy. They, they have a dementia ooh. wing at this uh, place. We ooh. were not allowed to go into that. That's got to be a fun wing. That closed-in area. <laughs> it's like a fucking prison, because those people will wander. But, uh, Just tell them you're their grandchildren and then take money from them. There you go. <laughs> but they had a bar set up last night, and I'm watching 90-year-old guys drinking fucking beers. Yeah. Fuck yeah, the elderly are living a little better these days. Would you be uh, freaked out if your mom got pregnant? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. But do you think she's going to bang him? Oh, my God. You think? That's a, fine, that's a fair question. Yeah, of course it is. You're crossing the line, Sam. Yeah, what's her pubic Sam's hair Sam's crossing Sam the line. Sam is crossing the fucking line. Wow. Do you think, do you, think she would, though? Would my mom have sex? And do you think it would start with straight sex, or what do you think what it would do first? Because she likes his right. body. It's a physical attraction. <laughs> like, she does yeah. like his body. Heavy kissing. It's physical at this point. <laughs> she would do some heavy petting. <laughs> heavy petting. Get, think, he like, would get to feel her uterus outside her body. Oh, God. <laughs> she did have s six kids. Did, would there be, like, deep tongue kissing to start? Probably, yeah. Like, that's yeah. kind of approaching second base. See, this is how you handle this, Sam. Well, I don't... 
I think it's a fair, a legit question. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to know if you, would there be you. A, would there be you, head? <laughs> you run in the corner and cry like a little <laughs> bitch when we talk to your mom. <laughs> I'm always here oh. uh, and part of the conversation. But she's attracted to a 92 year old with a nice body. What how, the fuck? How is many that? dates before she blew him? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the first date at that. Yeah, age. Uh, no, more, no more waiting. How much time no, do we wait? Yeah, why exactly. would you wait? Yeah. Why would you wait at that age? <laughs> exactly. He's eating his Jello all of a sudden. Oh, get, get right into ass play. What are you waiting for? Yeah. Nothing to wait for. It just comes dust into her mouth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow! Sit down. Oh, but you know the other end of this, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. So enjoy, because <laughs> next time your mom's on the fucking phone, trust me, the payback will begin, <laughs> and this will be written in my notebook. You have a notebook? I will not forget this oh, one. No, I don't have a notebook. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this isn't payback. How can how can how can you? Give me payback when you've already done worse to my mom. Oh, you watch. Oh, mm. I didn't realize we were going this deep with this shit. <laughs> what? You watch what happens next. Yeah, cool. You watch. Cool so, meaning no, we no, can no, get, sorry, go home I, I soon, saw, right? I, no, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I saw your face. <laughs> no, I saw that we have Anthony Bourdain in 15 minutes. I'm just making sure he's a guest that we're still allowed to get on this show. All right, good. Oh, what happened? Nothing. Well, nothing. Oh no! Mm. Wait, oh no! Now we need to know, Jimmy. No, no, I'm just still doing some investigating. Yeah, now we need. To I am know. not letting this one go. We were just talking about old people. So I guess investigative no, some, journalism. There's some rumors floating around out there. Yeah, and we're trying to get to the bottom. Of it, Sam and uh, nobody ever owns up to saying I said this. Nope. Or I said that. Nope. Nobody ever does. Nope. And I want. I'm not going to let it go. Wow. You can't. Yeah, but I'll, I'll tell you, the old folk they're living pretty good, man. Are they? I think so. Some of them. There was some guy. He had to be a hundred walking the hallways in a blue suit. I'm like, holy fuck, because he was talking about. He was talking clear as day, so it wasn't like some fucking, like, he, he, basically he said that you could still be a pilot at 100 years old as long as you're past the physical. Wow. You're still allowed to fly at 100. Well, they say and that. I don't know if that means he's still, like, uh, you know, getting, getting off the grounds and going up or not. I don't know. But he knows a lot about aviation. He said, yeah, you're still allowed to fly at 100. Did there's he no, fly in the big no, war? There's no age restriction. Oh, yeah. They have all the uh, the war guys' uh, photos on the walls. Oh, man. yeah? They respect the war guys big fucking time. Did he man. seem like a guy that you would trust to fly? Like, was he all there? What are you getting at, Sam? I'm not getting at anything. I'm asking a question in the comments. Mile High, Mile High Club for my mom? Is that what you're uh, getting at? Well, I'm not. I mean, I'm, that guy was flying the plane. I'm assuming your mom and her crush would uh, would get on the plane. I didn't get, maybe. To, I didn't get to see uh, the crush. Would you call him dad? <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> Would you hug him when you saw him? <laughs> I could use a stepfather in my life, I guess. <laughs> Anthony, Never too late. Anthony Bourdain, uh, the layover on the Travel Channel, Mondays at 9. So he gets to lay over two days, even like. though most of us lay over for an hour or two. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's so cool that we're getting him on the show. I'm so happy that uh, we're, we're cool to yeah. have him. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's great. It's becoming more obvious. <laughs> no, I, I love that. Why, sometimes we're not allowed to have certain people on our show? Yeah, I'll say it, Michael C. Hall. There was an issue today, I guess, but uh, I'm really happy. Today? That, uh, he's here today. And we're not allowed to have him on? No. Why? I don't know. I'd be interested to find out. Someone's saying we're not allowed to have him? Not necessarily in theory allowed to, but, hmm. you know. This is publicist? Who's being spoken to about this? That's what I want to know. I, I, I talked to Gary. We're going to talk to Bladder, and we're working on it. But um, just I, wanted that out there. And you're this. voluntarily going to talk to them? I want to. I want to. I want to thank. It's, it's uh, unacceptable what's I happening. Would never unacceptable. Well, mm. I want to thank Steve Bladder and and Gary and and Rob for uh, making an appearance at Patrice O'Neill's memorial. <laughs> that was so. Oh, that's right. They didn't go. Yikes. Oh, that's right. They didn't go. I will on that say that there's something happening that the company is doing. Something that's very much the right thing. Something. I'll tell you what it is once it happens. But there is something. The right doing. thing is you go and make an appearance. I agree. The guy was a massive force for this channel. I agree. We're not going to downplay this. This fucking Patrice was like, was the next guy. Look, I think they sent flowers. I don't. Where did they? I have no idea. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I'm assuming that they would. I, I, I don't understand why they wouldn't represent the company. Wouldn't represent that. Uh, that bothers me, man. To be a honest lot. with you, Ope, I, I tell you what it is. It's, and, it's, it's and, a lack of. It's a weird lack of connect. Like a weird lack of connection. I don't think it's hateful motives. It's just a weird. It, it's the same thing we run into 
like there's a weird, a weird corporate, disconnect. It's, it's a weird window that you're talking to it's people through. It's those dumb little things. I bring this shit up because it's the dumb little things that makes us a little happier and makes the people listening to us a little happier when it happens to them in their fucking jobs. How do you not like show up at a memorial for a guy that yeah. was a massive force for his company and basically worked for free? You know, he got his money the other way. He got more people to sure, show up for sure. his gigs and stuff like that. Sure. But in the end, this company didn't have to pay him for all that amazing radio. By tomorrow, I may have a, a better answer for that, though. There may be something Which one? really good. Uh, the second one, the Patrice issue. Tomorrow, uh, I'm not going to kill them on that because there might be some good news. I'll know by tomorrow. But is, the, it, is it the thing? Uh, maybe, yeah. But the other thing. Is it a money-making thing? Possibly. I don't know. Well, that's a no-brainer. They better do that, too. But the uh, no slack for these fuckers. But the uh, Michael C. Hall thing is not has nothing to do with oh, that. Oh boy! And um, oh boy, it's uh, unacceptable. It ain't right, do, and it's not something I've ever. Do you have more info on this? No, no, and I don't want to throw anybody into the bus until we know. All right. I worked in urology over the holidays. All the old people are looking for Viagra. Oh I shit. Am? Uh, a lot of these, a lot of these people in this place I was at last night, they, they're down to fuck. Yeah, I know. There's why. no doubt in my mind, man. Really? There's no doubt in my mind. Yeesh. Why? Certainly heavy petting. You think your mom's down to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Is he white? <laughs> oh, There's a God. lot of questions that need to be answered. <laughs> He's an old Negro. <laughs> I will. I will certainly let uh, Sam have the spotlight. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. I gotta take my shot while I can. Enjoy it. Because I didn't know we were going this way. I didn't know we were going down this road. Wow, that's fine though. I can play. I can play on this road as well. I'm not. I just want to know. I can play on this road, Sam. I just want to know. Uh, you want to talk to the uh, urologist? And would it only? You want to, do you want to know where would the sex only be vaginal, or would there possibly be other <laughs> yeah. options? Where, where do you put it? Is the question on everybody's Man, mind? Ninety-two year, ninety-two, ninety-two, yeah. ninety-two. But he's got old. a great body. Yeah. <laughs> she said he had a nice body. I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, Is that possible if you're 92? Uh, yeah. Look at Eastwood. He's in his 70s, right? He That's looks a big horrible. difference. <laughs> he looks yeah. terrible. The guy's probably talking about? I'm thinking the, guy, I'm, the guy's probably one of those old fucking. But I'm just saying, Bridges of Madison County. He took his shirt off, and he was probably only in his 70s then. He looked horrible. Uh, Andrea, what's up? Hello. You know what? Hello. Hi, Andrea. Uh, what? Oh. What do you want? <laughs> What's Hello? up? Hi, yes, what's up, Angel? You're on the air. We got you. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. That's um, right. Yeah, so you're... I work at a urology group, and I just wanted to let you know that the, they definitely... Uh... <laughs> she was going to say they definitely fuck at that age? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Those cocks fucking... definitely work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's, uh, they all look for Viagra or something. Oh, with that. Okay. What's, what's this? I'm not. I'm not part of this. I, okay. I gotta hear this. The guy's giving me dirty looks in the hall. It doesn't even fucking say hi to me. I'm done with it. I gotta hear so this. So someone thing. else fucking. Do what do you this. mean? What do you? Who? Fez gives me dirty looks in the hall now. Even though everyone is uh, having a little fun with Fez. So I'm gonna officially say I'm not part of this next minute and a half. Well, this has to do with uh, our buddy Colin Quinn, mm -hmm. who, as you know, goes on Twitter and tweets hysterical things, uh, and people actually take him seriously. Yeah. And they just stop following him. They he retweets everybody that insults him and calls him horrible and unfunny, uh, and they look like idiots because it's obvious. It's Colin. It's obvious to everyone that he's just fucking with everybody. When, when he writes shit like you know, I'm all for freedom of speech, but somebody really should regulate what people say. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's hysterical to me. Right. Um, well, I guess he was having and, and a little the, fun. And the joke is that people are actually buying into it. Yes. And then he retweets. That's what makes, and that's yes, what makes it fun for everybody it. else. Well, I guess he, he uh, tweeted that he had a problem with a, a <laughs> bit that was on SNL. And uh, he, he said that uh, he, he didn't appreciate it. And it was reported as a real tweet and real kind of news thing by our own... Fez Wadley. Colin, uh, Colin Quinn was calling out uh, Saturday Night Live over their uh, parody sketch about the Penn State Sandusky scandal. So he said he's ashamed that he was ever associated with that show. Um, do you want to Google Colin Quinn? Yeah, okay. I mean, I did. See if this is what he always does with his Twitter, that he's just fucking around. 
Oh, okay. Remember we just had this story not too long ago where you said, <laughs> I forget who he fucking ran down, but it was supposed to be like, then he's going back, please, I'm fucking joking. I think it was Will Ferrell being high. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Will Ferrell was high every time I saw him. Remember that story? Yeah, I fell for it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> And that was all I had in news. <laughs> Tuesday is news day. <laughs> Two for. Yeah, I didn't have enough. Oh, no. How far? How far did you fall short? Uh, three hours and fifty minutes. <laughs> I thought that the Colin Quinn thing was going to have legs. <laughs> All right, it is the Ron Fez Show, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Let the record state Anthony was laughing hysterically. I, I kept my mouth shut. How could you not? I don't want to deal with that shit. How could you not laugh? Well, he thought it was, he thought it was <laughs> real. Enjoy the dirty looks in the hallway. No, just... Uh, well, just the same just, way. You bust each other's balls. Just friends. thought it was funny. Just thought it was very funny, <laughs> And then coming up three hours and 50 <laughs> minutes short on what, what's material. The, that was funny. What's the thing? Like, Fez does, takes over Tuesdays and does a lot of news? Or, Tuesday's news what, day. What do we know on that, Sam? Yeah, Tuesday's news day. And it's sort of like, you know, you start the show with news. And then and I think Ron is letting Fez have the ball. Uh-huh. But then, you know, Fez did his 10 minutes. Uh-huh. That was that. All right. <laughs> well, uh, Anthony Bourdain is here. Yeah, we... Oh, cool. You sure? Is he coming in? He was right, He's right outside. Oh, of... Excellent. Let's bring him in. Be yes. Let's make sure that the other shows won't take him and then we can't have him. <laughs> no, no, I just want to make sure. I don't want to step on any toes. For the people that are confused, everything comes out in the wash. Not everything just comes out. In the it, wash. In the end, I mean. But I don't want to be a jerk. Right now, we know just, the fact. Yeah, Honestly, I don't. I'll help you tote it. We're you doing some investigating, and Jimmy certainly will have a lot to say. Yeah, well, I'd but say, right now he has, uh, you know, I some asked, vague things to say. What are you doing, Warsh? <laughs> I want to make sure. I Again, understand. I understand. Because I, I want to make sure nobody told his publicist that we can't take him or we'll cancel him if he's on another show. I just want to make sure that, that didn't happen, because why oh, would you do that? Okay. I don't comprehend it. That would be crazy. All right, let's get him in. I'm happy to right. talk to him. Yes, uh, so let's, let's bring him in. It, yeah. It's not a Howard situation, is goes. it? No. Oh, okay. oh no, I would understand That's that. What people Hello, are Anthony no. Bourdain. Fuck yeah, Anthony Hello, Bourdain. Take a seat right there, my friend. How are you, sir? Really good. Fucking love Anthony Bourdain. You just missed Joe Rogan. He's a big fan of yours. Yeah, oh, yeah. Was he? Joe is here. He's yeah. He's, he's but he's got to do TV he's today. A, you know the whole Fear Factor he's thing. Al Roker. You know. Fear Factor thing is back with a vengeance. Holy Jesus! Looks better yeah, than ever. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. For him. Like him a lot. Yeah, he's yeah, an interesting he's guy, okay. right? Oh yeah. He's crazy. You on his uh, podcast? Perpetually I love stunned. doing that podcast. It's a brain damaging uh, podcast. It really yeah. is, right? It blows up your mind, right? It does indeed. Make sure. It's, Makes you feel weird about your own humanity. And yeah, it makes this mortality seem, and whatnot. It makes us seem really stupid. It was, yeah, <laughs> Why it's bother? Cotton mouthed right through the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which can only be solved by you know massive infusions of beer. So by the end of the, <laughs> yeah. end of the two hours or whatever, you're baked. It really is an entertaining. Uh, I don't podcast. know how Joe gets as much done high as he does. Like when I got high, I got nothing done. And Rogan is just—he's doing television shows and he's reading and he's podcasting. Just, he's a really UFC, bright guy. Yeah. yeah, it's unbelievable. Some Raising people. kids. Very, very functional. Fuck yeah, that. and I think. He I'm grapples. Sure. I mean, he trains. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I guess yes. you know. I, uh, Isn't that I'm crazy? They're too lazy to change the channel for My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you want to talk about the layover? The layover. The new show, huh? Yes. On the Travel Channel, uh, Mondays at 9 p.m. Yeah, it's sort of a more useful version of No Reservations. I mean, in, in uh, all these years of staggering around the world, uh, me and the crew have kind of figured out, you know, good stuff to do in a short period of time. So we, you know, this time out, we tried to do something that's uh, it's actually useful. Yeah. And the concept is uh, what we all have layovers. Well, we were or, joking or, about it because we've never really had a forty-eight hour layover because <laughs> right. we're not international travelers. The, <laughs> you know, we we fly to Cleveland every once in a while, yeah, or L.A. That's yeah, it. I for think us. the more likely scenario is you know you're, you're a lot of people that take those uh, you know ten days in Italy, you know, uh -huh. two days in Bologna, two days in Venice, two days in Rome. So you know, if you find yourself in Rome for two days, you know, I have very strong opinions about what you should be doing and what you probably shouldn't be wasting your time doing. Right. You know, if you go to Rome, oh, you find an olive garden. What's what's it's wonderful? Yeah. Well, if you go to Rome. What's the what's the hack thing everyone does that they shouldn't? I, I mean, personally, uh, 
you know, I wouldn't be standing on a line for anything. Rome is a beautiful city with mm. a lot of great food in it. Uh, to be standing on line for the, for the Vatican uh, right. seems like a waste of time to me. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I'd be eating, and I'd be eating stuff that's, that the Romans are good at. And I would be eating a veal cutlet milanese. That's from Milan. I'm eating mm. cacio e pepe, which is what Chappie. makes Romans happy. Right. So, you know, you, you do what the Romans are doing. It seems like a, a fundamental message, but... Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's. Let, let's put it this way: you know, if you're lucky enough to go to Hong Kong and you're spending, you know, two minutes of your life eating at the Hard Rock Cafe, this is <laughs> seriously. <laughs> you are an idiot, right? <laughs> but, you are an idiot. <laughs> let's bring it back to home, home yeah, base, New York that. City. We're a block away from Times Square, and every once in a while right. you walk through there because you have to. If you live in New York, you you want to avoid Times Square, but you know, go down to Caroline's Great Comic Club or something. You find yourself yeah. in Times Square. These people come from all over the world, and they're hanging you, out in Times yeah, Square. I'm like, what are you doing? The Olive Garden. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. hang yourself in the shower. Do you realize? Yeah. How, <laughs> just, just save the money. Do you realize how cool New York is? Get the fuck away from Times Square. Yeah. You'll see some great stuff. Great restaurants. What do, what do we do? And you ask yourself the same question anywhere you go. What do we do in New York better than anybody else? That's that's what you're looking for. And right. what we do better than anybody else is, you know, a pastrami sandwich. We do deli better mm -hmm. than anybody. Sure. So I'd be, you know, I'd be hitting Katz's Deli or Russ and Daughters or Barney Greengrass. I'd get myself. You know, a good New York deli experience. And I, right. You know, if I were from Tulsa, you know, uh, I would not. And, and I, I'm about to walk into a deli, and there's a giant tour bus out front that says, you know, Tulsa on it. I mean, yeah. clearly you're not eating in the right place. You, you <laughs> yeah. want to wear, you want to go wear a bunch you're, of cranky New Yorkers. You're not even hanging out with New Yorkers. You're just hanging out with other tourists in Times Square. Yeah, Times Square is worth looking at for maybe a half hour, maybe. Not even. I mean, I'm, I'm being polite. Take I mean, a maybe take a picture of the big. Uh, yeah. Ball that falls on the New Year's Eve. Years ago it was worth leave. it, though. When you could go, like, go see all the porn shops, then it would have like, a, a oh, different vibe to it. Yeah. The first thing you tourists would see when they come to Times Square was you know, a big marquee said, Anal Rampage 3. <laughs> 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 it was like, awesome. <laughs> I love some of that CD shit. Yeah, right? two, uh, 3 was much better than 2, by the way. Uh, yeah, 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 2 yeah. was terrible lighting. It was but really poorly so edited. Unanswered but, questions. But I bring that up because <laughs> every city has that, and, and you get lost just doing the touristy thing when that's you're not really getting the feel of the place. Yeah. So, I mean, over time, we've been to a lot of these cities. And, and, you know, we've had a lot of sort of crew meals where we just said, that, wow, we should have filmed this. This was totally oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Right. Um, and and uh, to a great extent, those are the type of places we're covering. So where have you been uh, with this show? Flavor, uh, <laughs> we actually shot my, my part uh, in 48 hours in each place. So it was Whoa. really a brutal... Uh, uh, were regimen of Jeez, shoveling food yeah. and liquor into my face. So 48 hours in <laughs> Singapore... Hong Kong, Montreal, San Francisco, L.A., Miami, New wow. York, Rome, London, and Amsterdam. Jesus. Wow. That's an insane schedule. Yeah, Amsterdam, one was, weekend, real. Amsterdam huh? was tough because you know, it seems like a good idea going to one of the coffee shops. Like right. You know, like if you're ever really, really stunned, you think everybody's looking at you. You know, <laughs> like I had one of those moments where I look up and everyone is looking at me. They there's are, three yeah. cameras in my face and I'm just completely <laughs> tweaking out. And sort of, you know. <laughs> is it all just about food and drink or do you show people other things they could do in these cities? Yeah, if there's something cool, fast and cool to do. Uh, but certainly, I'm, you know, I was a chef for 28 years. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of looking at the place from a food centric point of view. Right. And that, let's face it. Food and liquor is your quickest way into a, the kind of essence of a place anyway, sitting down with the locals, eating what they like to eat. And, right. You know, it's a, uh, you know, brings, uh, brings down barriers do you, uh, pretty quickly. Do you, do you have any fear? Because my manager travels a lot, and he's eating, like, raw meat in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. like, outdoor markets had flies on it. Like, he's a psychopath. And uh, do you have any fear of getting sick in these? Because I'm such a food-poisoning, paranoid right. person. I don't know. In our experience over the years, you are far... The people who get poisoned on our crew, it's always the breakfast buffet at the major chain hotel. <laughs> right. You know? yeah. uh, if you're eating street food, and if there's a long line of Mexicans, you know, at, at, a, at a taco place, mm -hmm. you know, like a, a little cart out in the street, bare light bulb, room temperature, pig's head getting hacked up and rolled up in a fresh tortilla. <laughs> you know, this guy is not in business year after year for poisoning his neighbors. If there's 30 Mexicans you know, you know, in Mexico good. lined up for this thing, I'm, right. get, I'm betting it's pretty good. Mm. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, I find it far, far safer. Just, you know, pick a crowded place popular with locals. Chances yeah. are you're going to be good. I've been poisoned. I mean, obviously, you're going to spend a little, you know, porcelain bus time here and there. You know, you're, eating around, <laughs> sure. you're eating around India regularly. You're, uh, you're yeah. going to be spending more time in the Thunder Bucket than. Yeah. That's a small price. You're going to be familiar with yourself with the bathrooms. Yeah. 
Both times I was poisoned, I knew I knew ahead of time that 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 I was going to pay a terrible price. For oh, this you thing. did? What was it? Was it raw and bad, or was it just not for your system? Uh, it was a tribal situation. You know, the chief's standing there. All of his tribe are standing behind. He's very proud. He's holding up some meat that clearly has oh, seen better boy. days. Holy Everybody's shit. eating it with you know their their hands in a situation where you know wash hands after using bathroom is not. Right. 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 I had a pretty good idea what was coming, oh, but I boy. tried very, very hard to be a good guest. Did the know? locals get sick too? No, the people have. Uh, so that you're, you're pretty... getting sick and they're fine. You know, when you're at grandma's house, you eat what grandma offers. Right. Was it cooked meat or raw? It was cooked, but uh, you know, <laughs> what kind of meat was cooked? it? You remember? Oh, dude. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, they're hungry. They're giving yeah. you the best they've got that they worked real hard to get. Uh, I think. Uh, you know, this is a, like a, an important moment in relationships around the world. You 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 smile and you accept it in, in good, good grace. And did you get sick there in front of them? No, no. It was, uh, you know, a couple of days later, long course of antibiotics kind of a thing. Oh, a couple of days later, mm. was you salmonella? Uh, bacterial thing. Oh, okay. And another time it was just, you know. So it wasn't 24 just crawling, hours. You know, hands in Liberia. I was oh, gosh. Just, you know, crawling on my hands and knees for two days. And what did that get? forgot to kill me. What was that? What was that uh. food? Uh, that was, uh, probably, you know, bush meat, uh, who knows <laughs> what, it, you know, take your pick. Whether oh it was... my God. <laughs> I'm getting Are you worried about parasites? I were, I've been really lucky there. That's something I really <laughs> haven't Man. had any of those. It's yeah. a constant source of humor on the road. What? We're always making like. You know, because, of course, we're well familiar with all of them. So guinea worm jokes are really big on the oh, show. Oh, yeah. You know? What are those? Oh, dude, you don't want to hear this. I do. It's like a six foot tall worm that crawls around under your skin and pops its head up now and again, and you got to wheel them out. I like, saw that on uh, that show, oh, that Paris huge Howard, problem. In monsters Africa. inside us, they call it. A some, huge problem in Africa. Yeah. Can terrible. you see it moving under your skin? Yeah, apparently it's really painful and yeah. really tough oh, to get rid of. Really easy to, pre to, to to prevent. I think Jimmy Carter is heavily involved in eradicating the problem. Liver fluke doesn't sound like a good thing, right? Liv what's a liver fluke? You don't want eggs in your liver. You don't want things hatching in your liver. No. Liver fluke. Ooh. It just sounds bad. Yeah, that sounds easy terrible. Yeah, wanna, so, so so far, so good. I want, I want to go back to the food. Ah. Obviously, you've, you've eaten stuff that has made you really sick, but what's the worst thing you've eaten? The worst thing I've eaten was, uh, the, the I think it's called harkarl in, in Iceland. It's their sort of national, traditional dish on their Torablat holiday. And it's basically putrefied fish that they then pickle for six months. And the stench alone would stop like a charging line. I just rhino. sit there going, I don't understand why they enjoy this. It's a Viking thing. It goes back to when they didn't have refrigerators. And it's sort of their show. We are, they're, they're proud of their Viking roots. And I mean, it, the cooks handle it with rubber gloves, which, which should, should be a warning. <laughs> thing. And, and you eat it? Were you able I to keep it down? One bite of that was enough. And you, were, you, you, you do that with a lot of shots. Did you keep it down? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do people eat like a whole helping of it, or is no, it a bite? It's more of a snacky. So they hate it, it. too. I, I they they, they, they <laughs> kind of want the tradition to go away. Enough with the Vikings. I so, know. Let it yeah. go. If they had refrigerators, the Vikings yeah. would look like. What are you assholes doing? Oh, <laughs> Put yeah, it in the freezer. Most, most of the you know most of the young uh, young people in Iceland, it's like wait, <laughs> we don't have to eat this shit anymore. I'm right, not, right. Not that, you know? Putrified. How do they putrify it? Uh, I think Puke you throw it in the ground and just let it rot. <laughs> oh, oh really? man, oh that, that, that's, there's just no way that's a good thing, right? Nah, I no. don't think so. I We're, love hearing about bad food. I can, uh, I, it's more interesting to me than good food because it scares me. <laughs> good food, everybody loves, but bad food is terrifying. You know, I, I don't get angry at that. I get angry when somebody fucks up a simple good thing like a bowl of pasta, though. That, that's that's yeah, what I get upset. I, you know what? That's funny you should say that. I live in New York and I I do take out a lot, and I can't find a good bowl of pasta that's all yeah. i want well they pasta that jazz it up take and... out is good right it's so mm. much but I, even if i good... go to the restaurants i can't find it for it, the for the most part it, it, it's so much easier how do you to... fuck that up to... yeah you have to work extra hard and add extra ingredients and spend extra time to fuck up a simple good thing like a bowl of pasta which is what drives <laughs> me completely insane if and you bizarre. want pasta you want just a basic bowl of pasta you don't need the 20 minutes you know, a can of pl good plum tomatoes, a clove of garlic, and a leaf of freaking basil. Thank you. How hard is it? You Thank know? you. You don't need to make fresh any of that. You're, you you yeah. have a nice bowl like 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 a, like most Italians. Right. But people insist on, I don't know, you know, chicken Caesar pasta. You know, what what just too much shit going on. Right. Yeah. You uh now cooking for so long, uh, do you find yourself? Very critical of what you eat, and, no. and does that ruin it? <laughs> when it comes to food, I'm actually I'm a, I mean I'm really happy with a dirty water hot dog. Oh really? Uh, okay. You know if 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 
I like, I mean, I eat street food for, for yeah. the majority of my time abroad. <laughs> I mean, and I think it's true of most chefs. What New chefs York want after dogs. work is... It's awesome. something really simple. You can, you know, mop sauce with a crust of bread. I don't want little towers of tweaked out food. I always get the towers impression that other yeah. other uh, chefs would be intimidated if there's a chef there. And like if you showed up at a restaurant, I would assume that the chef would be very like, oh boy, here he is. No, oh, I, mean, I consider chefs the home team. I'm I'm for anybody who's doing the best they can. Uh, yeah. you know, if I don't like the meal, I'm, I'm not going to You're not one of those guys out. that screams, this is shit. I'm not a critic. Okay. I'm an enthusiast. <laughs> What's I, this crap? <laughs> you're getting... <laughs> I just saw Ratatouille. Throw it against the wall. I love that film. <laughs> my, my son loves it now. I cried months, like Thank baby. God. Did you? I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. I mean, with the, the, the Antony goes, you know, uh, Ratatouille scene where he you know, turns into a little boy. Oh, it's like... Yeah. yeah. You love it. Go get Pat Oswalt on the phone with your. We kid. had him on yesterday. Oh, Pat yeah. was here yesterday. It was yeah. a weird day. We had Pat Oswalt, and then I had to drive back and forth to Long Island with Ratatouille in the car. I mean, have you know, have him call your kid and, and That's talk. Not a bad like idea. My kid doesn't mouse. understand on that level yet, but <laughs> eventually I'm going to fucking call in that favor. Uh, <laughs> what do you think the fascination with celebrity chefs is? Because it's it's a weird thing that has happened like maybe it's just the next mm -hmm. logical step in watching mm. people do stuff well I, in a lot of ways i think we're, we're catching up with the with the rest of the world that we're actually thinking about food and we care what we're eating and and it, it means something and the, you know when i started out in the business nobody was interested in what the chef thought <laughs> they didn't care what the chef thought was good they didn't care what the chef believed himself to be good at or what he liked to eat uh you know the the, the chefs were backstairs help they were the service you know people um, and people in general weren't that concerned with food. They looked at it like uh, like filling up at the gas station. I don't know why it changed. I think people like Emerald probably were really helpful mm. in that regard. But the fact that it did change is good. I mean, chefs are in power. You go in a restaurant now. You go to a Mario Batali restaurant. You kind of want to know what the chef there thinks is good. I'll, I'll have your your best game. You right. know what you're better at. That you, you know you, you know better than me. Mm. Um, people are more willing to try new stuff, and, and and because of that, you're by and large reading better. Did you eat sushi when you were in Japan? Oh yeah. Is it like is, I, everybody says it's great there, but is it, it right? Uh, well, there's great sushi in New York. There is sushi in New York that's as good as almost all the sushi in, in Japan. What's the best one in New York now? Well, Masa is the most expensive restaurant in America. That's certainly where's that. Uh, that's in the Time Warner set. Oh, yeah, I have seen that. All oh, right. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Suda is awesome. There are a bunch. I mean, again, if they get a large Japanese clientele, you're on safe ground. What you need to know about sushi is it's about the rice. Yeah. yeah. You know, the sushi master takes like three to seven years learning just how to do the rice right. And then, of course, they're paying a lot for that. Food. That's silly. I could, I could figure out rice. You know? Yeah, it's just rice. So. It's just rice. rice around, I could now. never, <laughs> if I spent the rest of my life learning it, I, I would well, never. But what are you figuring ever. out? First of all, where you're getting your rice and what mix you're making. And really, these these guys, how tight you're squeezing it, how perfect. It's sweet, such a consistency. Sour, it can't be too dry. Hot, it's got to be sticky. Crumbly. You want it still a little warm, yep. sort of crumbly. When you're eating sushi in a high-end place, you eat it with your fingers. If you pick it up with the chopsticks, the, the sushi's just going to squeeze it a little tighter for you because you're a dumbass. Right. <laughs> Tell them about uh, the place in L.A. I did my, in Nizawa. You're in Nizawa. In, uh, it's, in, it's in Studio City. Uh, oh, wait, oh, I've heard about this. It's really good, right? It's amazing. But he only serves uh, fish. You can't get anything like, you know, right. California Not a rolls. place you go in and ask for a California Oh, rolls. no. No, but it's a bizarre little it. strip mall place that looks like nothing, but it's it's the yeah. best sushi I've had anywhere. I've eaten at some pretty good sushi places. You know how to piss that guy off. You go in, you're one of these goofs who, like, immediately, before you've even had a piece of sushi, you, you, you pour a big thing of, like, soy sauce into the dish, and then you take a big wad of the, the wasabi, uh, wasabi start mixing yeah. it up in there. You're killing that guy. You're basically <laughs> spitting in the milk of his mother, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, dude, I use, I use, I use soy on everything. I like a little. I just like it with all. That place, man. You want him to like you, right? You I want think him he's to give you the good stuff that he's saving for the Japanese customers. Right? He's tired of my fat face in there, but I, I, I really do like does soy he, and everything. Does he recognize you yet? Oh yeah, yeah. He actually saw me on Leno one time, and he's like, oh, you know, oh. he was always nice to me. So no soy sauce at all. Just you ask. You yeah. know, basically, you go to it's, it's you go to a really high end. You know, you're lucky enough to afford a super high end, really good sushi bar. You sit down you, at the bar and you yeah. say. You decide, uh, and and you smile a lot or not, depending on how you like it, because he's making a lot of decisions about. It's like your friendly neighborhood bartender in a lot of ways. He's making decisions mm, as yeah. you're eating, uh, based on how you're reacting to. That's his pretty food. amazing. And you ask, sauce, no sauce. He'll tell you, and they're always right. And how much is Massa, the, the most expensive restaurant? Like, here, like, what's an average? You can spend eighteen hundred bucks for two people there, and I doubt very much that he's ever made money at that restaurant. Wow. That, I've heard he's he's spent 
up to over hundreds of dollars a pound for his super high. That's wholesale for some of his super high end tuna. Now that's not something you want to do every day, even if you got a lot of bucks. Yeah, but, uh, right. But that's a meal you will remember for the rest of your life. <laughs> I would like to try it once, even though it's it's really expensive. I would like to see how much better is it than Nazawa, if it is at all, because he's like legendary for getting the best fish and like the other sushi chefs try to find where he gets his stuff. Like he's one of those guys, like a really, really old guy and from Japan. And is there anything worse than a, a piece of tuna that's slightly stringy gray? or stringy, slightly gray? Yeah, it's like, horrible. Uh, what are you doing? You know, it's not, but it's not about the freshest uh, fish. In no, fact, it's often about the fish that's you know they know just when to serve it. Maybe it's two days in. Oh, two really? Days in. Hmm. It's at the right temperature, really? not too cold. You want to be able to. Each fish has a different perfect temperature. Hmm. The rice. I mean, there's a whole. Spe- there's, you know, there's good, there's utility sushi, there's good sushi, and then there's really, really, really great sushi. Is utility it's, sushi the places that have fifty percent off for lunch? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I want to yeah. try that massive place. I, I don't know if I can afford that much, but oh, but I, I, you need to bring a girl who you know is gonna fuck. I, I, <laughs> you know what? Actually, I make I. You make I make basic decisions, or I used to make basic decisions about uh, you know date night. I I you know I bring a woman to Masa, and then you know she didn't eat the uni, the sea urchin. There's the sex is just not going to be good. There's sea no urchin's rough. I life. love sea urchin. I it's I've grown always, on me. I uh, no. salmon roll. I won't eat those little weird fucking glowing eggs, the yeah. big orange eggs. I don't like those. That's rough too. Sa- I love me. a sea, sea urchin's, urchin's rough. There's no possibility of fellatio. She's not going for the uni. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. But if she takes the uni and she squeezes it on her face, she's a trooper. <laughs> she's rubbing uni in her hair. <laughs> I got another question that only a twelve year old would ask, I guess, but I got to <laughs> ask. Uh, sure. Your favorite place in the world. Uh, You've been everywhere. Place. Wow. You know, I, I like Southeast Asia in general. Vietnam is really awesome. Fits in. What makes it my, cool? I, it's just like, you know, I never, I hadn't really been anywhere until I was 44. And I, it was the sort of place I dreamed of, you know. I, I, I had expectations of what the, you know, exotic Vietnam would be like. And, and when I actually got there, it was way better. Mm. You know, great people, amazing food, amazing. The country just smells good. Everything's I, delicious. I had a... I had a friend that went down uh, to Vietnam and, you know, backpacking. I and did, all too. That. Never came back. And he, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like back a, in a body bag. Like a really nice hotel. It's like five <laughs> bucks. It's just uh, he couldn't believe how far his money went down It's there. just beautiful. And the people are food crazy. And they, they're they really proud of their food. So, yeah. you know, strangers will feed you, you know, just to show you how good they got it. It's uh, They like Americans well, there now? I mean, They, love, they, they do. like Americans. They really... You know, they've been fighting for 600 years, so, you know, I asked about this. I said, you know, aren't you guys pissed? And they're like, I don't flatter yourself. Before you, there was the Japanese, the French, <laughs> the Chinese. After you, there were the Chinese, the uh, yeah, Cambodians. So. They say, you know, sit down, eat, let's get drunk. I got some rice whiskey here. Look how good we got it. Um, what, what was the worst uh, alcohol? Worst alcohol? Oh, God. I've uh, seen some of this shit. I've eaten a lot of cloudy, you know, shit with particles in it and <laughs> old, you know, old uh, diet you know, Pepsi jugs and somebody's just about everywhere in the developing world. Somebody's fermenting something or distilling something in a 55 gallon drum and they, they want you to have some or the of the snakes in it or whatever. Well, you know, one of the, one of the gestures that I dread is when you're, you're people are being really nice and you're in their home and they say, I have something very special for you. And then they make this gesture. This will make you strong. It's like, Oh no, you know, something, <laughs> something's going in that drink. And what has it been? Yeah means there's going to be some dick involved or uh, bile or some kind of essence of something that, that you know. Mm, they they worry about bones wanna... a lot in certain in, in well, parts of Southeast uh, Asia. We all do. Let's see. What's, what's really good <laughs> for the erection? Uh, you, you know, I don't think anyone ever, you know, ever, for all of the many times I've heard around the world, this will make you strong. You know, I, I don't think I ever sat up from a meal, you know, with a raging heart on. <laughs> right. You know, sow my seed. I, you know. <laughs> but did you feel something going on? Do in the oysters area? do that? Because yeah. I'll eat oysters. Oysters. Like, like, they make no you more way. potent. Did it feel a little more alive after you got up? Did it jump? <laughs> did it jump a little? <laughs> no. No. Yeah, I don't think that works. Did... Whatever's in Viagra and Cialis, I guess, is just is just the, is just. I, it. You know, I, I actually said through a third party. You know, I'm not, I'm not the friendliest guy towards uh, vegans and uh, vegetarians mm-hmm. and pita types. And I actually sent word through a neutral party to the annoying Paul McCartney that, you know, if he just if he really wanted to save some cute animals, he should spend his money on like buying like 10 million hits of Viagra and spread it around Southeast Asia, where they're always, you know, 
whacking rhinos for the horns and, you know, draining bile right. out of bears. You know, give them something that works and they'll stop uh, killing these cute little animals. And the problem with vegan food is some of it's really good. Like there's a place called Gobo on 6th Avenue, which has great vegan food. But so much of it is just awful. Like, it's rough. I yeah. wish it was I've good. Because, hey, look, I yeah, like animals. I really did try. I, mean, I would eat vegan. Good, wouldn't it be better with, like, you know, a hunk of slow-cooked pork in there? Mm. Yeah, or if they got something that tasted just like pork. It always, like, I would like that. But they only don't. Por- only feel, good pork. You always yeah, feel like you're pork. missing something. They call it something like different. Chicken. Yeah. The dish would be great if it there had a it's little chicken in it. The only place I can eat vegan, basically, or, or vegetarian for a sustained period of time is India. I mean, that, that's food, mm. that really? food tastes good. You know? I don't like when they call it, like, tofurkey. Or would you like some perk? No, I don't. Is not it tofu dog. or is it a fucking oh. turkey? Make up your mind. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I find it really Terrible. disturbing. This sort of weird Franken turkey. And texture-wise, it's just awful. No. They, they, and it doesn't taste like the actual meat. They try to make it taste like what you would season the meat with because they can't yeah. make it taste like turkey. So yeah, they put no smoky shit on stuff. it and everything. It's terrible. Yeah. One of my my girl used to be a vegetarian. It was a pain Throw in the nuts, ass. Right? Go out or go into my family's house, you know. I got a big Italian family. We go over there for uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve and stuff, and yeah, it's just a shitload of great food. And she's like, "Ah, you know, could you make me a, a, a pasta and just a salad?" And uh, you miss out on everything. Yeah. I don't find vegetarians to be as an, vegans. I think are a little more annoying because they don't use any animal products. Like, all right, you don't want to eat a burger. That's one thing. But what do you mean you won't eat fucking honey, asshole? <laughs> I mean, they, they, want to, they, they want to give chickens the vote. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes. you know, what? The chicken didn't have make a, make a decision to end up in your plate. Well, you know, uh, hey, that's uh, you know top of the food chain here. Chris, Sorry for the opposable thumb. Chris in New Hampshire wants us to ask you about Squeezel. Squeezel, yeah, it was uh, it was just a great misnomer. I was with my uh, a Vietnamese friend of mine, and we pull off on the side of the road. And he'd planned a big meal there, and this place was like completely empty. They hadn't been open for ages, clearly. And I'm trying to get he, he works part time for the Interior Ministry, so naturally these people were a little concerned. Hurriedly open up, start looking around for something to service, and I'm saying, well, what do they have here, man? I mean, what what what's the big specialty? Why are you so determined? Yes, they serve woodland creatures. And I said, well, what woodland creature? He's like, I I think you call it squeezel. And he was thinking of squirrel and weasel, oh, I guess. Shit. And I don't know what the hell it was. It had some sort of spines on it. Uh, but it, oh, it, I think God. it entered the lexicon. It's now, if you, I think if you go to Urban Dictionary, the word squeezel is now kind of a word. Oh, God. Oh, it's not a real thing? Well, now it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Was it, was it any good? It, well, listen, I've had, yeah, I'd rather eat squeezel than Olive Garden. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Olive Garden is a bad rap. Is it really that shitty Italian food? Yeah. Or is it just, just it, right. I think, listen, it's... It's, it's like this. If you're planning on opening an Italian restaurant, I think you, it's important that you just ask yourself a simple question. Can any Italian grandmother in the entire nation of Italy cook better fucking Italian food than I'm planning on serving? That should be the threshold. And if the answer is, yes, they can cook better than anything I'm ever planning on serving, you should stay the fuck out of the Italian restaurant. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Where's the best side? Uh, like, I like Morton's is a chain place, which I think is really good, and, uh, and that probably makes you want to spit on me, but I really, I do love it. Where's a great steak place in new york uh, oh wow well, i don't know i like uh yeah peter luger's horrific uh Love luger's. i've never uh, eaten there uh, you've uh, never been to luger's uh, yeah. castellano get west sparks is good yeah. Sparks steakhouse, um, yeah. um do you like I, the porterhouse porterhouse is great okay, Love porterhouse. you gotta Love do the luger's them. experience but i know but they don't take Bro- credit cards you go to it's brooklyn possible. it's all cash it's wooden tables it's just it's, it's possible just, to have a good chain restaurant, though. Yeah. I mean, look at In-N-Out Burger. That's a decent burger. You know, Shake Shack, are you love Shake chain Shack at this point? For That's burgers. quality stuff. So it doesn't have to be bad. Right. It doesn't have to be dumbed down. It's, yeah. uh, you know, I think it's our, and I, I'm just against any place that refuses to serve me a burger below medium. You know, <laughs> what, what are you telling me? You're saying, for your safety, we have to cook this well done. Why are you treating my burger, my birthright as an American citizen, our national dish? Why do I have to treat this shit like medical waste? This is, <laughs> this is unpatriotic to ask this of Americans. Uh, and yeah. and I, I, I'm really, really angry about it. So, How do like, you like a burger? Uh, medium rare is the optimum temperature for, for a burger. Really? Uh, and, a, and a steak to me. You know, if you like rare, good. I respect you all the better. Personally... You know, medium rare, a bit on the rare side. I prefer well done. I just, li- I actually like oh, the taste a lot. Oh, like no. I life is bereft of of, of, of the true oh, pleasure no, of yeah. meat. Medium rare. I've tried. That's you're right. I you're probably right. I've tried it, but I didn't like it as much when I could taste really? the blood. I just didn't like no, it. Yeah. Like it didn't scare rare. me. I just didn't like oh, it. It's so good. I want. It was too chewy. <laughs> a good it was a little too chewy. Right you went to Machu Picchu. Mm-hmm. I've been to Machu Picchu. What's that? It's a place I want to go so bad. It's, it's awesome. the fucking uh, old civilization in the in the, in so the, the clouds. The hidden city of the Incas on the yeah. top of uh, the mountains. The Did you take Spanish a... never found it. Did you... I take ayahuasca? Yes. Uh, the trail, right? 
Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the train. Uh, yeah, I took the train. I'm not humping up <laughs> no mountain. No, supposedly yeah. you can hump up the mountain, and it's an experience in itself. It is an experience. Uh, I should warn anyone who's consider uh, considering doing that. The, the mosquitoes there are the most horrifying I've uh, ever encountered. Why? Uh, they're tiny. They're tiny, but but pound for pound, uh, <laughs> they deliver more damaging bites than any place I've ever been. I mean, three weeks later, you're getting raped. Oh, you're shit. Bumps. Really? It's really? Really bad. So you, so you, how long does this train uh, take to get to the top of the mountain? Quick, like, I don't know, hour or two? And it's a swank old train, too, you know, bar, car. And, oh, you know, really? Yeah, you're cocktailing on your way up. Where's nice the place? Hotels up That's there. Nice. There's hotels Peru. up there now. Oh, Peru. Okay. Yeah, there's two, at least two really good hotels. One all the way up by Machu Picchu. And you never see that up. when they show you Machu Picchu on TV. Yeah, but it's not ugly. It's low to the ground. It's t- kind of tucked in. I mean, it's real nice. How high up in the mountain? I feel like an eight-year-old. Way, way high. Like like you're having trouble breathing high. Oh, like, really? Is like it like you, Denver like, or much higher? Way higher, I believe. <laughs> I mean, you're chewing coca leaves and not for its recreational uh, uh, value. And uh, if you're carrying a can of o- they pump the oxygen in a, in a hotel rooms in some places. In huh. And you need it. You're 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 not feeling too good up around there. What do the uh, coca leaves do? Uh, not much. They do, but they do seem to ameliorate. Uh, you know, like I don't I don't do coke anymore, but I would chew leaves if I'm uh, if I'm up that high. It do you have to, to ameliorate. It helps. A Same feeling as doing coke. Uh, no, 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 no. It doesn't or I wouldn't do it. I mean, it's, right, it doesn't right. get. No, doesn't I, get I just don't know. It, okay, uh, but it, for some for some reason seems to ameliorate the uh, the altitude sickness. Is it clear? It probably opens up your. You liked it up there? Your it's, lungs. It's <laughs> incredible. It's it's my, it's like uh, Machu Picchu and uh, Angkor Wat are two right. places that you just. You look at it and you just pinch yourself and, and say, "I can't believe." And it. it goes with the Joe Rogan thing. Like, yeah. how the hell did they build this up there? <laughs> well, they were enterprising, hardworking people. This notion that aliens came and showed these, you know, dumbass uh, Incas <laughs> how to do it is completely ridiculous. Uh, you know, they, 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 you know, they had slave labor and a cause, and you know, a lot of spare time, and uh, they did it like they built, you know, like people built the pyramids or uh, you know, Epcot Center. I mean, <laughs> how big is it? <laughs> Huge. Huge and, and like, is there more than a thousand people in the city? And... Oh yeah, it was a big, big city. Oh, no, no one's there anymore. Yeah. Angkor Wat, there were over a million people living there. But no I mean, one, hmm. no one lives there, obviously. Uh, no. The mountain uh, city, nobody lives in. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's these are not viable structures. Yeah, it's old ruins. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, it's old ruins. I didn't, it sounds cool, but there's hotels up there, new hotels. Oh, well, they're yeah, sort well, of living hotels. Yeah. And then near, and they're nearby town. There's lodges and hotels as well. Oh, all right, that sounds kind of. But cool. it's really an amazing experience doing that. I hear someday maybe. <laughs> We're hearing we have to let you go. This sucks. Yeah, well, can I play You're a busy yeah, man. Oh, absolutely. No, let's make sure uh, people... Monday, re- lay, layover you mentioned, but Monday, uh, maybe the the darkest, most twisted, fucked up episode of television we've ever done. Our, 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 every once in a while, we do a really dysfunctional holiday special. And uh, really disturbing, always terrifying to uh, our <laughs> cruel masters. And uh, this time we have, finally, after years of trying uh, Christopher Walken on the show. Oh, nice. with Christopher Walken. Uh, we got Nora Jones to uh, do uh, score the show and do uh, scatological uh, Catalonian pooping log related songs. Uh, it's uh, ultra violent. It's uh, dark, uh, twisted. Uh, the band Fucked Up is on as well. It is a strange, <laughs> disturbing, and and wonderful hour of television that I'm really proud of. We were put on earth to make shows. Like this is terrifying. Is this one that's coming up Monday. Monday, and that's part of the layover. The it's new show? Of, uh, no, this is a No Reservations. Oh, no. Reservations. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I think okay. Layover was right before that at 9, and then the holiday special at, at 10. For No Reservations. And if you want to see the edited sequence from... There's sort of a missing sequence that uh, where the entire thing is on YouTube under... I don't know if you look up No Reservations and Krampus about the legendary uh, European sort of bad Santa figure. <laughs> you know, in, in, in Western Europe, there's not just Santa, there's his evil associate Krampus. So it's not like here where Krampus, you know, where Santa says, you know, if you've been good, we'll give you presents. Right. It's if you've been bad, Krampus is coming and he's you know, going to beat the crap out of you, <laughs> shove you into a bag and take you away forever. Krampus so it's rules. A, Krampus we, rules. we did a Krampus segment. And if you want to see the unedited version, it's up on YouTube. Uh, right on. Right. Hey, hey, it was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, you're an interesting guy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, it's man. no reservations on uh, Twitter, but uh, we're focusing on the layover, certainly as well, on the Travel Channel Mondays at 9 p.m. Thank you, guys. Come cool. back and Thanks see you. Thank you. Anthony Bourdain, everyone. Sirius XM. Sirius XM. This is the Opinion Anthony Show.
Jimmy had a dream to the point he got up out of bed and started typing. It's 447. Is it called morning. typing even though you're on your computer? True. The act is typing. It's just not a typewriter. Right. Oh. Um, and you wrote some notes about your dream. I just, it, it's very disjointed, but it was a very bizarre dream, and I don't know exactly what it was about. It started uh, before the dream. I was at in Conan O'Brien's studio, and... I didn't realize that the stage was raised, so I went up one level. And I was trying to get on the stage to see somebody I knew, but then the area was filled up with water, so I think I had to piss. So <laughs> that had nothing to do with the dream. What do you mean that had nothing? To I was I don't know what you dreaming that. Yeah, but then I was at like front. I How do you say, know that had nothing to do with the dream? Because I remembered it after, but it was before. And then I, I was would... at like Brewer's house or somebody's house, mm -hmm. and uh, the backyard was flooded. And I, I kept trying to, like, there was a, a hose in the backyard, and I was very thirsty. I really wanted to drink out of the hose, yeah. which I hope isn't a fucking blowjob <laughs> reference. <laughs> yes. You were thirsty. All I was right. very freaked out. So here's the main dream. Hmm. Um, I don't know what the event was, but George Bush Jr. and Bill Clinton were going to be at the event, and I had access to them. Well. Wow. And um, I don't know how I remember, but I got a picture with Bill Clinton, and I was... Uh -huh. I met Bush. I was getting a picture with George Bush. Yeah. And he was friendly, but I handed my camera to a woman, and she was shaking so badly, and the underside, she was pointing the underside of the camera. And oh, I'm like, no. no. Just completely fucking Jimmy's picture. And I'm up. like, no, 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 turn around, turn around. <laughs> so she's shaking fucking violently. And then we get the uh, picture, and I remember I slap Bush on the back, and I go, I, I knew you'd be so much fun to meet and talk to. And he was very friendly. And then um, as we're done taking our picture, I noticed another guy walks around from behind us. So I realized, I'm like, I hope he's not in my fucking picture <laughs> with Jimmy us. <laughs> has these dreams about these picture anxiety things. But I, I, so I look at the picture and it's extremely pixelated and blurry. Oh, and no. we look like three homeboys. Like I'm in the front and George Bush is, you can kind of see him behind me. And this other guy is behind him. Oh, photobombed you. But it looked like the actor who played fucking Charles Keating in the movie. I don't know who that was in the Keating Loan and Scandal movie. So I'm like, I have to get... The picture is very, very blurry. So I know I have to get another copy of this picture. And E-Rock is around, and he tells me that these guys are appearing at this other public place. And if I just wait there with E-Rock, he'll take me there. But right now, he's going because he's going to help someone else get a picture with the president. So just stay there with E-Rock. E-Rock's your go-to guy? He's my go-to guy. But I don't remember why, but I went back to an old location that I had been in earlier in the dream to see if the presidents were there. I got greedy. And this girl who I really liked was there, and she goes, no, they, le they left. You missed them. Oh, no. And uh, she was hurt for some... Why didn't you listen to E-Rock? I don't know. But this girl was hurt. She was injured. And uh, she asked to borrow some money for a cup of coffee. She needed money for a coffee shop. So I gave her 20. I'm like, no, no, keep it. You don't have to pay me back because I wanted her to go out with me. But I kept giving her my number and reading the digits, but she couldn't understand the number. Why don't you hate that? So I was like 7539, and I kept writing it, but I couldn't write it where she would read it. Jesus. But then I realized I'm missing the president. I realized I was wasting time like, well, here. I'm wasting time with this dumb bitch. So I panic. And I run back to the uh, place. It's the Sirius XM office. But it's a giant open... Like, you ever see the inside of a shopping mall with, like, an open-air vestibule and all these shops around? Yes. And that's what the office was like. And Jim Brewer was there, and Keith Robinson was there. And I'm like, where's E-Rock? And they're all laughing at me. Ah, stupid, looking for E-Rock. And they're all laughing at me because I'm trying to find Eric. And uh, I'm looking through my cell phone for fucking E-Rock's number, and I'm panicking. Because I look up E-Rock, and I realize I have him under Eric, and I just keep dialing the wrong number, and I can't get fucking E-Rock. Oh God, this is so exhausting. So I finally bump into Andrew Moss, who is our CFO, the chief financial officer here, who, is, who I know and I like. And he's wearing a college sweatshirt, and he's bleeding from the lip, and he has blood all over the front of his shirt. Jeez. I, and probably, he, I probably punched him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, he didn't look hurt. He just had blood on the front of his shirt. But I knew him wearing a college sweatshirt, man. He wasn't well dressed anymore. I missed the event. And he goes, uh, I go, like, is it, is it happening? Did I miss it? He goes, no, no, but I think we're leaving. He goes, the address is, the address is Fifth and Beam. Fifth and Beam. So uh, I have to get to Fifth and Beam here in Manhattan. And I'm walking along. And uh, I hear this old lady driving by yelling at the car. 
and a black guy I see in front of me. She's like, it's him. It's him. Oh. He's the one. I think he's on acid. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm worried that this was a tranny dream because I'm writing it out. And I was rushing this morning when I wrote it out. I wrote it space him. But I put the S in the wrong place. It was Shim. I'm like, oh, my God. I hope this wasn't a she dream. <laughs> Shim. Because I'm, I'm walking and I know that this black guy's trouble. And I fucking, I know that he's a problem. And I hear him walk around and start walking with the group I'm walking with. I don't know who they are. And he starts to bother this girl that I'm walking with. And I'm like, I know I have to step in here and say something. So I finally say like something like, so leave her alone. Stop bothering her. And I punch this black guy in the face. Ooh. But he turns and it's a tranny. Oh, no. But it's not a real face. It's a doll face looking at me. Oh, that's it creepy. was a black plastic doll face. And so I say, is anybody going to help me here? Is anybody going to help me? And this white guy's looking at me and he just he's disinterested and he walks away. So now I have to fight this person. But I also have to get downtown and see the president. So I hop in a cab, and when I hop in a cab, Iraq comes over, and he's wearing a tuxedo. <laughs> and he looks in the window, and I know I've missed the event because he's holding, like, a fucking booklet that I know is from the event. And he goes, what did he say to me? He goes, uh, he goes oh, we were in the wrong place before. Um, and I know he's telling me, and I know he has photos with both presidents, and I know I've missed the event because this asshole is smiling and beaming. And I'm like, I should have just stuck with e -Rock. Oh. And so I get in the cab and I tell the guy, we have to go to Fifth and Beam. And uh, he's running red lights for me. And then I realize we're driving down suburban roads. Oh, And this no. is the wrong place. You're not in the city. But now I wonder if it's a drinking dream because Fifth and Beam, uh, was I thinking Fifth of Jim Beam? Oh. Uh, was that a drunk dream? Oh. I don't know what that was. And then I woke up. That was my entire dream. That is so fucked up. But I like the detail of the plastic face. The yeah. plastic doll That's face just, with, scary. like, girl doll hair. And uh, and e -Rock in his tuxedo. And I knew that he had photos. With, and all, oh, and Opie's mention was I remember saying I wanted to tell George Bush that Opie has a picture with Clinton. So I want to get a picture with both of you guys so I have a better picture than Opie. <laughs> like, I wanted to tell this to George Bush. Wow. That's a real thing between me and Jimmy. It was, I, I bust them all the time that I have a... A much better picture than he has. But I wanted to tell the president, but it was fucking <laughs> the frustration of seeing this girl and like giving her 20. It was so weird. She had to go to the coffee shop and needed money. But the frustration of not being heard by this woman or her not hearing. Yeah, it's all hookers. Or it's a weird sex drinking dream deep oh, down. Yeah, you think that yeah. was what it was? I don't Co know what it means. Coke Logic's got to animate the. The Jimmy dream. I'm I thinking. don't know what it means, but you rock in his tuxedo. I knew that he had pictures with the presidents. And I'm like, why didn't I just. It's almost like I feel like I'm missing out on life by doing all this sexual shit. Because I was trying to give this girl my number and I gave her money. But meanwhile, I'm missing. You're missing what you want to do. And I'm missing the event. The big, the big thing. It really shook me when I woke up, though. I couldn't go back to sleep. It was oh, really bothered. That's weird. Yeah. Might mean nothing. Yeah. No, there's a lot of meaning in there. I don't picture know. taking and I, I think it's uh, I don't know our dreams really You're constantly like, chasing something that's just out of reach. Do you look at dreams like that and get so deep into them? Or are they very just surface oriented? I think they're synapse both. fucking. I think they're snapping. nonsense because I yeah. think first of all you can't you know when people read your dreams it's stupid because you you don't even remember all of the dream you only remember certain little tiny little things. Very very rough. That's pretty detailed because you. Jim no, I know, Jimmy. That. Jimmy that is yeah. real good. Because yeah, he was able to get out of bed. Most people wouldn't get out of bed, and then, then they would try to tell someone what their dream was about. Yeah. And then that person will go, well, I know exactly what's going on in your life because of what you told me. I Stupid. try, to, I, I, I try <laughs> to just go right back to sleep and continue. No, I the thought of that, dream. too. Yeah. But it I never, never figured works, out so. why I have this picture obsession. I don't know if I talked about this, but I told you, I, I wrote about it in Happy Endings when I was a kid. I had that crush on that girl. Well, like I had, I loved her, and I didn't know. We got caught fooling around under the blanket, kissing, but I don't remember Ooh. what happened. But she was moving, and my parents were like, "Go say goodbye to her, go say goodbye," to her. and I couldn't say goodbye to her. I couldn't do it. I just, I just froze in my house, and I looked at my clothes all folded, and I couldn't do it. Ooh. So I went down, and she had already left. So I, I oh never saw God. her again after that. Never. But I always wondered if they, capturing these celebrity moments, it's almost like with ex-girlfriends or whatever. I always keep them around, even as friends, like. I can't let go. Mm. And it's almost like because I missed this fucking thing, I can't, I have to capture it and fucking corral it and keep it. 
Because yeah. I've never forgotten that moment of looking at those clothes. And I joked about it in my book. Oh. But seeing that fucking folded pile of clothes and not being able to get dressed, not being able to move myself and go say goodbye to that girl. Why, why couldn't you? Like, why couldn't you? I just, you I just couldn't. Were, I it was couldn't, too sad. It, it was if I don't probably. acknowledge it, it won't be true. Yeah. Oh. I couldn't. How old were you? Maybe five or six. Holy it was a it was shit. a puppy love crush thing. It wasn't sexual. It right. was like uh, and I don't remember her name or what she looked like. Well, we've talked about this. That's hardcore sex for a five year old. Oh, it's that you. same emotion, yeah. Yeah. same intensity. Not having sex as a five year old, but that's it's the same type of shit in your oh, head. Though. Yeah, I think I was that that really young. in love with someone. Aww. Hanging hanging around with exes, get the fuck. Out. No, but not even hanging around with them, but just Keeping knowing them that in I your can life? occasionally nah. corral them, even as friends, like. I don't want to fuck them. I don't fuck my ex-girlfriends ever. Um, I'm just having them around still in yeah, some way? Yeah, but that. there's one from 10 years ago who I think is mad at me and she won't talk to me anymore. Um, yeah, and I, and I don't know why. But I, I'm like, I'm curious. Like, how is she doing? I, I don't want to date her. I don't want to fuck her. Hmm. But I just want to know how she is. I don't know why I can't just go fuck these people and put them out of my life anymore. Like, why do I have to capture every moment on... Mm. It's almost like when I meet these celebrities, I don't bother them. I really don't want to go hang out with them. I don't call. I have fucking some of their numbers. I have fucking Omar's number, but you, Jamie Hector. Yeah. I've texted them a couple of times. Like, hey, if you want to come down to the cellar. But not incessantly. I don't need them in my life being best friends. I don't try to overtake their lives. Why do I corral these fucking Yeah, but fucking some of those moments? guys want to be friends with you. I Some of them do. Just on a real level, too, yeah. by the way. Not because, you, you know, yeah. you're famous and he's famous. I, just, I think some of them might want along. to. Anthony Show continues. continues. This is After ONA Live. Here's your host, Sam Roberts. You know, we're brought to you by Trojan Bearskin Condoms. Trojan, America's number one most trusted condom brand. This is After Open Anthony Live. And my name is Sam Roberts. Great show today. That last bit sounded a little familiar, but other than that, fantastic show today. Uh, Anthony Bourdain was in here. Uh, he was talking about his new show, The Layover. It's like No Reservations. Everybody loves Anthony Bourdain. I've never met anybody who knows who Anthony Bourdain is who doesn't love the guy. Uh, it's it's like No Reservations. It's called The Layover, and it's more... Uh, it, 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 it's No Reservations, but in areas that you might find yourself, okay? So the episode that we were sent was Miami. Uh, he he's said he's filmed in New York, Rome... And it's just 24 to 48 hours in these cities. And uh, where's there to eat? What's there to do? Um, E-Rock, you're a foodie. How does Anthony Bourdain compare with the other TV chefs? Eric. Sorry, Troy was asking me something for the weekend. What was Troy asking you? Oh, just going over promo stuff. Oh. Does Troy not realize you have a job right now? I didn't know you were talking to me when Troy Well, you're supposed to be producing. You're the producer of After Open Anthony Live, right? I'm your board op. Well, still... You know, you're not my board op, B-O-R-E-D. You're my board op, so I need you here with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm here. Okay. Is it, how does Anthony Bourdain compare to the other TV chefs? Uh, see, I'm not into all those other, you'd think, with me and food. I don't care about those damn cooking shows and, and all the other chef stuff like Gordon Ramsay. And... Well, what do you jerk off to then? I Stop. <laughs> Um, but I do like Anthony Bourdain's No Reservations. I haven't seen The Layover yet. Well, it's like it's like, well, I just said it, but you weren't listening. Everybody else was. It's it's similar to No Reservations, but in places where you might go. The thing about Anthony Bourdain shows, though, they don't fit on. They fit on the Travel Channel. They don't fit on Food Network. No. Like Food Network is a very sort of middle of the road. We're not going to offend anybody. We're going to, you know, make all the housewives happy. Like, you know. And if you're not in a restaurant setting, they have a fake kitchen set that yeah, you have it's, to be it's on. All, it's all very sort of, it's very kosher. You know what I mean? It's yeah. very safe. Anthony Bourdain is not a safe guy. He, was, he jumped in a car uh, on the Miami episode, and he, he rented a sports car and said that it's important when you come to Miami to channel your inner douchebag <laughs> and things like this. And he's pointing out girls' asses as they walk down the street. He's cursing, he's drinking, he's sucking, he's fucking, he's everything whoa, that you want. Whoa, whoa. I don't think he's no. It, well, all right, he didn't do it on he didn't do it on the show that I saw. He didn't do either of those two things. But you also, me on that. but what I also like about uh, Anthony Bourdain, especially with no reservations, is like he has really unusual celebrity friends that just show up yeah, depending yeah, yeah. on the city. Like the the well, one he did in Chicago with Bill and Bill Murray just shows up. 
Bill Murray never does anything. It's just because there's something about Anthony Bourdain. It's, I mean, the fact that maybe he's one of the three honest people in all of television, but there's, there's something about him that people love him. They don't like him. They I, love him, actually, and, and, and they want to do projects with him. Yeah, I, th I think I said uh, in Chicago it was in New York when Bill Murray showed up. But still, Look, Bill Eric, Murray doesn't... Nobody's calling you on Anthony Bourdain trivia But today. Bill Murray doesn't... You see him on Letterman, and that's about it. He never shows up anywhere. You barely see him on that. He doesn't do shows anymore. But, you know, Anthony Bourdain is the show to do. He's the if you're, if you're If you're friends with him. Um, and if you haven't heard it, I think we've aired it. Uh, I believe we have aired it on this channel, but... Joe Rogan's podcast, when he got Anthony Bourdain to come on, is is a great listen to as well. Joe Just Rogan's podcast is always a great listen to. Uh, I'm, for everybody who's asking, I don't know what Jim was talking about earlier today. He said, you know, when right before Anthony Bourdain came in, it did get a little hostile in here. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that. It got a little. Uh, I wasn't quite sure where it was going. It started with Opie bringing up his mom, and trust me. Ladies that never and gentlemen, goes well. I know that I'm going to have to pay for the things that I said today very dearly. But um, why? Yeah, I mean, look, it, of all the things that he said about your mom and to your mom, I mean, that was that was a, a, a small portion of giving it back. Well, to that's him. why he was sitting here and he was being revealing about an experience he had with his mother, and all I could picture in my head was Mrs. Roberts, Sam's mommy, saying. Go get him, Sam. Defend my honor. Don't let him get away with it again. Was she appearing like and a little, I didn't. little ghost over your shoulder there? No, she was in the front of my forehead. She was in my head. She wasn't on my shoulder. She was at my forefront. She was looking me right in the eyes and telling me exactly what I should be doing. Go for, go for it. Go for it, Sammy. Go for the knockout. And I went for it. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, if you're talking about uh, on, what should happen... Like, between two people, I shouldn't have to worry about the horrible ramifications uh, that doing that is, is going to include. The, the terrible things that are going to happen to me because I made some jokes about Opie's mom today I, I and her relationship with an old man. But we're not talking about just people. You know, I can't say, well, you made fun of my mom, so I get to make fun of your mom. Because yeah. Opie holds the trump card. He gets to say... Yeah, except I'm Opie. That's my name on the wall. All and right. you don't get to do that because there's 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 a there's a cost to pay. All right, fair enough. You but I, I think you know, with him calling your mom the C word, you evened it out by saying, Does the old man come dust into your mother? <laughs> into her mouth, I said. Oh, not just mouth. into her. That would have been classless. <laughs> I, I asked him, you know, in, into her mouth and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um my no, I, th I think it just makes it even. It's a wash. My fiance is texting me right now. I guess she's listening to the after show, asking what I did. Uh, for those of you that weren't listening, did Opie, you tell on you? Opie brought up. Uh, no, she's listening to the show. I just oh, said okay. we're on the radio right now, Eric. There are people listening, and I know that you aren't as experienced at this as I am. But that's what happens sometimes. I'm admiring the lights in here. I know they're very distracting, aren't they? Um, what happened was Opie brought up his mom for those that didn't hear and said that she had a crush. On, a, on an older man, she mentioned that she m met an older man in a in an assisted living home. She's 75, he was 92, and she said she liked this old man, and that he had a great body. This 92 year old man had a great body, so I took that opportunity to get very sexual with the line of questioning that I followed with Opie, as he has done to my mother in the past. I felt he deserved it, and I feel very strong in my conviction. Uh, to do that to him, unfortunately, um, my mother, the next time she's on the show, is going to be the one who, who suffers from that. She's the one who's going to have to pay the cost, not me. I mean, I'll have a bit of embarrassment because I need to defend mommy, but... Well, it's going to cost her a lot of baked goods. She's not. I told her not to put up with that bullshit anymore. That it, 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 She brings in baked goods, right? And that day, everything is fine. But she should know by now that the next day... It's just going to be shit on it again. You know what I mean? You can't just keep bringing in baked goods. It's like giving a bully your lunch money. He'll leave you alone if you give it to him on Monday. But guess what? You owe him some money, money Tuesday through Friday. You know what I'm saying? You have to learn from these things. Matt the intern. Listen, Fred. Matt the intern. I saw it in his face. He had something to say. Fred.
Should this is UCB Fred from the Ryan Fez show? Yes. Should I let Matt the intern just say what he wanted to say, or just real quick? I can't imagine that he has anything to add. You don't think so, UCB Fred from Ryan Fez? They go with your instincts. I don't know, Matt. Should I let you say something? Yeah. Okay. Wait, well, okay. He says yes. Eric. What? You're the intern boss. Yeah. The people now may be curious. Should I let intern Matt say what he had to say? Well, he only has a few days left, so he might as well just hear what nonsense he's going to spew. Okay. You're right. See, UCB Fred, Eric said he's only got a few days left. So maybe you hear whatever nonsense he's got to spew. I, well, I'm just sure. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Sam, there's quite a buzz going on in the Twitterverse today. Oh, he's doing I'm not bits. sure if you're aware of this. Um, <laughs> There's a bit What's of a controversy the... because apparently a couple of listeners have informed Bobo that he's not allowed at the F.H. Riley's party on Saturday. This is insane. And there's actually been a security force uh, assembled to keep Bobo out of F.H. Riley's. And that, Matt, uh, Matt there's been an actually... account created Why called you... at Bobo Security if Matt to keep Bobo out. I don't know. Bits? If Matt wasn't hated enough already, Matt uses his one opportunity to come on the air and talk about Bobo. Well, I'm just telling Matt, you that it's just a combination of the two most hated things. Are you going to call Jordan next on the phone and just like, bring they together? They both called today, and I told them we don't care about this. I we saw, have Anthony Bourdain on. I saw Jordan was on the phone. Yeah, for a while. and then you know Jordan he, he called goes, in yesterday and was on the uh, on hold all day. Well, that's his problem. Bobo was Jordan the karaoke star. For those that don't know, Bobo was very angry. I don't this care morning. about Bobo, Matt. What do I care about Bobo? <laughs> Why would I care? I, it's, well, I'm what are we talking you, about Bobo for? I just think you should that? be aware of what's going on in the Twitterverse. Why? Nobody cares. It let's, doesn't let's bring to in us. real quick. Steve, but get Steve in here. Get Pitbull Steve Sterniolo. Because, Steve, I don't know if you know about this, uh, UCB Fred, but uh, Steve Sterniolo is a bit of a Pitbull. Yeah. When, you know, I, I was just telling the audience, you're a bit of a pit bull. He, he, and turn, on, on the after show here, yeah. you tell me if this is a wise choice by Matt, okay? He's a piece of garbage. Okay, before oh, we go there. I love you, though. Steve Thanks. Sterniolo piece from Raw Dog. human filth. Uh, I, I bring him in, right? Yeah. And I go around the room because I know maybe I shouldn't be doing this. But his eyes lit up. I thought he had something. I knew he had something to say. And since they lit up while I was talking... I thought they might be relevant about what I was saying. <laughs> this was mistake one. You're an idiot. I know. I'm very stupid <laughs> sometimes. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, then he comes on the air. Now, you know Matt the Intern very hated here on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I'm, I'm talking amongst the audience. They just can't stand the guy. And the office. And the office hates I mean, him, too? holy That's shit. That's not true. Everyone hates this kid. You don't even work for the channel. I don't hate him. Like, I look at him and go, man, I hate you. Okay, but I, so I don't, you do. But he's fun to, like, laugh at. And, like, he's, like does, he doesn't do work here. Like, he just, like, makes flyers for shit wow. he wants to do. Oh, I remember you saying that. He talks to some chick all day. And I'm pretty sure she hates him, too. She does? I think so. I think that girl hates you. Which one? I don't know. It's some blonde hair girl. Who gives uh, she's another idiot. I, I, I can't, can't really talk, talk about that. I can only talk about how much you suck. I'm going to talk about how much she sucks. That's yeah. right, Steve yeah. Sterniolo, because she's not here. Yeah. Then Matt comes on the air, and he starts talking about what's going on in Bobo's life, of all things. Why would, why would he ever? I well, mean, do you think this is a wise move? Matt's got one opportunity. He talks about Bobo. No. It's no. the two most hated yeah. things. <laughs> I mean, it's one of my most loved things about the show. But uh, that's why would you? Why I was listening, Sam. I got off the air and I started listening to you, and all I heard was, uh, "Erock, do I do I let do I let him speak? Like, should I let him? Should I let him speak?" And I was like, "Oh God, what's he going to say?" But I had to vacate the studio. So you I did the right thing. You what did, did the right thing. What did you say thing. about Bobo? Well, I, no, 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 no. Don't you don't you dare repeat it. Why? Did, I was don't it like no. show? Was it stuff for like Opie it and was, Anthony? It was so uninteresting. Oh, okay. All right. It was not anything. <laughs> but that it was had, important. No, it had no relevance it wasn't to anything. Important. It had nothing to do with the show. And I wish it had never been said. And that's why I'm going to insist that he does not repeat it. The, the, this show replays. So if you're really curious tonight, at like, whatever, 7, 15 -ish. Not that curious. Right. I'm so. good. Does this kid hate him, too? Yeah, UCB Fred. No. Holy shit. This kid UCB hates you? UCB Fred loves me. Oh, you hate him? Oh, yeah. He's great. Uh, no, he, that's he, fantastic. I know Sal fucking despises yeah, I, him. Sal, and I, just, don't, I don't want him to talk unless you want him to. I'm sorry. No, I just no, no. Saw him. All right. Sal's allowed. I, I'm okay. sorry for just coming in here uh, unannounced, but I just wanted to say, I'm, I'm, I'm one line I'm out of here. Uh, See, eight, this eight. is, look at this attitude. He goes, I'm sorry for just coming in unannounced. Yeah. Just real quick, I just wanted to say, and then he'll leave, whereas Matt is like, wow, he I'm a lot. sure that you guys want to talk. To you, he, well, you're a fucking waste of shit. Oh my Look God. at but like you. I said, like I said, eight days, and he's gone. You know what? For all the fans out there, eight days, and he's gone. That added more than you did. Yeah. And you, <laughs> just because you 
said that's more words. That's his own words. line Here's, that he spent 20 minutes coming up with? I hope this kid breaks his ankle when he leaves the building you today. You do. But I will stand on his side on this. Doesn't he bring more to Opie and Anthony and the after show being just the worst? Like, I granted, it's no. not his job. It's you not his what? job. His job is to intern. But him being such a waste of human shit, I mean, this kid is just the worst human being but, I've ever met. Well, the problem is that Matt goes... It's a piece of garbage. I mean, I don't know. Oh, he's you're sad. awful. He's, well, yeah, yeah, no, and Steve's you're, right on this one. You're terrible. The problem with Matt is that he's uh, one-dimensional. Yeah. And so it's just... Yeah. This kid sucks, and it's like... But it's to the point where people are like, you know what? I can't listen. Well, and that's the thing. You have to tread the line of, oh, I can't stand this guy, but I can't stop listening. Whereas, I can't stand this guy. I'm going to stop listening now. Well, Sal's that's also, what you don't want. Sal's also one-dimensional. He's always awesome. Like, he's well, always really good at what he that. does. Like, he always succeeds. Like, That's he good. never fails. Where you always fail. Brian wow. Brian in Long Island wants to contribute to After Open Anthony Live today. So, Brian. Yeah, hi, guys. What's up, buddy? Yeah, by putting him on and you talking about him, that's all he wants. Yeah. He doesn't care what the fuck he's talking about. He's an attention cunt. So what do I do? He's shit. Kick what? him in the face. Well, I can't kick him in the face. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's <laughs> allowed to do that. I'm really, I'm not. Um... Is there any... Tell me where he comes out of the building. Okay. Okay, so we... then you'll kick him in the face. Can we talk about Matt when he doesn't have a... Like, I don't want... Like, why is my... Matt has weaseled his way in on, onto your after show. Should we get him out of here? I mean, I would. I mean, you could kick me out at any time. You called me in to just tell what I thought about Matt. You're the pit bull. Yeah, you kick... Well, he's a piece of shit. Okay. Yeah, see, I, look I, I, at don't, him. I don't know if I like that kind of talk. Right, you know? I don't like the guy like you, but I love you at the same I, time. You, I'm your love favorite anything. intern ever. Yeah, you're my favorite intern as long as you're never interning for me. Okay. Ever. <laughs> but favorite intern you're, ever. You're useless. Okay, well, that, on that I, note, I, I guess that... I don't know about that. That'll be your swan song for today. Okay. You're dismissed. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, you're dismissed. Me too. Do you want me dismissed? Um, Sam and Steve show. You got anything, Roto? You got anything to plug? What's, what are we doing? Because we are doing something together. I just don't know when it's on. All right, we're going to interview Anthony Bourdain today. The same he, guy who was on the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah. We were just talking about how awesome he was. We've kind of we're weaseling our way into Raw Dog, and I, I guess eventually we'll get yelled at. But I'm just going to keep scheduling interviews for us, and then we're going <laughs> to okay. keep doing them. And then Troy Kwan's going to make us an open. <laughs> He's wait, wait, wait. Okay, so <laughs> this gonna, started... we're going to hire. We're going to freelance Troy Kwan on like the weekends to make us an opening. This is Steve Sterniolo from Raw Dog, and he and I. We interviewed Nick Swartzen together because Steve was like, hey, Sam. Sit, why don't you sit in? Because yeah. I do a show. Why don't you sit in? Sit in. I'm going to interview him. I want it to sound a little different. So, you know, why don't why don't we do this? I go, okay. We interviewed him. And now you're just booking guests. I'm <laughs> just booking guests. For both. And I love it. Yeah, I like. I but you're also going to have Troy. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna just because this is the idea. So our bo- my bosses at Raw Dog enjoyed you and I interviewing someone. They said that was pretty funny. If you guys want to, you can continue to interview together. He's like, or you could just do your show by yourself, whatever you want. So I like to do interviews with Sam. So I started booking them, and then to really put it in their head because the talent people are a bunch of dirtbags here. You think because, so? Because they go, oh, uh, uh, that's not a show. I'm not booking that. Who says that? Liam. 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 I mean, what a, what a piece book- of garbage. Talent booker Liam. You're not talking about because. Spencer, uh, in Spencer the is department. great. Roland is great. Is, I mean, ro- you have to say Roland's great. He'll light something of yours on fire. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's just a vindictive, very bastard. vindictive. He's angry. But uh, yeah, you, so so Liam's, Liam's kind giving of a you scum nothing but trouble. It. Well, McFoley's coming in. We think I love McFoley. Yeah, and and uh, 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 oh, uh, Sam, a huge uh, McFoley fan. Sam, even on that one, I would go, Sam. Why don't you take the lead, pal? Because you know, <laughs> and if I feel like jumping in, I'll jump in. But why don't you just do it, good Matt? You have no need. He no need to be in here. Get <laughs> No. Don't talk, don't talk. No. Thank you, Steve. You're Pit welcome. Bull. Get Pit out of here, dirtbag. Okay, so then... So, uh, yeah, so Mick Foley's coming in, and Liam goes, I can't book him for you. I go, why not? He goes, well, that, that's not a show. I'm not booking him for this imaginary show. I go, I'm telling you, it's a fucking show, Liam. Well, Anthony Bourdain's not going to be talking to two empty yeah. chairs. Yeah, Anthony Bourdain's going to be talking to S- Steve and Sam. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll see what happens, and maybe one day it'll be Sam and Steve. So when... It, yeah, well, I'm going <laughs> to just keep working. Yeah, you're trying. Keep, I'm going to keep climbing up that ladder. Uh, when... I will know, I will know today, by the end of today, so then I'll let you know, and then you can plug it on the after show tomorrow. Okay. I think it's gonna be on tomorrow afternoon at some point. That sounds terrific. But it'll be on before the weekend, pal. Uh, Steve Sterniolo, thank you for coming in here and pit bowling. Every now and then, when I need a pit bowl, I think I'm gonna call on you. Uh, like, I, this is, this is fun. Yeah, you like this. Like, being able just to destroy Matt verbally. 
And now I'm just going to see him in the office and go, hey, Matt, how are you? And just walk by him. Plus, just then it's air. like if, if, if bosses are like, you can't really shit on the interns like that, I'm going to be like, I don't know, what's Sterniolo is a loose cannon. And we can't control him. <laughs> yeah, you know? he's, he's wild. He's crazy. By the way, just one last thing before I go, Iraq really hates him. Because I could see Iraq, as yeah, we does. were just yelling at Matt, was just dying laughing in that other room. Like he, he was does. loving Matt's ripping. And now Iraq's, Iraq's gone. I just see an empty mic. Does he just. He does that sometimes. He's, okay. he's okay. not some, someone you can count on for anything. Thanks, Sam. See you at 11. Pal. Thank you very much, Bye. Steve Sterniolo. Uh, this is this is a good question. Uh, Andy in Pittsburgh, you're on after Opie Anthony Live. Hey, Sam. Thanks for having me on the uh, Steve and Sam show. <laughs> it's my pleasure, Andy. Hey, I wanted to ask you, who do you think would make a better intern, Bobo or Matt? A better intern? Yes. In terms of getting, in terms of producing content for the show and being like a good worker. And yes, and being the side and, show and all the shenanigans. In terms of like intelligence and all that, I would have to say Bobo. Daniel Bobo Curlin would probably be better. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, he'd be reliable. He would. He'd be. He, he, at least he would be here. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can count on him. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Thank Appreciate you, Andy. Can I just say Bye -bye. something? Yeah, of course you can, UCB friend. <laughs> I just want to say that, yeah, I would have to choose Bobo too because <laughs> the thing about Matt is that he's insolent. Bobo would never like. Say no, I'm not going to do this, which right. I've seen Matt do right on occasion. And he's like, "Fuck you guys." Bubba would be like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, I, yeah." I I stare at disbelief when when you know Eric or Sal asks something of him. He goes, oh, "I don't feel like it." And it's the like, disrespect is like, it's "Like, why would you <laughs> why would you say that?" <laughs> not like you. Why, why can not we have you and Ron and Fez get Matt the intern? Not not you're not an O and A fan, huh? No, you just I love hate the O guys. I just don't like waking up really early. And <laughs> that, no, okay, well, that's honest. I guess that's a problem. Um, all right. What? You gotta be fucking just kidding in me. response to you got be friends. D that's never happened. I've never once been in sub in subordinate. I've seen you do it. I've yelled at you about doing it to E-Rock. You're disrespectful all the time. Get out of it's, here. It's not true. You're being that disrespectful right now. I dismissed you. Go. I just had to put that. Go. In. Thank you, Steve. How many Sterniolo. times have we were going to leave the office? Like Ugh. it's like two or three o'clock. We're done. You're leaving. I'm leaving. Shit. Troy's leaving. He's still here, and I say, "Go home." Okay. And then he's wandering around again. Of course he is. It's like I thought you left. Oh, I'm gonna go a little bit. It's just so irritating. Other than taking his stuff and throwing it into the elevator and, and pointing, he doesn't listen. You never do. Is that what you have to do? Uh, I was so close once. Well, you, I, mean, you probably, I had it in my hand. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to throw this in the elevator. You probably can't do that. No, you I didn't. probably can't. Uh, I, I don't want to take any more Matt calls. Um, I'll talk about this, Eric. Yeah. Well, Something line one's not a Matt call, but it's all right. I, yeah, yeah, we were talking about Opie's mom a minute ago. What's up, Keith? You're on After Open hey. Anthony Life. What's up, fellas? Do you imagine if that old guy, because, you know, they, they lose their hearing and their vision. Imagine if he's trying to tag Opie's mom and he asks, and he reaches on the nightstand and he grabs a Paladin instead of the KY? Listen, Opie's mom and Opie aren't even here to defend themselves anymore, Keith. We have to draw the line somewhere, don't we? Yeah, and her ass. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Oh, Horrible. Eric, you're the for the record. Yeah, you're on tape recommending that I take that call. No, I just said that's not a call. I about know Matt. what you're after. Eric figures, oh, maybe I'll get a little opie opie payback in here. I'm not saying shit. Let's move on to a brighter note, and by brighter note, I mean so bright that you'll think it's a precious metal. As a matter of fact, it is a precious metal. Get out. It's a type of silver. No. It's called argentium. Yes, argentium, ladies and gentlemen. Is he really sticking with this bed? This I guess is the so. music that he wants played. Yeah. Look, I know people don't get the I hate Steven Singer tagline, but people really don't get this music being played. Regardless, it's his choice, you but, know what I mean? But look, I, at least I got it to the right to the part where it kicks in. I could start it over from the long intro. If no, you like. no, I don't. I wouldn't like that at all. What I like are the things that I can get at Steven Singer Jewelers. Whether it's Argentium, uh, the king of all silver medals... We're talking about a silver that's uh, brighter than platinum, brighter than sterling, brighter than white gold, tarnish resistant, it's responsible, it's ethical, it's, it's made from recycled silver. It's, it's stuff that, that it's taking old silver and turning it new again, okay? It's saving the planet and doing it in a way that's better than any silver ever could. Uh, head on down to the other corner of 8th and Walnut. I mean, this is a guy who puts you through the experience. I went to get an engagement ring, 
and his guy, Turbo Joe, made me a diamond expert. I could teach a class on these goddamn stones. I'm so well-versed. Check him out, IHateStevenSinger.com. Uh, 365 days a year, it's free shipping, okay? And there's a money-back guarantee. You'll never use it. 1-888-I-HATE-STEVEN-SINGER is the phone number. IHateStevenSinger.com is the website and his store. He's got a whole store. It's located on the other corner of 8th and Walnut in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And if you try to rob him, he will cave in your chest with a shotgun. I've seen him do it to one guy before, and he's not afraid to do it again. But you know what? His prices are so low, you'll feel like you're robbing him. Everybody leaves happy. It's amazing. I hate Stevensinger.com. Well, the guy with the shotgun didn't leave happy. No, he was really upset about the way everything turned out. Uh, there's something in me. Eric, I need advice again. Oh, no. Bobo's on the phone. Okay. Do I pick it up? Well, UCB Fred. I go to you first. Sorry, Eric. Gotta go right. to UCB Fred from Ron and Fez first. Well, the instinct before was not to let Matt talk. Correct. And I would say... I don't know. I don't know about Bobo. So far, you've been the voice of reason. Eric? Well, we could talk about Joe Rogan being on the show today. Bobo! Welcome Aww. to After Hope and Anthony Live. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I know. I didn't... Is he doing Why? a voice? Why are you here? I was here. You guys were talking about me and wanted me to call in. Nobody, nobody said that! <laughs> Why would anyone... No. Nobody said, um, please, Bobo, call in. That would be great. I, I was I was not home and I left my phone at home accidentally. Nobody rang and it. Nobody got, called it. Yeah, well, I got I got a word. I don't know. One of my friends who's also listening was telling me. Who told you? Did was it Kurt Love? <laughs> yeah, it was my friend Kurt Love. Bobo has one friend, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that uh, one friend uh, is uh, named uh, Kurt Love. Uh, Kurt Love is a super fan of the show. He's at all the live events. He's at everything. We love seeing Kurt Love. Bobo and Kurt Love at one point had a romantic relationship. Uh, that like Bobo and his brother? That's, that's, that's right. True. That's, the that's, romantic that's relationship has that's... since fizzled, but the two have remained friends. Bobo, it's really nice that you two were able to have that special relationship and then, you know, maintain a, a friendship afterwards. <laughs> that's right. A lot of people find that very difficult to do. That's right, UCB Fred. Um, there's Travis. Come on in, Travis. Yeah, you. Not that. Did you hear who's on the phone? Well, Who's on the phone? Bobo's on the phone, Bobo. Travis. I know you like talking to Bobo. He was told to call in. Who told Bobo to call in? His former lover and now best friend, Kurt Love. Aww. This is, uh, it's good that they keep in touch. See, Bobo, I picked up the phone and said, hey, this is Bobo. Yeah, I heard you wanted to talk to me. Nobody said that, though. Which, I've been listening to the after No, show. no, he said we said on the air for him to call in. Yeah, I'm no. here, all right. I was, I, was, I was not even home. My phone was left at home. Where are you going? No, I I went to a doctor's appointment for what? You're and right. I came home and I came home and I noticed that. You noticed what? No, that that Kurt Wolf was trying to call me. I noticed it was. A Why did you call Kurt Love uh, then? Why um, would you call um, me? Hang on, I found out who told him to call. He just said no, it was Kurt, Kurt Love. Love. Uh, not not only Kurt Love. Who else? Uh, there's a tweet from intern Matt telling Bobo to call. Did intern Matt tell you to call Bobo? It says one hour ago. I. I, I didn't. I didn't read the tweet. That's. Just, I didn't. Why, read that tweet. Eric? I need this to be done. I, I'm okay with uh, Matt's voice off the air. Ask intern Matt. Yeah. Why he would? Te First of all, why is he tweeting while the show is on, especially for stuff like that? And second of all, why if he didn't do it for the after show, he did it for the main show, which is even worse. Yeah, if that was an hour ago, it would be nine thirty. Yeah, which is worse. Why is he tweeting Bobo, telling him to call the show? Well, I. One, I thought it would be a good uh, thing for the show, the whole uh, thing I was talking about, the Bobo security. And two, okay, listen. Like Somebody has to explain to Matt the difference between being a producer and being an intern. That is not, you can under no circumstance can Matt ever think something would be Just good so for the show. <laughs> can Matt ever think? Yeah. Can Matt ever think that something is good for the show and just go ahead and do it? Matt, you always, always have to ask your intern boss, who once again, I will say, has acted somewhat irresponsibly, the sex man, whether or not... Irresponsibly for what? That he does shit without telling me? Yeah, you've got to keep an eye on this kid. 
Okay, I'll stop looking at the regular show and follow him and well, see Well, you're he the does. intern, boss. I don't care. What do you mean you don't care? That's your job. <laughs> not during the live show. It's yes, not. during the live <laughs> show. Isn't that when the interns are working? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a during minute. During the live show? Eric, last time you and Troy had an argument yeah. off the air, you said that you are you were not responsible for being the intern boss. After 11. Okay, and now yeah. you're saying you're not responsible for being the intern no, boss. No, I'm not responsible for while following him around and see what he's doing during the live show. Well, you know what? If you can't control him, you are. You know? There's a fine line between babysitter and intern boss, and sometimes that line has to be crossed. Yeah, I'm not babysitting, sorry. Why can't you shape up Matt in his few days he has remaining into an ideal intern? You haven't been able to do it all semester. Why can't you make... Because now... He's completely out of control. Now he's tweeting Bobo, telling him to call the show because he thinks something that doesn't even work for the after show uh, will work on the main show. When he should know that it wouldn't work because Opie doesn't like having Matt on the air and Opie hates having Bobo on the air. So, And Bobo, that's no offense to you. Right. Well, <laughs> well anyway, the whole... But this was just some old, old stupid situation. Something that Steve from Bayshore must have been making up. Steve from Bayshore? About not being able to go to FH. I don't know. Any, I'm FH. hanging up. I don't want to hear anything more. But look, FH, I hung up on Bobo. FH Riley's is a great restaurant. I don't want to hear anything else about Bobo and his FH Riley's party. Go to FH Riley's anytime you get a chance. But I don't want to hear about Bobo going there. Um, what are we going to do, Eric? What are you? How... Are you going to shape up your intern? I'm not. He's got a few days left. I wish I could get rid of him now, but I can't. But we're going to have to deal with him for... Didn't uh, Sal say eight days, eight shows we have to deal with him? Uh, yeah, the... What's the... Eight, yep, to the 16th. So Ooh, isn't one, it, What is the 16th? is next Friday, so that's six shows. Six more shows. Well, how, how are we going to get through those six shows if there is somebody who is sabotaging them? Your intern is going past the point of being a bad intern and now sabotage. I wish I could do what I really want to do. No, I know I you can't. do, buddy. I know I know what you want to do, and you can't do it. You have to overcome this stuff. Six more shows. <sighs> you have to make it. You have to make him a good intern. No, what? I don't have to do shit with him anymore now. Well, no, yes, you do. No, I don't. Six more. Six more shows. No, you refuse to even try to make him a good intern. I I can't. I don't like there's that. Too, there's too much writing on this. There's no such thing as I can't. There's I won't. That's what I'm hearing from you. But there is no I can't. No, there's a difference between I can't and I won't. I'm aware of that. But there's some things where I can't, and there's some things that I won't. And this is a situation where I can't. I don't believe that. I've never... I, there's, there's nothing, Eric Nagel. There is nothing that you can't do. What would your family in Florida, in your old house that you grew up in... On Long what, Island? No, 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 no. I'm not from Florida. Florida. What would they say if they found out that the old Florida boy, Eric Nagel, was saying, I can't? They would say, pick yourself up by your Floridian bootstraps, Eric. You can do this. You can make intern Matt a great intern. Nope. That I won't. He's a lost cause. That's horrible. And you know what? I hope you never become a father. That's horrible. Well, I'm just saying because you're not a, a good, you're not a good leader. You're not a good father. I see Matt as your son at work. I see Matt as pretty much your child, and he's somebody that you're raising in your own image, and that is why you need to be there for your child. No, if he was my kid, I'd abandon him. You would. Yeah. That's why I'm worried about you being a parent. No, for my own kid, I'd be fine. You can't put. If I had to have Matt here. Leaving him rest stop and then driving away. How old is Matt? Oh, who cares? You stop can't, talking about him. You can't put a 20-something-year-old in a basket and leave him at somebody's doorstep. It's no, too old. No, leave him at a rest stop. He'd find you, Eric. He has a driver's license. Cripple him. And now you're being ridiculous. <laughs> now you're just being goofy. No, I just... just enough with him. I can't fucking take it because he, he goes... And, and it's been addressed Listen, as much as I could, but he just goes and does shit Eric, that he wants to do. Coke Logic has a great idea. Okay? You love My Fair Lady. It's your favorite movie. I don't know. Why My don't. Fair Lady. Sexy is what he's saying, and he spelled it right sex with the E. Yeah. Sexy should turn Matt into the best intern by next Friday, like My Fair Lady. This, a week from tomorrow, 
Matt comes in here as the best intern we've ever had. Matt, can you do it? I can do it. I'm ready. Eric. What? The challenge has been laid out next Friday. Nope. Ma oh, come on. What do you mean, no? Come on, Eric. I'd rather him go missing by next Friday. No, no. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Why can't you make him good, Eric? I don't, I'm, he's beyond he's, help. No, I he's don't want to deal help. with him anymore. Matt's motivated to change. Yes. Now all he needs is a real teacher. And that's you. No, that's you. No, you I take him. I'm you, not, think he, you think Eric, he's fixable? You take him. I'm not allowed to. You oh, forget right. these things. Oh, that's one of those the I can't situations. No, 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 no. I'm not allowed to is a different thing than I'm, I can't. That is an I can't. You're not allowed. You I'm, can't. I'm physically able to, but I will get in trouble if I do. You that is true. are the leader of the interns. You can't just take the good ones. Yes, I can. You got to take the bad ones and turn them into good ones. That's what this program is all about. Remember Love Buzz? He came in here. I didn't and he was, Love Buzz. Yeah, he was a lost cause. But by the time he left this internship program, he was one of the best we ever had. Was he not? No, I don't think so. He wasn't? On the air, he was fantastic. But as a worker, no. He wasn't great. No. But on the air, he, he, on the air, he was amazing. Remember Cream Pie Jones? Another yes. intern we had. He was a disaster when he walked in here. By the time his semester was up, he walked out of here a new man. He was a great intern. Don't you think that... Is the truth. No, because Matt has no... Um, Troy. Matt has nothing to bring, even if he's fucking up. It's There's obvious nothing fun with what him. we need to do here. Yeah. Eric is the boss of the interns. So he said, I mean, so we've heard. So we've been told. Yeah. Uh, I see that as a father to the interns. Yeah. And the interns are his kids. Yeah. You can't abandon your kids ever, no matter how shitty they get. It's just not something a father does. Right. I am telling Eric, Matt's last day is Friday. Why can't Eric bring Matt in here as the greatest intern we've ever had by Friday? Why can't he change this kid? That's a tall order. Yeah, I know, but Eric's up for the job. Is he? No, he's not. <laughs> Eric, don't downplay yourself, okay? Nobody likes self-deprecating humor. No, it's so passive. There's no desire in me, in me trying to mold him to being a better person. And what's the point, really, at here well I, mean, I i feel like then the reason matt is not a good intern is because he his leadership is not motivated well i mean <laughs> i feel like then there's something to be said there that you know matt now has an excuse if he's not the greatest intern of all time no how about he he doesn't listen he doesn't apply himself he doesn't well, try listen so i'm, I'm, I'm not hearing, taking the fault i'm because hearing some of those qualities in his leader doesn't apply himself oh, fuck yourself not trying that's what I'm hearing here, Eric. Well, he did pick him to be the intern, yeah. right? I mean, there was a lot of potential candidates. He's the boss. Uh, He's the one that said, this guy's the guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, you'd, you'd think he would step up to the plate and really want to mold these kids into something. Uh... It's not about the first day, Eric. It's about the last day. It's about how we end things. And Matt ends better than Sal, number one intern. Not going to happen. And is, is Matt coming back? No, 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 no definitely not. So what's the point? Because. Thank you, Troy. What's the point of him being here? To become a better person? Yes, but he learn. has to want to do that himself, no, not but his, force it upon him. But his leader has to want to lead him. Oh, fuck you. That's so, bullshit. No, yeah. that's not bullshit. Could, could, could a football team win a game without a coach? I don't think so, Skipper. Yeah, but the people I don't on the think team so, want Skipper. to be there. I don't think so, Skipper. What do you recommend that he works on from now till Friday? Eric? No, uh, Matt. Eric needs to work on his leadership skills. And Matt... <laughs> Keep laughing, asshole. See? Oh, <laughs> see? Maybe, maybe it's tough love. I'm not going to judge how Eric leads as long as he's leading, but, you know, I think Matt has a lot of things to work on. He starts with common sense. Yeah, well, um, I mean, you're not going to develop that in a week. It's, nope. Well, with good leadership, you might. No. Mm. You're born with it or not. If I, That's not true. No, nah, you could develop it, but not, not in a week. A week and a day. No. You know, a week and a day. It's a week more and than a, day, a week. Still. Can, can I just chime in? What's up, Sal? You got, you're forgetting the fact that uh, Matt has no skills or creativity whatsoever. So he's just this blob. And I believe it was Napoleon Dynamite who said, what? women like guys with skills. You know, like nunchuck skills. <laughs> so, I mean, that does, that does ring true. But an internship is about acquiring skills as much as it is about having and, skills. And, okay, so... If he's this late into it and he's acquired zero, how is he going to turn himself around in that time? Maybe if he has a better leader, you know, 
Maybe but, but he should well, have, other people here were allowed to maybe take this p- position, and they're not. They're not allowed. So it's just you. You're the only one who's yeah. allowed. So I mean, you've you got to do it. It's, you've got to do I it. Have to step up. I've dealt. Well, shut, I, I, I have. I've tried. I've you dealt. Haven't. No, you I, haven't. This, this, trust me. I spend way too much time with Matt. Eric, yeah, but, there's nothing Eric can physically. You do. You know what Sal's doing right here, hmm. and and Matt sees this in the other room. Sal's getting a little scared. Sal's like, oh no, I don't <laughs> want somebody to take my number one spot. Number one intern of the semester. We need to claim one next Friday. Sal's worried that after all the work he's put in, Matt is going to come and he's going to win this thing in the last lap, which is very possible with the right coaching, mm-hmm. Eric. Yes. Coaching. Matt, yes, Matt it's would, all my fault, isn't it? Matt would have to pull some crazy shit out of his ass. Well, you know what? You like know, he'd have to show up with like hookers. And pizza. That's the wrong way to do it. Not bribing. (laughs) Well, I mean, if you wanted my vote, that's how he'd have to do it. That's why you can't lead the interns. You're also not allowed. Well, no one gave me that that uh, the right to do that. Yeah, I'm not allowed. I'm just just saying, if that's if he wanted to win, that's how he'd have to do it. You can do this. I know Matt can do it. I see the potential in him every day. That I look at him. All that I when I see Matt come in this studio, and I think everybody can bear witness to this. Should we bring him in? No, no, no. He's fine in the other room. He's got his screen calls. He's doing his job like he always does. But the only thing I've ever said about Matt is there is a wealth of untapped potential. Mm -hmm. That's all I've ever said about the kid. Yeah. No, I believe believe that. And he could have done so much more with his internship here. He could have really... But he didn't have a strong leader. Well, I mean, that has something to do with it. But also, it's his motivation. I think he just has no motivation and just doesn't want... He doesn't really care. I think he comes... uh, Oh, what's he doing in here? Matt, I didn't ask you to come in here. I said don't come in here. Okay. You know? Can I say one thing? Mm-mm. No. Just one thing. You just did. Now, now, Eric, where are you? I, t- I thought we had this conversation. I know I can do this. Okay. But what are you going to do? No, I, I don't want to hear from Matt. I don't want to hear from Matt. I just, I, can, I, can, I, can you talk to me, though? No. Because I want to know what he's going to do. Troy, it's off. You see what I did? The mic's Friday. off. But, like, what can you do in one week? It doesn't dude? matter. Eric, I know I you got to dismiss your intern from the studio. I mean, I'm about to kick you out. You don't want to get kicked out. No, no kick him out. Five... Four, three, two. Okay, he didn't get kicked out this time. He got dismissed again. Eric. Yeah. You got to instill some discipline in this kid. Mm-mm. He lacks discipline. Nope. Six days and counting. That's not the way to do this. You see what the problem is here, don't you, Troy? Well, I mean, what can I do? You got your boss saying, ah, oh, six days and counting. I can slough off until you just leave. That's not cool. Uh, I mean, what motivates you? Like, imagine if you're, in, you know, you're headed towards the playoffs. And the you know the coach says, ah, we only got a couple games left. Whatever, win lose, I'm gonna be in the back smoking some reefer. You know what I mean? What's gonna motivate you as a team to win? But this attitude of Eric's, I mean, this isn't anything new, right? Well, you know what? You know what th- that means? Hmm. Maybe this exercise would be beneficial to two people. But do you really think that it's gonna? How long have you been with the show, Eric? Seven years. Seven years. <laughs> so do you think after seven years he's gonna change? I do. I do. Eric. I don't think in your heart of Eric, hearts you really believe what? that. I believe that. I believe that to be true. I believe you have it in you to be the gold medal winning leader that we all know you can mm-hmm. and to be the guy who leads Matt to get in that World Series ring on his finger, okay? To lead him into the championships. And when he is standing in the studio next Friday saying, I am the greatest of the interns, you're going to be in that room with a tear in your eye saying, there he is, little Eric Jr., that's my boy. Nope. Why not? Because I don't care. Well, what that's, do, that's, what that's, do you care about? That's a big problem there. I Eric. care about the show. Do I you? I care about getting shit done. Do you? And I can't sit here. There's a difference between him being an intern and me giving him things to do and making sure he's doing it right. And then there's being a babysitter because right. he decides to take it in his head to go and do shit when no one's looking and I no think, one's aware of it. I can't sit there and, and follow him all the time. I think if you cared about the show, you would want this to happen. Because, number one, this is good for the show to see it all pan out. And number two, it's good for the show to have the best possible interns. You know that is I mean? true. Roland, have you, been, have you been hearing what's going on? No. I've been having joyful things told to me. Dicks in the ass? A massive oh. cock in the face and in the ass. Anthony One in Bord- the face and in the ass. Yeah. Anthony Bourdain went well. That was awesome. And Joe Rogan this morning. Joe's the yeah. man. To die for. Yeah, just... I mean, with Joe Rogan, 
you know that you have a great guest on your hands when it's six o'clock in the morning as the show starts 10 minutes in you're questioning what your place on this planet really is yeah. and how you got here and what happens after six o'clock in the morning and then um, I like how you explain where um, things were created, like people that don't understand things, but they think they do. That was just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Roland's not in a good mood. Nah, he's he's Roland's in a dark, dark. He's, place. he's in a tough place. What happened? You know, people when they understand certain jobs, but, but yet they want to throw a forty to that job. What people? I don't know, just people. What jobs? I uh, know it's a book Talent I'm reading. Booker? No, it was a book I'm reading. It's called Things I Don't Know But I Will Say. Hmm. Oh, so some okay. So in this book, yes, the lead character is maybe being told how to do their job when the person telling that character doesn't even know what their job is. Yeah, but it's not, nothing. Nobody here though. Yes, yes. It's yes, a kid's yes. novel. It's a fiction. It's a novel. It's a fiction. fiction. Novel. Uh, and you're kind of bummed out because you've been reading that chapter. Um, Either that or they hate Mexicans. I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. It's a character we're talking about. They'd it's be Mexi racist. It is. They'd be it's a, racist. It's a Mexican character? It's, a, it's an Indian character. No, <laughs> it's a Mex. It's an Indian character. It, well, But hey, it's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. Another uh, Booze long, day. long drinking week. You can drink tonight. I text GC. And we're going to be drinking... Greg Charles from Caroline's. Yep. Um, Caroline's Comedy Club. And you can still get Joe DeRosa tickets, by the way. The, uh, it's carolines.com, and the uh, little online code is O and A, all lowercase letters. You'll be here next week, too. And you get them for uh, like almost 50% off the tickets, yeah, so it's definitely bucks. worth doing. $10 tickets. I mean, movies cost fifteen twenty. dollars 20 so I was going to see DeRosa. Who gave you the dick in the ass? I don't know. Life. It's not life. It's a person. It's a life. Life gives me... Is it a person or multiple people? Life. I think that means a person. <laughs> nah, I think it's multiple. So, because he said, well, he did say a dick in the ass and hit one in his mouth too, as well. Well, he didn't say they were separate dicks, though. It could have come out of the ass into the mouth, even worse. Oh, ATM. Are we dealing with an ATM situation or uh, a shish kebab situation? I say lemon party. Lemon. Wow. <laughs> okay. So you get. And which one are you? The one where we have the dick in the mouth and in the ass. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so we're we're lemon party to the next level. Lemon party next level. What's 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 bothering you today, Roland? Life. Yeah. Yeah. You came in. You obviously want to. You want to talk a little it's bit. It's difficult so. being a talent booker. Yeah. People don't know that. People follow the glamour. Yeah, people just see you you rubbing elbows with Hollywood. That's not what it's about, though. It's my sad soul crying. That's what it is. Because you have to play the Hollywood game. Then you have to get in here, oh, and you have to oh, deal with all these people. Oh, over here, and, and here's the easiest part. Is, is it? Like, yeah. Let me ask you this question. Yes. Did you receive a dick in the ass in this building or out of this building? I know. I got so many. I don't know if I'm coming or going. <laughs> I will not ask any follow-up questions. Was the dick in the ass an in-house dick? Uh, I won't ask. I won't ask you what department. I won't. I swear to you, Roland, and you don't have to answer them. No follow-up questions. An in-house dick could have been anyone from intern Matt to Danny to the big boy. Anyone, anyone. Was it an in-house dick or was it? I think multiple. In and out. The main dick, though. The in and out. The main one. The one that's really got you bothered. Yeah. Wrap up, dude. Hey, like, you know what that means, Troy. What's up? In-house. Yeah. You know, you know it was. Was it Mark Zito from Ron and Fez? I just saw him out there. Was no, it? No, no. I think he's panicked because they have a guest on the top of the hour. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, ma we'll make sure we give him plenty of time for that. It was, it was Mars in house. Did he have hair or no hair? <laughs> that's that's getting too specific. Don't answer that question, Roland. That's a trap. Um, it is a trap, my fellow Mexican brother. But <laughs> in house is that an insult? Being called a Mexican? Not at all. I mean, it's cool, but I'm not or brown. Mexican. Yeah, I'm brown. Yeah, but Puerto Ricans look down on the Mexicans, all right? No, no, not no, at they all. They look at them as like the lower of the. No, we we. It's like it's like, actually, it's like the Asians look at the Chinese. No, like we look down Puerto Ricans. No, actually, the Chinese. Wait, wait, wait. He just said it's like the Asians look at the Chinese. Chinese are Asian. Yeah. No, I know, but they they're the lower. They're the lowest in, in Asian because I've talked to Asian people and they say uh -huh. that Chinese is the lowest. And who's the highest? Or, uh, Japanese. Yes, Was it an Asian correct. Asian dick in the ass? No, no I, 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 might, I might want Chinese food though. Yeah, <laughs> I'm craving now. Well, listen, 
Roland, I, I, I hope the day gets better for you. It is because Spencer and I are going to get fatty food today. Oh, I know. Okay, so <laughs> dick in the ass, overeating. Yeah. It's been a stressful one, huh? I'm, I'm, so, getting, I'm getting a double fucking milkshake, dude. Wow. Let's go to a massage parlor. What do you think, Roland? Is that something you do with Troy? <laughs> Again? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Never mind. I don't even know what I'm saying half the time. Do what, do what Troy is. He's sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to bring some sunshine to your life. Let God the sunshine in. <laughs> well, we have to, we have to get going, Roland. Yeah, and we're trying to have to go tug away. You're gonna well, on each other. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Well, I mean, nor, normally somebody else is doing the tugging, but you guys are going to go tug away. No, no, we're going to pay somebody else. To so do when it. you said go to a massage parlor, you meant to seek employment as a rub and tug girl. No, to be relieved of stress and pressure. Hand jobs. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. I get that. Ta- table down. baths. Well, listen. Oh, wait. Safety first, like in Trojans. <laughs> I, was, I was just about to say, if you're there, you never know what kind of diseases you're going to get on those calloused masseuse hands. So why don't you make sure you wear uh, Trojan bearskin condoms? Trojan, America's number one most trusted condom brand. Also Trojan, recommended by Prince Nagels all around Florida. Eric, do you use Trojans when you're trying to uh, hide those Prince Nagels? I them? used to, yes. You did? Of course you did. Now he just goes raw dog. <laughs> you, raw dog in that, that ass. I mean, you know what that implies. Yeah. He said I used to. Yeah. yeah. Now he's just raw dog. I'm back in that motherfucker. Good for you, Eric. And I can't wait to see the results we get from intern Matt. This has been After Open Anthony Live. Stay tuned. Ron and Fez are coming up Jack next. Jack Daniels. And, I love uh, you. Troyquan.com. We'll be back tomorrow. I Goodbye.